Hi there, Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. As the marketing director, I get asked all the time, what is Metastock? How can I help my trades? Well, stick around for about three minutes and I'll tell you. Metastock is an award-winning software and data package that has been helping traders for over 35 years. Simply put, Metastock is a tool for traders like you to analyze the markets. Metastock helps you take the guesswork out of trading by offering a methodical, systematic approach to some key questions all traders come up against. Questions like, how do I decide which securities to trade when there are literally thousands to choose from? Which strategy should I use and how do I test that strategy before spending my first trading dollar? When should I enter and exit a trade? How can I effectively manage the securities I'm interested in? And of course, how do I know where prices will go next? At the core of Metastock are the power tools. The power tools give professional grade analysis tools to private traders like you and me. You can scan the market with the Metastock Explorer to filter and sort securities that show buy and sell signals based on your criteria. The Metastock System Tester lets you test most strategies through a process called backtesting, which allows you to see how your strategy would have performed over time. You can easily manage and monitor the securities you are interested in with Quote Center. Quote Center lets you sort on a variety of criteria to view the data that's important to you. Then just double click on a security if you want to see its chart. With the Metastock Forecaster, you can even take advantage of patented technology to view probable future prices. If you're an options trader, you're going to love Metastock's OptionScope. OptionScope puts all the critical info at your fingertips, displaying sortable, customizable, color-coded options data, including the Greeks. And Metastock has solutions for traders of all levels and interests. If you're just getting into trading, you will appreciate the education offered by our many built-in systems. In addition to pointing out buy and sell signals, Metastock explains how they work in an easy to follow commentary window. Metastock has built-in systems based on popular strategies like MACD, Bollinger Bands, Turtle Trading, Candlesticks, and many more. Metastock even has the very popular and exclusive Rahul Mohindar Oscillator System, or simply known as the RMO. And as you become a more experienced trader, Metastock grows with you. Advanced analysts will enjoy the comprehensive list of trading systems and indicators and the ability to build their own systems. And if you're a day trader, you can't do better than Zenith, the real-time news, data, and analysis package offered by Refinitiv, a world leader in market data. Add on the world-class support and it's not hard to see why Metastock has won the Stocks and Commodities Reader's Choice Award for 26 consecutive years. To find out more about Metastock and how it can help your trading, visit metastock.com or contact a product professional via phone, email, or chat. Good morning, everyone. Uh, afternoon or evening or wherever you might happen to be uh, tuning in from right now, I realize this is an international event. Heaven knows where you are right now. Wherever you are, we welcome you. Thank you so much for joining us for day two of our largest ever multi-day traders conference uh, sponsored by Metastock and the fine folks at Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities. Okay, we are so glad you're here. Uh, there's a lot going on. Well, there's a lot going on in the world. We're still trying to figure out who our next uh, United States president will be. Uh, hopefully today we'll shed a little light on that. We, Who knows? Uh, but let's all put that aside for a second and talk about trading because that's why we're here today. Uh, today's event, let me click over that real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so today we have the likes of Jeff Tonkins. He'll be starting us off. And then Guy Cohen at uh, the next hour. By the way, all the events are start on the hour at the hour on the hour uh, starting at 10 o'clock e uh, well starting in four minutes actually uh, then we have Anne-Marie Bain and Jake Bernstein and Kelly Clement and uh, Celeste Lindman so we're very excited about that uh, so 
that's today's presentations. And then we have, again, tomorrow's presentations, which uh, you can look at if you want to go to metastock.com slash conference 20. You can register for this event. And you're saying to yourself, well, why would I register for this event? I'm looking at you right now, and this is the event. Well, there's a good reason, because when you register, you become eligible for our door prizes. Jeff, uh, I think between every single uh, presentation today, we'll be doing a drawing for a door prize for things like uh, free trials of Metastock and free trials of some of the things that some of our guest presenters are doing. So uh, make sure you register for that. Go to metastock.com slash conference 20. Now, another thing I want to tell you about is on Sa Sunday, we have a premium event. Let me show you that real quick. Okay. Now, of course, you know that all the tr events up to now have been, there we go, have been free events. Uh, we have a, which is to say, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? They're free, but the knowledge you get is indispensable. Uh, on Sunday, we have premium classes, and that includes uh, the likes of Steve Bigelow and, sorry, can't do this very well, uh, Dr. Alexander Elder, and uh, our very uh, favorite, Oscar Carboni. Now, this is premium trading. It does come at a cost, and uh, but it's a very reasonable cost. So go ahead and go to our website and check that out. And to in order to register for that, all you have to do is go to metastock.com slash conference 20 prime, conference 20 prime. Or if you just want to go to our homepage and then click on the banner at the top and then click on that website and then click on premium trading on that website. I think it's easier if you just go to metastock.com slash uh, conference 20 prime. Okay, that was funny. All right, so a couple things. Also, we do encourage, of course, uh, your participation. This is being simulcast on both GoToWebinar and YouTube. And in both of those places, wherever you're watching this from, go ahead and give us uh, some feedback and, and comments in the comment section. And we always like to hear, in fact, right now I see I've got um, my, good morning, my, Muhammad, uh, good morning, Muhammad, JB, good morning. Uh, as you're coming on, go ahead and say hello. Let us know where you're coming from. I know Nelly I saw earlier on. And, um, and don't be afraid to chat and interact and ask questions. Uh, the presenters have their own styles and they may not, may or may not answer it right away, but Jeff usually gets the uh, question over to the presenter before the uh, presentation is done, if he has time. All right, so I see you got about a minute left, so I'm gonna mute myself so I can make sure that the people on the other end are ready to go. Thank you again so much for coming and uh, successful trading. Okay, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, oh, he meant me, Jeff. But, okay. but we'll have him in a <laughs> All right. It's a little confusing with two Jeffs. Right? Yeah. But it's, it'll be worth it in the end.
Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Uh, my name is Jeff Gibby. I'm going to kick us off. I'm going to read a legal disclaimer. I'm going to say hello to everybody as well. So hi, Richie, Shavonda, Gary, Monty, Scott, Sterling, James, Shushant, Anton, Lynn, Joe, uh, Mohammed, Paul, Mai, Mohammed, JB, Vincenzo. I hope everybody's doing good. We've got a good crowd this morning. Um, welcome to today's event. Uh, yesterday went awesome. I hope you were able to make it yesterday. Um, Let's go ahead and read the legal disclaimer, and uh, we'll go from there. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the company's software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The, uh, the information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any pr information provided in connection with the company. So I hope everybody's doing well this morning. I thought yesterday was awesome. I hope you were able to see it. Um, uh, do want to start off by thanking our sponsors, uh, Stocks and Commodities Magazine. Uh, they do a great job. Uh, they've been publishing articles on, uh, st on uh, technical analysis since the 1980s. And... Um, they do an awesome, awesome job. They're great partners of ours. Uh, if you're, today's your first day, I want to welcome you as well. Uh, we here are Metastock. Uh, we create software here in Salt Lake City. Our software has been rated number one in its price category for 27 years in a row. And uh, we're going to be talking a lot about what it does today and why it's been so highly rated. But we are going to offer a, a conference promotion special where anybody that wants to can get a free two months of Metastock if they pay for their first month of Metastock. So it brings down the cost to about 60, uh, $69 for three months if you do the DC or our end of day version. And we'll have a lot of time to talk about this today, but I would encourage you to take advantage of that. We're coming into a time where, you know, things are gonna, you're gonna have extra time to, you know, maybe some downtime during the holidays to look at things. January is always a really good uh, seasonally to trade. So it's a good time to kind of get in and get started if you're waiting. In any case, I'm getting a little bit, 800-882-3040 uh, 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 if you want to talk to us at all today, and metastock.com slash conf promo if you want to take advantage of uh, the three-for-one offer. So our first guest today is Jeff Tompkins. Jeff has a very good first name. Um, one of my favorites. And in addition to that, though, we've been working with him for a couple of years. Um, he uh, He's developed some software. He runs uh, Altos Trading, which is a hedge fund. I'll let him tell you a little bit more about that. I will tell you that the methods that he's developed for Metastock are very, very good. I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm sure we're going to look at quite a few charts, um, but we appreciate Jeff. He's done a great job. He's been a great business partner for years now. I think it's been like two, three years. Uh, but in any case, uh, that's, I think, how I'm going to introduce you, Jeff. How did I do? Perfect. Right, I, agree with, I agree with the first name, having, <laughs> having the, the same first name. Great name. Your mother did well. Yeah, I'll thank her. All right, I can see your slide, and you're coming through well. And um, I'll, I'm just going to mute my microphone and let you go. All right, great. Welcome, everybody. I'm actually out of the office. I'm uh, traveling on the road, so I don't have all my fancy uh, sound equipment, but uh, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. And I apologize in advance for any background noise, but uh, we got a lot of fun stuff to go through. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive in. We're gonna look at uh, my slingshot setup, which uh, actually couldn't be more timely because it's a, a setup that works really well in volatile markets, which of course we're in the midst of with an undecided election, a, a major pandemic, et cetera. So uh, I think you guys are going to get a lot of value out of this. Um, it's something that you can incorporate uh, in your own trading starting today. Um, and ultimately what the setup does is it helps you to buy low and sell high in, in volatile markets. So uh, we do have our own disclaimer that I'll run through here real quick, even though Jeff uh, covered the Metastock disclaimer. We all know that trading securities and options does involve risk prior to buying or selling an option an investor must receive a copy in, of characteristics and risks of standardized options. And of course, we do need a broker to trade securities and must meet suitability requirements. We will be going over some charts, as Jeff mentioned today, together, um, as well as covering some trade examples. And just know that we don't guarantee anybody will mirror the uh, performance of the examples that we share. 
All right. Muted. So many of you may recognize some of these faces. These are all uh, famous traders and investors. And they all have a lot of things in common, um, but there's something they have in common that you may not uh, uh, guess. And that's if they've all bought high and sold low. In other words, they've all made mistakes in their trading and investing careers. And why is that? Simply because they're human, just like all of us. Uh, so even if you're a retail trader, if you've uh, dabbled in trading or investing in, you know, at some point in your, in your life, um, we're all vulnerable to the same mistakes. And even if we have a solid system in place, uh, there are going to be times where we we uh, make mistakes and buy high and sell low. So we're gonna we're gonna address that today and start out by talking about why the market is so difficult to trade. And a lot of it really can be boiled down to psychology. So of course there are a lot of variables that can come into play in terms of um, things that can get in our way to uh, on the path to success, um, but. At the very fundamental level of, of that potential for failure, psychology is a major component. Uh, so you may have seen uh, something similar to this at some point, and it's basically a, an investing psychology curve. So what it portrays is sort of that roller coaster of emotions that we go through as we're interacting with the markets. So of course, when you enter a, a trade or, or a position in the markets, your goal is to make money. And you have some sort of optimistic outlook when you enter that trade. All right. So oftentimes we start out with optimism, enthusiasm, and as things can start to go in our favor, we can even become overly exuberant and even euphoric. And oftentimes when we're experiencing these emotions, there's kind of a, um, I, I kind of a, the opposite of what you might expect, uh, is that we're we're interacting with the markets during a high level of financial risk or we're entering positions um, or trades at the wrong time when there's a high degree of risk and then inevitably when things you know, don't go our way at some point that euphoria and enthusiasm can quickly turn to anxiety denial fear despair and we end up panicking um, I'm sure this sounds familiar to a lot of you. I've certainly gone through it in my trading career. Um, and we end up selling when it's really the best time to be investing and getting into the market. Um, and then we repeat that process over and over. Um, and this is often what ultimately leads to failure in trading and investing. So let's take a, a quick look at the psychology of failure, and then we'll look at ways that we can overcome it. So. Of course, anytime we enter a directional trade, the goal is to buy lo low and sell high, right? We want that's how we make money. We get in um, at a lower price and out at a higher price. But unfortunately, it goes against our human instinct. And instead, when a security is going down, we sell it. And it, when it's already gone up, we buy it. And then as we looked at on that psychology curve, we then panic when the price is falling because we're afraid of losing money. Does that sound familiar to anybody? And then we buy when it's rising because we're afraid of missing out. That's that whole FOMO mentality or fear of missing out. And actually, that's really happening in the markets right now. Um, we're, we're getting this bull run in the markets that people you know, want to wanted be a part of, but there's still a lot of uncertainty. Um, obviously, you know, who's going to be our next president? Um, and then to compound that problem, we're wired to repeatedly make this same mistake. So we buy high and sell low because that's what our emotions tell us to do. We're following the herd. Um, we're vulnerable to that that sort of group think uh, mentality where we want to just follow along with what most other people are doing. And unfortunately, most traders and investors uh, don't make money over the long run. Uh, and we're going to solve that problem for you today in the session. So without a solid trading plan, we're really vulnerable to our emotions. And in addition to that, if you're lacking a strategy that can identify momentum shifts, meaning you don't know when to get in or buy low and get out and sell high, that can really pose a major problem for inexperienced traders and investors. Okay, and again, we're gonna we're gonna address that on our session together today. So let's turn the tables on this this sort of vicious cycle that we often go through as traders and investors. And let's turn the tables. And what we're gonna do with the slingshot setup is we're actually gonna be fearful when there's a high level of financial risk when other people are becoming um, 
enthusiastic and, and optimistic about the markets. And we're going to be greedy when it's actually really the best time to get in the markets and there's a lower level of financial risk. So it's that old Warren Buffett ad, adage, be fearful when others are greedy. Okay. And, and that's what the slingshot setup will, by default, help us do. Here's what I'm going to give you guys today to make it easier. We're going to discover the slingshot trade that's worked 100% of the time on the major indices. And in my 20 year trading career, I really haven't found much that works uh, certainly with 100% accuracy, but even in the 80% plus range, um, is very difficult to find. Um, and this actually has worked, as you'll see here uh, shortly, 100% of the time on the major indices going back to the dawn of the market. So I'll show you how to identify the setup, how to trade the setup, how to profit from the setup, how to get in near the bottom and out near the top, how to apply the setup to any market in any time frame, how to eliminate the majority of your losing trades. This is a, a cool trick that I use in my own personal trading as well as in my hedge fund that I'll share with you. We'll look at some trade examples together, and then I'll show you how you can copy my success and get my trade signals I use to make a living in the markets. And I do trade for a living. Um, I am a professional trader, and I'm also a money manager. Um, I manage a hedge fund. Sorry about the background noise. We've got uh, some gardeners out here. Um, all right, so let's start out by imagining if you could buy low and sell high without any guesswork, right? This is every trader and investor's dream. Well, one volatility study has made this possible since the beginning of the markets. And it's a unique setup I call the slingshot that's allowed traders to buy low and sell high with 100% accuracy um, on, the, on the major indices, which is pretty, pretty incredible. The beauty is it also warns you of potential market sell-off. So if you fear a, a black swan event or a bear market or a market crash, um, this setup can help warn us of that ahead of time, which is uh, invaluable. Once the bands of the market, as we'll look at here in a minute, can't be stretched any further, they must bounce back. So there's not a lot of inevitabilities in the markets, uh, but this setup does incorporate a really important inevitability that um, you know, regarding volatility. So it's, so it's sort of something, as you'll see here in a second, that must occur in the markets for there to be uh, price movement in, in uh, the equities markets. And, and really this can actually be applied to to any market, whether you trade Forex, futures, um, ETFs, equities. And the rubber band effect that we'll look at here in a minute makes it possible to accurately identify tops and bottoms in the market. So to be fair, we won't always get in right at the bottom or, or out right at the top, uh, but we can get pretty darn close uh, as you'll see here shortly. So let's start out by looking at this. Um, this is uh, probably an all too familiar chart to those of you who trade and invest already. It's a chart of the S&P 500 during the infamous Corona crash back in February and March. <clears throat> so if you look at the left side of your chart here, and, and let's, let's look at this in the context of that psychology curve. So if you look at the chart, um, although it's cut off there on the left, um, during the early part of the year before the market crashed, we were in that, that sort of strong uptrend where people are very enthusiastic, overly exuberant, and even euphoric as prices are moving higher and they have a fear of missing out on future profits in the market. So I believe it was on February 19th, we hit an all time high in the market. And as the sort of dire nature of the Corona virus was coming to light, um, people began, began, began uh, to become fearful, right? So this is where people start to panic um, and from an institutional perspective or a hedge fund perspective, this is where um, there's a lot of profit taking uh, and uh, short cover. You know, pe people are basically covering their, their long positions or hedging their long positions um, as markets start to turn over. And of course, within a, a few short weeks in February and March, the market loses more than 30 percent of its value. So when we take a contrarian approach and use the slingshot setup, we're actually going to be selling when most other traders are buying and have that fear of missing out uh, mentality, that those emotions that tell us that we don't want to we don't want to miss out on any further profits after this unprecedented 10 year bull run. Right. But then as the markets start to sell off, we want to start looking for buying opportunities because this is really when it's the best time to get in the market at lower prices before they go back up. 
So when most other traders are panicking and selling, we're going to come in and buy. And I often get asked, how does how did the market go all the way back up? And of course, now we're we've already hit new all time highs since the crash. How did we go all the way back up, surpass previous all time highs in the context of a major pandemic and all this uncertainty that's going on globally and uh, locally with the election? How is the market going all the way back up? Well, the markets don't always act rationally and they don't always follow um, fundamentals. Uh, really what drives these price movements is human emotion and fear and greed, okay? And so um, large institutions, the smart money is very aware of this and that, that they're what, you know, they're, they're the, the, the entities that are driving prices back up in the markets. And they're the reason that we bottomed out at 2200 on the S&P and proceeded to reach new all time highs in the midst of a major pandemic and election year and, and, and major volatility. Um, so this is what we're going to look at. And this is kind of key. I want you to kind of form a picture in your mind of this chart because we'll, we'll revisit it here shortly. And it's really what encompasses the slingshot setup. So I'll show you how to navigate this in a minute. So uh, before we get any further, I'll give you a little background of myself if you haven't attended any of my previous educational events. I, uh, I do have 20 years of experience trading the stock options and futures markets. I received professional training at Morgan Stanley. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, I'm the founder and chief investment strategist of Altos Trading. I think we now currently have uh, a little over 35,000 members in over 100 uh, countries across the globe. I'm also a hedge fund manager at Altos Capital. So I won't be talking much about my hedge fund today, but a lot of the, the, the tips, tricks, and tactics I'm gonna share with you on our session, I do use in my hedge fund. So uh, that's kind of the extent of what I'll mention there, but um, this certainly is, is not an endorsement uh, to enter the hedge fund. Um, and in fact, we, we won't accept anybody into the hedge fund off the session today. But uh, do know that what I share with you, uh, I do use uh, myself and, and when uh, I manage money for my clients. And then I'm also the founder and creator of the Trade Trend Signal software. And uh, I'll be talking to you guys about that today and how you can try that out on Metastock. So stay, stay with us until the end. So by the end of our session, you're going to discover one trade setup that has produced massive returns going back to the beginning of the stock market. And in fact, the event is so reliable, it's worked 100% of the time. It hasn't failed even once, including in the recent corona crash, as I just showed you. And it happens over and over again with really astounding predictability. So whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, this is must have information for today's markets, especially with all the volatility that we're seeing in the markets. All right, so you're gonna discover why volatility is one of the only leading indicators of market direction. You're also gonna discover how to, how to identify when markets may be vulnerable to a sell-off. And this will completely turn your trading around because going back to the psychology, it helps eliminate a lot of the fear that we experience as market participants. Because there's a lot of unknowns and we don't know when that next crash is going to occur. We don't know when the next black swan event um, is going to drive prices in the markets down. So if you could eliminate a lot of that fear, imagine the confidence it would give you to become a more consistent and profitable trader. I'll show you how to identify when the market is likely to go up, how to determine exactly how far the market is likely to go up. This is an important component because it's what I call the trader's dilemma. Once you get in a, a position and you achieve some degree of profit, how do you know when to take profit? And again, this is where psychology comes into play and can really interfere with our trading plan. None of us want to give up profits. We don't wanna miss out on future profits, but we also don't wanna to wanna to see profits erode before our eyes and turn into a loss. So that's that whole dilemma that we face when we enter a trade. How far is this trade gonna go? Well, I'm gonna give you a really easy solution to that. And it's all incorporated into the slingshot setup. And then if you stick with us to the end, I'll show you how to get your hands on a tool that will change your trading forever. And I say that, I don't say that lightly. I say it um, with the utmost sincerity because it's changed my trading forever um, and it's allowed me to make consistent profits in the markets. And I'm happy to, to get to share that with you guys today. So let's start by imagining a slingshot. Um, I like to use this analogy because, and it, it's the reason I, of course, named this setup a slingshot setup. 
um, but it's easily identifiable for, for all of us. Um, whether you've used a slingshot or not at some point in your life, we all know basically how it works. And when you pull that, that those bands back of the slingshot, the muscle energy from your, your arm is transferred to elastic energy in the bands of the slingshot. And then once that slingshot's released, the elastic energy is transferred to the stone as motion, energy of motion or kinetic energy. Okay. And um, that's really as deep in the physics as we're going to get, but know that kinetic energy uh, can be applied to the markets. It, it occurs in the markets in the form of supply and demand. So uh, if there's demand in a market and we get buying pressure and prices go up, and conversely, if there's uh, oversupply in markets, we get um, selling pressure and prices go down. Okay, so once the, be the bands uh, become overstretched, that's when we get the buy signal and we can enter the market with high confidence that prices will go up to the initial resting point of the band. Okay, so I'm going to say that again because it's an important concept and it'll become more clear as we look at it on a chart. But once the band becomes overstretched, it gives us a buy signal and we can enter the market with high confidence that prices will go up to, to the initial resting point of the band. Okay, all right. So let's, let's take a look at that. And I mentioned uh, earlier that volatility is the only forward-looking predictive indicator in the markets, really. It's really the only forward um, indicator. Um, and there's a lot of ways we can measure volatility, and we're going to use bands to do that. Um, and, and they're going to tell us when prices move too far away from a mean or the average and is likely to reverse direction. So we do that with one particular study called the Bollinger Bands. Uh, it's a it's an indicator that many of you have probably heard of. Um, it's available on virtually any retail trading platform. It's on the Metastock platform. Very easy to access and apply to your chart. And um, when you look here in a minute at how we're going to use it, I think it's really going to blow you away. There are a lot of ways, just like any indicator, to use this study. Um, a lot of them, probably most of them, don't work. It's, at least they may work in the short term, but they don't work in the long term. Um, and this is different. OK, so if you look at the center of your screen on the chart, you'll notice that we've got the three bands and I'll, and I'll get into the, the nuances of the bands and how they work and how we read them um, if you're not familiar with these. But you'll notice there's three bands. You've got your moving average in the middle and your volatility bands um, on, uh, that uh, basically um, blanket the, the, the moving average. So you got your upper band and your lower band. And you'll see here price hitting the lower Bollinger band. OK, um, and this is where the slingshot setup starts to uh, initiate. The market sells off and remember that psychology curve. People are panicking, becoming fearful, taking losses in their positions. This is where we take a contrarian approach and look to come in and buy at lower prices. And then the price goes back up. So remember that. That chart of the corona crash this this is a similar picture right this is a slingshot setup so we'll get into the the mechanics of the setup and how to trade it and and make make money from it um i'll give you a little background on the bollinger bands real quick if you are not familiar with those um but basically in, in terms of calculating them we take a simple moving average of the securities price so that's that center band that you see and then the outer bands are basically taken by standard deviation of that of that securities price um, and if you're not familiar with standard deviation, it's basically a mathematical measure of average variance. Um, so that standard deviation is what measures how spread out numbers are from the average or that center line in the Bollinger Bands. And it can be calculated by taking the square root of the variance, which itself is the average of the square difference of the mean. So that sounds a little confusing, but not to worry. You don't have to actually make these or run these calculations yourself. Um, they're all done by the uh, platform, your charting platform. Um, and then we multiply that standard deviation value by two. And I'm going to give you my, my, my Bollinger Band default setup settings here in just a second. So don't worry about uh, writing this down. But we multiply it by two and add and subtract that amount to get those upper and lower bands from the, the simple moving average. OK, so that's what produces those bands. But here's the key. Because standard deviation is a measure of volatility, when the market becomes more volatile, the bands widen, and when the market's less volatile, the bands contract. Okay, and we'll look at that here on a chart in a second as well. So here are my settings, and, and these are typically the default settings that you're gonna find 
on any major charting platform. I believe they're the default settings on Metastock. But we use a 20 period SMA for the middle band and then two standard deviations for the outer bands. Okay. And so those are really the only settings that you need to worry about. Um, and most likely you won't even need to adjust those uh, depending on which charting platform you're using. Okay. So let's get into the fun stuff. So there are probably several dozen ways you could use the Bollinger Bands to analyze market conditions. Uh, I'm just going to go through a handful of the most common ways they're used, and we'll look at we'll look at those, the kind of the pros and cons, and then we'll get into the slingshot setup. So one of the common ways that the Bollinger Bands are used is to buy at the bottom band and sell at the top band. Okay, and that can work fairly well in certain market conditions like ranging markets, uh, low volatility market conditions. But the problem is that price can hug the upper or lower band for extended periods of time when a strong uh, trend uh, sets in or um, market volatility increases, okay? So for that reason, we don't use that approach because oftentimes what will happen is one losing trade will wipe out many, many winners, okay? And that's not a system you wanna use, right? Um, another common approach is to use band contraction and expansion. So I mentioned when we're in low volatility, the bands are close together. When we're in high volatility, um, the, pan the bands widen. Um, and so a lot of traders will use this approach um, and use it as a breakout setup. But the problem is, um, even though it might tell us when there's a big move in pending, um, we don't know necessarily in which direction the move will occur. So there are strategies we, you know, we can employ that, um, that can take advantage of this. There are option strategies like straddles and strangles you can use for non-directional uh, volatility plays. But that's pretty tricky. It's not easy to do. And for that reason, we don't use the band contraction and expansion method. Um, another common method is to buy or sell at the middle band. So um, this, this can actually work pretty well. It's basically a mean reversion uh, tactic. And it works well in strong trending markets. But of course, we all know that markets don't trend strongly all the time. In fact, it's, it's a relatively low percentage of the time. Um, most of the time, they're in some sort of a range or, or uh, you know, ring, you know, channeling sort of price action. So this setup will fail um, when we're not in a strong trend. And so for that reason, we don't use that approach either. So the final approach that we're going to look at together today is my slingshot setup, which is basically where we wait for the lower band to break. And I'll explain what that means here. Uh, and then price will hug the lower band and ultimately rebound to where the breach initially occurred. Okay. And this is a, a unique way to use the Bollinger Bands, and it's a much more accurate way to use them. And it also addresses the psychology of failure component of trading. And it also can warn us of market sell-offs and help us buy low and sell high after a sell-off. Okay, so this is what I found to be the most reliable way to use the Bollinger Band study, uh, regardless of what market you trade or what time frame you trade in. Okay, so we're gonna use the Bollinger Bands to buy low and sell high, and I'll show you exactly how we're gonna do it. Now, um, again, just a little background on, on the Bollinger Bands. Um, they have been around a long time. They are widely used by institutions, hedge funds, and professional traders, because they do give us good information on market volatility and trend direction. Um, they were de developed back in the 70s by John Bollinger, and he, he basically developed them to help traders and investors discover opportunities that, that give you a higher probability of identifying when an asset is oversold or overbought, okay? Um, so we can have some degree of confidence that we're getting in at, at the right price. Um, now, we look at some ways that they can be used and some of the weaknesses of those approaches. The slingshot setup that we're going to look at together as I mentioned, occurs when price can exceed or hug a band envelope for prolonged periods of time. So if you go and you apply the Bollinger Bands to your chart and you look back um, some degree of time on your chart, you'll notice this happening very frequently, okay? Uh, and so what we do is we wait for that lower band to break and we wait for a buy signal. And this actually does work on the opposite side of the trade. Um, so you can take take the opposite side and wait for the upper band to break. It's more reliable when we're looking, applying it to the broader market indices um, on a lower band break because markets 
uh, have a tendency, they have an, up, uh, an upward turning bias over the long term. They have a tendency to go up over time. Um, so this is why we're going to look at this in terms of buying um, on market dips. Okay, and then we wait um, for the price to rebound and we exit when price returns to the breaking point of the band. So those are the basic rules of the slingshot setup. And we're going to look at it on a chart in a second. But what I want you guys to know is this setup is extremely accurate when you apply it to the market indices. In fact, they've returned to the initial volatility breakout with 100% accuracy all the way back to the beginning of the market. And you can go back and verify this for yourself on your own charts. That includes all four major market corrections of 2018. That was a choppy year. If you guys were trading a couple of years ago, we had four major corrections. It was a really tough year to trade. Um, if you had had the slingshot set up at your disposal, it would have been much easier for you to navigate. It also helped us navigate the flash crash of 2015, the flash crash of 2010, the crash following the 2008 mortgage crisis, the 2000 dot com bubble going back 20 years ago, even the recent corona crashes we just looked at. Every black swan event, market correction, major crash, bear market, you name it. This is played out as I'm going to show you here in just a minute with 100% accuracy. So again, let's go back to the Corona crash. I said we come back to this chart. Now we've got the Bollinger Bands applied to the chart. Now, you'll notice on the left side of the chart, we've got a volatility contraction. How do we know that? The, the, the outer bands of the Bollinger Bands are close together. They're horizontal, right? So this tells us that we're in a low volatility market environment. We often see this when we're um, in a strong uptrend and hitting new all-time highs in the market. This should be a warning signal to you. This should be a warning sign that um, there's inevitably going to be a volatility expansion, and that's evidenced by the outer bands diverging or moving away from each other. And it's a warning sign that if the price hits the lower band of the channel, that we're at high risk of a market sell-off. Okay, so you'll see that here on the left side of your chart in the latter part of February. This is where the corona crash began to ensue. And this is where the bands of the market started to get stretched back and price hugged the lower band, sold off over 30% in just a matter of a few short weeks. Traders and investors are panicking, unwinding positions, taking losses. This is where we come in, take a contrarian approach, buy when prices are low, and this is what drives prices back up because the smart money is coming in and buying after the sell-off, driving prices back up to the initial volatility breakout. So it kind of looks like an upside down triangle, but that's the slingshot setup in effect. And it's why after every major market crash, bear market, black swan event that we've seen in the markets, the indices go right back up to the initial breakout, volatility breakout of the lower Bollinger Band. Let's look at another chart. I often get asked, does this work on individual equities? Well, sir, the same psychology applies even if we look at an individual stock. So this is a, a daily chart of Apple. And you'll notice we have the Bollinger Bands. On the left side of the chart, we're in a big uptrend, very strong uptrend. Price is hugging the upper band. As I said, this works in both directions. You'll notice that there was a volatility breakout to the upside. Price then sold off back to the initial volatility breakout. So just on the very, very left side of that chart, the, you'll see the bands are close together. It's kind of cut off there, but we're in low volatility market conditions. Apple's just kind of puttering along, moving sideways. We go into an uptrend. People are becoming overly optimistic. They have a fear of missing out on future profits. They're getting into the trade. Remember that one approach I talked about, buying at the lower band? A lot of traders use the Bollinger Bands to do that. This is where it fails big time. In fact, we even had a couple bullish reversal candles right off that lower band. I can assure you there were a lot of traders coming in thinking that this uptrend is going to resume, go back up to the upper band, but they're wrong. This is the slingshot setup. Price hugs the lower band. This is where we want to start looking for opportunities to get into it, the Apple. Uh, stock and buy at lower prices with a high degree of confidence that price will go back up to the initial 
breakout point. Here's another example. This is going back to 2018. The latter part of the year, October through December, we saw two major corrections, really volatile market conditions. Prior to October, we were in low volatility conditions. You see the bands close together and horizontal. This is warning us there's a potential volatility breakout and price starts to hug the lower band. This is the beginning of the slingshot setup. The market sells off. This is, by the way, a chart of the QQQ, the NASDAQ uh, uh, ETF trust. This is where we want to look at buying before price rebounds right back up to the initial volatility breakout. I often get asked, does this work on intraday charts? We have a lot of intraday uh, traders and students that, that we coach and teach. Um, yes. Again, psychology applies to all markets and all time frames. Um, so again, on the left side of the left half of the chart, you'll see price kind of moving in a sideways channel, bouncing between the upper and lower band. So if you were using that approach of buying at the lower band, selling at the upper band, you would have done well. You would have had a few nice trades here until we see on the five minute chart, price hits the lower band. And this time there's a band break and it trails the lower band and AMD advanced micro devices sells off. But at Smart Money, we wait for that sell off to ensue and we take the contrarian approach and come in and buy at a lower price with a high degree of confidence that price will return to the initial volatility breakout. So yes, it works well on intraday timeframes as well. So the trick is how do we identify the buy zone, right? That's the big question. Um, we, know, we know when there's a high degree of probability that a sell-off is ensuing, right? So price starts to hug the lower band. That's when we start to become fearful and cautious. Um, now, how do we identify the buy zone? So there are a lot of different kind of techniques we can use um, really beyond the scope of, the, of the, the time that we have together today to get into. But I'll give you a few of kind of the, the quick and dirty ways to, to approach this. And I'll give, you, I'll give you an easier, much simpler and quicker way here in a minute. Um, but the trick is really to identify when the band is overextended and ready to snap back. Um, so because as I mentioned, we, we, none of us have a crystal ball. We don't know exactly where the, the, the bottom is gonna be in the security. Um, one approach we can use is, uh, and, and one that I do use, is to, to average into the position. So once the sell-off begins, uh, we can start dollar cost averaging down, um, knowing that uh, you know where our, our, our profit target level is. And of course, that's where the volatility breakout begins, the beginning of that slingshot setup. Um, so that often works really well. Um, we can look for bullish reversal patterns. Um, something, some other techniques I'll use is to wait for, um, you know, a couple bullish closed candles within um, the lower half of the channel. So there are a lot of different ways that we can kind of wait for that reversal to occur. Um, if the sell-off is extreme enough, um, sometimes I'll even wait for price to close back above the the, the mean or the middle band. Um, in this case, on the chart you see here, that wouldn't be appropriate because it's too close to the entry price if, if uh, we were shorting the market or the profit uh, target level if we were uh, buying at a lower price. So those are some of the ways you can use to, to get in at a lower price after a sell-off occurs. Um, oftentimes, our students will use percentages of targets as well. So if the market sells off 10%, they'll enter a third of the position. Um, if it sells off another 5% and we're down 15% from, uh, from peak to trough, um, they'll enter the, the 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 next third of the position. If it gets down to twenty percent or more, they'll enter the final third of the position. Again, that's corner, it's kind of a dollar cost averaging method. But I'm going to make it a lot easier for you guys. So I've spent more than a decade and thousands of hours trying to determine when momentum is shifting and a new trend is starting. In other words, when one of these sell-offs takes place, um, when is really the the best time to get in um, before price rebounds? And once I got this formula dialed in. I then had to configure it to work on all time frames and duplicate the success across all markets in an adaptable algorithmic formula that can actually reliably predict market trends. And the result is a tool that provides accurate buy and sell signals near the outer channels of the Bollinger Bands up to three candles in advance of the move. And this is what we've developed in partnership with Metastock to give us a predictive uh, advanced notice of an impending move. 
So unlike a lot of indicators out there on the market that give you a signal that you need to act on immediately, Trade Trend is designed to give us up to three candles of advanced warning. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But when you formulate the right combination of momentum and uh, momentum indicators and combine them with volatility studies and price action setups like we program into the trade trend algorithm, you can accurately identify buy and sell signals at the outer Bollinger Bands. That's really powerful. So when you combine the algorithm that I'm going to share with you in a minute with the slingshot setup that I've taught you, it's an incredible, incredible powerhouse combination of tools that can help you spot turning points in the market. And this is what's been programmed into TradeTrend, developed in partnership with Metastock for the Metastock platform. And what TradeTrend will help us do is accurately identify buy signals at the bottom of that slingshot setup that I've taught you guys today. Using a proprietary blend of momentum indicators that can help warn you of market sell-offs, but not only market sell-offs, rebounds in the market after people have panicked taken losses and the market has tanked, we can get in and buy low and sell high with astounding accuracy. And as I mentioned, we can apply this to any security you want to trade, whether it's stocks, ETFs, futures, Forex. And Metastock has developed an incredible screening tool. Um, in fact, it's better than any, really any other platform I've ever used or seen. Um, and if we have time, we'll share that with you today. But basically allows you to find these opportunities with the click of a mouse very, very quickly. Um, and I, I'm certainly impressed by it. I, I use it myself. Um, it's made my life so much easier. Um, I can really find opportunities in any time frame in any market very, very quickly. Um, and regardless of what time frame you trade in, I, I don't trade much intraday. I, I, I'm mainly a swing trader and position trader. Um, but we have a lot of members that use it to, to trade intraday time frames. So regardless of what time frame you want to trade in, you can receive these signals on any time frame. Um, Metastock also has a really robust and incredible backtesting tool. And again, probably one of the best I've ever seen on a charting platform. Um, and you can also backtest all the signals. So that's something to, to, to really consider when you invest in a signal package is do the signals, are, are they set in stone? Once the signal appears on the chart, does it stay there or does it repaint? Because a lot of signals that software's out there repaint. And when you go back and look at them in hindsight, you're not getting an accurate picture of what the signal actually told you. Um, so the trade trend is different. Um, you can go back and look at every past alert and signal on your chart all the way back to the beginning of the markets. And we have a lot of members that use it to supercharge their option strategy and more accurately identify entry points for their options trades. Entries, entry and exit points. And we have a lot of members that use the slingshot setup in their options trading to buy directional calls and puts. Ultimately, it allows you to trade like a pro without any guesswork. That's really the power of trade trend. So I mentioned you guys at the, at the beginning of the session, I'd give you a little trick to help eliminate a lot of your losing trades. Um, and whether, you know, whether you're, I guess, regardless of what strategy you trade or what market you trade in, this can be applied. Um, it's actually something we have programmed into the Metastock algorithm automatically, so you don't even have to worry about it because TradeTrend does give you exact entry and exit prices for every trade. Um, but what we essentially do to confirm trend or momentum direction is instead of using a market or a limit order to jump in right when you get the signal, remember I mentioned that TradeTrend gives you one to three candles of advance warning before the move. So what we do is we use a buy stop order above the, the signal candle for a long trade setup or a sell stop order for a short trade set signal. Um, and so we only get in if the move actually occurs. So, I mean, who doesn't want to start at a trade in profit, right? Um, so versus using a market or a limit order where you could enter, you know, at the mark price and then have the market immediately reverse on you, um, we have a higher probability of success using a buy stop or sell stop limit order to confirm the, the momentum direction. Um, and I found that whether it's applied to the slingshot or really any indicator or strategy, it can eliminate anywhere from 20 to 30, even sometimes 40% of your losing trades um, if you're trading a directional strategy. So um, again, this is programmed into the Metastock uh, trade trend algorithm. 
<clears throat> so I, I always believe in backing up what I teach. So I often get asked, Jeff, how did you do during one of the worst market sell-offs in the history of the market? Um, the recent Corona crash, February and March. How did you do in your real money trading account? So uh, this is a screenshot of my live real money TD Ameritrade brokerage account during the Corona crash. So starting out in February, and I was really cautious in February because I noticed that slingshot setup, you know, starting to take place. So I, I, I sold out a lot of my positions. I was predominantly in cash and I just had a few small positions on. So I was being very cautious. Other people were being greedy. Um, as markets were hitting new all-time highs, I was being very, very cautious. Um, and I was still able to use the slingshot setup. And here's a, a, a screenshot of this at the end of the month to make over $13,000 in my personal trading account. Um, but then as that slingshot setup started to pan out and the market started to hit new lows and rebound and I got a buy signal from trade trend, I became more aggressive. So this is a screenshot from the end of March. So at this point, the, the crash has taken place and the market's beginning to rebound. And I was able to make over $20,000 in profits using trade trend combined with the slingshot setup. So during February and March on the Corona crash, I made over $40,000 in real money profits using what I've taught you on the session today. And so this isn't to brag or boast, it's to show you with real money, not hypothetical results, what's possible, combining trade trend with the slingshot setup. So the beauty of this is that it works in any market, in any time frame, any size account. We have members and students that start out with very small accounts and use trade trend to help build their accounts over time. We have professional traders that, like myself that use trade trend to more accurately time the markets and make more informed trading decisions. And especially when they combine it with strategies like the slingshot setup, it's a real powerhouse. Because trade trend provides predicted buy and sell signals before the move occurs up to three candles in advance. So when you look at the indicator on your Metastock charts, it's gonna give you a commentary. Let's say you're trading off a daily chart up to three days in advance. It's gonna tell you, this is the, the likely direction of whatever security you're trading and we're suggesting a buy signal at x price in the future and then you simply enter the buy stop order with your broker and go about your day and then the, the signal's then good for up to three candles if it doesn't reach the suggested entry price we simply cancel the order and move on and wait for the next signal no harm no foul if it triggers then we're in a trade and trade trend then gives us all the information we need to manage that trade, including, including trailing stops and when to get out of the trade. So there's no guesswork involved. And it's predicted every market crash and rebound in the history of the market with 100% accuracy. So if you go back and look at every major market sell-off, black swan event, market crash, flash crash, bear market, trade trend is given a buy signal before the major sell-off. Here's some examples. This is the flash crash going back to August, 2015, five years ago. We're in a sideways ranging market on the S&P. Trade trend gives us the sell warning right before price tanks. And over the course of about five trading days, the market crashes. We hit a double bottom and the market rebounds. Going back to the 2008 mortgage crisis, if you guys were trading back then, you'll remember the market lost more than half of its value in the second half of the year. Trade trend gave us a sell warning as the slingshot setup occurred. The market tanks, loses more than half its value, and then we get a nice buy warning before the rebound. Going back now 20 years to the dot com bubble, similar situation. We have FOMO, fear of missing out. We're in this overly exuberant, irrational market, hitting new all time highs. See the low volatility there? The, the bands are close together. Then we get the volatility expansion, the slingshot setup, price starts to hug the lower band. Trade trend gives us a sell warning, the market tanks. Trade trend also gives us a buy warning right near the bottom of the sell-off. So guys, virtually every system will produce winning trades. The problem is they don't keep you out of the market when conditions are not favorable and you end up giving back your profits on the losing trades. Does that sound familiar? Th this can change for you with a tool like Trade Trend. 
Okay, here's more real money proof of that. Th these are more um, real money live screenshots from my TD Ameritrade brokerage account using the trade trend tool in the futures market. Um, I do do a lot of futures trading, over $8,000 profit in a day, over $6,000 profit in a day, over uh, $5,400 profit in a day. Um, these are small positions, guys. I was only trading one contract per trade. Um, you'll notice that they're not all going to be winners. There's there's a few losers in there, but Trade Trend helps keep the losses contained, as you see on, on my real money screenshots. And when we get into a profitable trade, it helps profits run and lock in profits as the market moves in our favor. Um, here's a, here's another screenshot I took recently of my hedge fund, um, Altus Capital, um, this year when the market was in um, a you know, spiraling down and, and the VIX was, I think, above 30. Really volatile market conditions. A lot of hedge funds were actually failing. Um, but I was using a lot of the tax, tactics that I taught you guys on our session today and made nearly a 6.5% profit in my fund in one month. So here's what I promised to you guys. I want to help you have days just like these, and I'm going to give you access to our tool that lets you copy my trades. So this is a one-time opportunity to join me to discover how I make consistent income in the markets day after day and week after week. And I reveal every one of my special techniques and indicators that make profits like this possible. And I don't hold anything back. So I give you guys everything you need. Here's what you get. 12 months of trade trend for stocks, features, and Forex. That includes three months of Metastock with Zenith data, exact entry and exit signals on your charts, whatever, whatever security you wanna look at, whatever time frame you wanna look at, we also hold live interactive trade sessions. Um, and I host these myself with my partner, Richard. And um, we demonstrate the trade trend tool on the charts and look for opportunities together several times a month. Um, so we don't just leave you hanging. We hold these sessions in the evenings um, after the market's closed. Um, if you're not able to join, we record all the sessions and they get posted into our members area, which you get full access to all past recordings. And I'll feature recordings if you're not able to attend one of the live sessions. I also provide full support and personal coaching on these sessions as well as through email. So again, we help we help you. Uh, we don't just give you the tool. We help you get to where you want to be to achieve the success that you're looking for through the support that we provide. Uh, we also teach trade adjustments to fix losing trades. So we have a whole training that I'll that I'll uh, show you here in just a second that you'll get access to if you decide to check out our trade trend package. And we also cover the list of my most profitable tickers that I'm currently trading on our sessions. So you get access to all of these things in our Trade Trend Metastock package. And again, here's everything that Trade Trend provides. Accurate buy signals at the bottom of the slingshot using our proprietary blend of momentum indicators. You can use it on any security in any time frame. You can also use Metastock's incredible backtesting engine to test any security in any time frame. Um, to make sure that it's working well on that particular security or in that particular time frame before you place your hard-earned money at risk. So what I'm hoping to accomplish on our session today is to help you guys cut the learning curve because it is, as far as professions go, one of the steepest learning curves out there. Um, you know, probably you know, akin to, to, to a doctor or, or a lawyer. Um, I know Personally, it took me well over a decade before I was consistent and profitable and able to actually rely on my profits to make a living in the markets. Um, that's a long time. So I don't want you guys to have to wait that long. I want to give you the tools and strategies to help you achieve that in a much shorter time period. Um, starting as early as really today, as we'll give you the opportunity here in just a second. So I want you guys to ask yourself, if you're able to avoid the next major market crash and even make money from it, how much would that be worth to you? If you're able to buy low and sell high and even beat the pros, how much would that be worth to you? And finally, if you had an experienced coach guide you down the path to success, how much would that be worth to you? Well, here's the retail price of what we charge for Trade Trend on Metastock. For an annual subscription, it's $14.99, which is really a steal when you see what's possible, um, especially in real money live results that I've shared with you from my own personal trading. Um, our live trade sessions, we can only charge $550 for those for a lifetime membership. So you can achieve our uh, or attend our live trade session, sessions um, for life, as long as you want, whenever you feel like it. 
Um, you also receive personal coaching on those from me and via email, as I mentioned. That's a $1,997 value. We're also going to give you access to our members only Facebook group. If you're a Facebook user, um, we have over 800 members in our Facebook group that uh, belong to our packages like Trade Trend and use the tool themselves in their own trading. Um, that's $199 value. You get lifetime access to that so you can interact with all of our other students. We also teach you to adjust losing trades. Um, so I, sh I, I showed you one little trick on how to eliminate a lot of your losing trades using buy stop and sell stop limit orders on our session. We have a lot more little tricks and adjustment techniques that we teach. Um, so we're gonna give you access to all of those. That's a $900 retail value. And ultimately, you're gonna learn to trade stocks, futures, forex, and options with consistency. And really that's priceless. And we're gonna throw in a couple bonuses that I'll tell you about here in just a second. Uh, bonus number one is our professional online trading series. This is over 10 hours of online content. You can watch at your leisure, covering our best options, stocks, and forex strategies. And then we're also gonna throw in my ebook, how to create risk-free trades. It's a $97 retail value. So we've thrown a lot of value into this package for this Metastock event. So this is exclusive to the Metastock event, total value of over $5,000. We're taking 80% off today only. You can get it at 997, everything that you see, see here on your screen, as well as access to Trade Trend on the Metastock platform, okay? We are gonna limit this to 25 seats today. And the reason that we limit it is because I'm providing the live trade sessions and coaching to the students, and I can only manage so many at one time. Um, so if we get an influx of hundreds of, hundreds of people all at once, um, it just becomes unmanageable for us. As much as we would love to have that, um, we simply cannot manage it. So we do limit this to 25 seats. Once those are sold today, uh, we, we're, we're going to shut the doors down on this 997. Um, you still will be able to go in and get it at the full retail price of over 5000 for everything on the screen. Um, but if you want to get in at 80% off, um, I'll show you how you can do that. Simply go to www.altostrading.com forward slash Metastock. And I believe Jeff will put that in the chat box for you to make it easier. You can simply click on the link to claim one of the 25 seats. Again, altostrading.com forward slash Metastock. And I mentioned you get the two bonuses, the professional trading series, and bonus number two, my ebook, How to Create Risk-Free Trades and Let Your Profits Run with Little or No Risk. So we've got a couple of minutes left. I want to share just a couple of our testimonials. We have thousands of testimonials from our over 35,000 students who have used our training and tools like Trade Trend to be more successful in the market. Um, I want to pull one out of here that really resonates with me um, because he's one of our students that um, is extremely dedicated and, and put a lot of work and effort into becoming successful. Um, and that's Brian C., as you see uh, on the, the fourth testimonial down. Um, and he, he was struggling in the markets last year. In fact, he was down uh, around $42,000, he said. Um, and he's, he began using Trade Trend in his trading, uh, and he trades uh, futures. And he wrote into us earlier this year when the market was just going nuts and said that he's now recouped all of those losses and is net positive over $47,000 on Trade Trend trades all in, in futures contracts. So the system generated almost $90,000 in profits for him in only 90 days. Guys, that's an average of $30,000 a month in profits. And he said it would have actually done even better if not for some mistakes on his part. But ultimately, he's thankful to the good Lord for leading him to our system. And we're thankful to have Brian as a student. And we're really happy to see his success. And we have a lot of really strong testimonials like this. But this was a recent one that I, I was just very happy to see because I really worked hard with Brian. Um, to be successful with trade trend. So again, go to altostrading.com forward slash Metastock. It only takes one trade, guys, to pay for your lifetime package to everything you saw on your screen. But truly buying low and selling high is priceless and being ready for the next market correction, market sell-off. We don't know what, what's going to ha happen with the election, what the outcome is going to be, but I want you guys to be prepared for it. And then I'm going to throw in a quick guarantee. If you don't make your membership fee back in the first 90 days, I'm going to give you an extra year of trade trend on the house, no cost. That's a $1,499 value. All right. So that's how confident I am that you guys can become successful using our tool, Trade Trend on Metastock. I'm going to give you a full 90 days to use it. Again, if you're not profitable, whether it's paper trading, it doesn't have to be real money. Paper trade it if you want. If you're not able to make money with it, even in a paper trading account, we'll give you an extra year of it, no cost. altostrading.com forward slash Metastock. 
I'm basically out of time here. Um, I, I will see if Jeff will be willing to relay a couple questions to me. If yeah. I don't get any questions, um, you can email support at altostrading.com. Yeah, you can also give us a call too. We've, we, uh, 800-882-3040, we can help you with this. Um, we do have a couple questions. Um, let's see, Shushant wanted to know, 2020 was a difficult phase for everyone. Did you also make a profit during the 2020 phase? By 2020, do you mean all of this year or just during? The, I think he means uh, since January with kind of the big dip down. January. Yep. And then, yeah, yeah, I've been profitable. Um, I have been. It's been a rough year. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, it's been choppy. Um, I've I've been up pretty big um, at some points this year, um, and kind of seen some oscillation in profits. But I've I've remained in the green. I've remained profitable uh, this entire year. Um, it certainly hasn't been the easiest year that I've ever traded. <laughs> um, but yes, I, I am. I am profitable. Um, uh, another question, and I, I missed who asked it, but they were wondering for your futures trades, what time period is do you're looking at? Um, like so what, are you looking at from my from my brokerage account, um, those were off of daily charts. Um, oh, so it was Paul. Mm -hmm. Just one, <laughs> one contract each. Um, uh, Andrew wanted to know: Can you look at? Can you use this with stocks? Uh, most of your trades were forex and ETFs. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, as I mentioned, you can apply the signals to um, to any equity on your chart. Um, and uh, the, the thing I really like about Metastock is, as I mentioned, it's got a very robust backtesting tool. Um, and, and Jeff has run some backtests for me before, um, which really even blow me away. But you can backtest an entire basket of stocks. Um, so, you know, if you want to like look at the NASDAQ 100 or the S&P 500, you can run a, a quick back test on that entire universe of stocks and it will give you a really nice graph of uh you know like a profit profile of each individual stock and you can even sort those by profitability um and it's a great way to help screen for opportunities and look for different um signals uh within the software so yeah absolutely uh stefan wanted to know is this a one-time cost thank you for the uh, question yeah, Stefan. So, so the um the 997 package um, is for a year. Um, it, you're not locked into any any contracts or you have no obligation to continue. Um, if you want to continue with the trade trend signals after the 12 months, um, that would be a recurring uh, subscription. So again, normally those are $14.99. So you get you get the discount you're grandfathered in at that discounted price for, for life for as long as you want to remain a subscriber. Um, if you decide that you're proficient enough without the tra trade trend signals, after you um, get access to the rest of our training, um, you, you're not obligated to continue with those, and you do get lifetime access to everything else in the package, um, which I'll put back up on the screen real quick here. So everything else here, uh, you do get lifetime access to with no recurring fees if you decide you don't want to continue on with trade trend on Metastock. Perfect. Um, I think that's all the questions we have for. Uh, uh, John asked if we can show a Metastock chart. I'll do that real quick. But uh, before we do that, I do want to say thanks for coming in. AltosTrading.com slash Metastock. Um, uh, go ahead and get set up with it. I'm going to show you a chart of uh, the Dow Industrial Average real quick. So John, uh, or Jeff, John, I was looking at John's name. Jeff, thank you for coming in today. Thanks for you. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, for everybody, for joining. And welcome to all our new members that are joining. Thanks so much. All right. Let me show you how this looks on a screen too, real quick, as I promised to do. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change the presenter over to me. And uh, yesterday it was kind of kind of interesting. We, we were all on time yesterday. Today we're running a few minutes late, and that's okay too. We'll we'll try and make up the time as we go today. Um, for you, uh, John, I'm gonna show a chart of Metastock. This is included. You get a, a one-year subscription as part of the 997 offer, uh, so you do get an annual access to the software package. In addition to that, if you need Metastock, we'll actually give you a three-month trial as part of that package as well. But um, just to kind of give you an idea of how this looks, I would just this is just the chart I have open today because I wanted to see how the Dow was Dow's had its best week since I think June. Um, but here we've got. Um, uh, how it would look up on a chart. So this right here is where you would get a setup. Uh, here is where it actually triggered into the trade and we'd currently be long on the Dow, uh, but that's basically how 
right here you had a setup triggered this day you would have exited right here so here you had a setup the setup basically just tells you okay well if we break the high we're going to go ahead and buy into the security it broke the high a couple days later which triggered you into the security and here is where you would have exited so we'll have time a little bit of time to play with metastock quite a bit today um, i'm going to go ahead and click on uh, and just show you one last thing in here so if i open up this expert commentary you're going to notice right here there's a bit of a triangle that points straight down and that just tells you this is the day that we're looking at we are in a long position now an existing long position is open. The stop order for tomorrow for the next bar's trading is 275.51. Okay, so right now it's telling us exactly where we're at in the trade. We're in a long position right now. Here's where our stop is. If I back this arrow up, so for example, if I looked at this setup day, it's going to say, okay, the trend uh, trade trend projects a move up. The criteria for a buy setup has occurred. Blah 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 blah. Suggested entry price here. You can use a buy stop limit order. You do not want to take this trade if it goes above this size. So it's basically what it's saying very quickly is if it goes above this price, but not above this price, go ahead and buy. So it's measuring the risk that you're going to be taking. It doesn't want you to buy too expensively. And if the trade is entered, the initial stop order is 261.37. That'll update every day as you go as well. And it does a very, very good job of that. Um, you can scan for the software. We don't have a time to get into like a, too much with it, uh, but we'll we'll show you how scanning works uh, as we go a little bit um, on today, and as we if as we get some time, uh, Kelly Clement, uh, the the president here, is going to do a, a demonstration on the power tools in Metastock. So um, let me go back into the slideshow. Um, again, the link for that, if you want to take advantage of it, is altostrading.com slash metastock uh 800 882-3040 you can give us a call we can answer questions it's a great way to get a, a full year package uh from somebody that's running a successful hedge fund and uh, he's just he's done a really really lot of good work with us over the last couple of years i'd recommend it i don't think you're going to regret it so uh there's that we will say thanks to stocks and commodities again uh thank you for stocks and commodities for sponsoring us we, uh, you've done a great job. We do appreciate it. Also, anytime that you spend over 300 today, you'll get six months of free stocks and commodities magazine. If you spend over two, two, uh, $300, you'll get two years of stocks and commodities. So they've done a great job of supporting them. I can't recommend the magazine enough. They do a great job. So, um, so there you go. I do want to talk uh, real quickly before we get to our next presenter about a pre uh, the premium classes that we're doing on Sunday. So let me go ahead and uh, just kind of bring. Nope, that's the wrong one. Here we go. Uh, on Sunday, so we tomorrow today is free. Yesterday was free. Uh, tomorrow is free. On Sunday, we're going to be running some premium classes. They're going to be a little bit longer, 90 minutes in length. Uh, we're going to have three really good presenters talking about different things. So our, our first speaker on Sunday is going to be Steve Bigelow. He's going to talk about top ring candlestick signals and pattern trading. You can kind of get a little bit of an idea of what he's going to talk about. Steve is uh, somebody that I admire quite a bit. I wanted him to do a paid class. He's done paid classes with us in the past, and he always does a really good job. Uh, we're going to have Dr. Alexander Elder. Alex has some really great books um, uh, uh, coming to my trading room comes to mind, and he's going to talk about his triple screen trading system. He's also going to talk about current markets. And then we're going to have Hey, Greg, you need to fix this. Oscar Carboni, not Oscar Carnboni, but Oscar Carboni on here. And he's going to talk about he's uh, how to identify trend lines, support and resistance, and technical formations on charts. So this is going to be unmuted. Uh, it's going to be a, uh, basically uh, an hour and a half, four and a half hours of training on Sunday. And um, normally uh, 600 bucks. We're going to do 450 for all the conference people that come. Uh, we hope to see you there. If you want to take advantage of that, come on over to metastock.com slash conference 20 prime. You can also uh, visit us online at metastock.com slash sales chat. You can also call us at 800-882-3040. So uh, there you go. Okay. Oh, um, Let's go ahead and get Guy Cohen on here. Guy is our next presenter. I've met Guy a few times. He's He knows where to get breakfast 
in London. <laughs> but the thing that I'm going to talk about for Guy particularly is he does a very, very good job. Uh, and I really like the way he looks at optionable stocks. And he has some stuff that's actually really cool that he's going to talk about today. So uh, Guy, um, I can't hear you. Hi, Jeff. Can you hear me now? I can. OK, good. You can. Uh, I, got a I need bit to here. share my screen, don't I? Yeah, I'm, uh, I need to give you the permission to do that. You should be okay. getting it. I got it. Uh, let me okay. make sure that I am going to show the right one. OK, that sounds good to me. I'm just going to move this other window across. So am I sharing my screen? Mm -hmm. And uh, we can see you. And um, me? You can, I, I can turn me off if you like, or you can, uh, in terms of the camera. But it's just some people like <laughs> to see that you're real, and it's kind of mistakes could happen. It makes it all the more exciting. Yes, we want to see you. Because, I mean, it's there's so much handsome going on right there. Well, not about that, but it's just more that uh, it's good to see that if you if a mistake happens, then it makes it just everyone gets a little bit more on the edge of their seats, right? Video, I think I watch a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of webinars and stuff like that. I think they're way better with with cameras on. Uh, it's just oh me, yeah, so. and more fun as well. And by the way, this is my little rig uh, that I have. That's where all the that's where the magic happens. But you can do everything I'm going to show you tonight. You can do even on a not just a laptop, but actually a tablet as well. So uh, everything I show you today, um, yeah, that's my research rig if you like. But uh, but literally, I have an iPad Mini Five, and I do nearly all my research on that. But I'll show you that in just the next few minutes. All right, guy. Uh, I'm getting out of the way. OK. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me. I always love uh, hanging out with the Metastock guys when, when we can get in the same country, of course. Uh, and it's always, I love this platform as well, because it means you can wave at me. So if you can hear me and see everything you need to see, like my screen and everything else, can you just give me a wave? Because that really does help me realize that uh, it's not just me talking to myself, which is what I do anyway. Um, but uh, I know we have limited time, although I know also we're overrunning a little bit. So hopefully, Jeff will be generous. Good to meet you guys, and thank you for the nice comments all coming in. I aim to open your eyes to some things um, in the next uh, 55 minutes or so. But I'm going to go through quickly, and I'm going to go through in a very logical way, because everything that I do is based on actual empirical data, empirical results. And you'll see as I go through it why what we do makes such a lot of sense. Now, the title is here, How to Crack the Hidden Money Code, as we call it, for consistent lifelong profits with just one click. Now, the hidden money code, as I call it, holds the secrets of how you can follow the best, the biggest, and the most elite traders in the markets. As Jeff said, I'm Guy Cohen. I'll tell you a bit more about me in due course. And this is a special presentation for Metastock, who we really, really admire and like, and uh, we're really grateful for them putting on such a great event and helping you guys uh, learn and choose between the kind of things that you might want to do and what resonates best with you. Now, I talk about the hidden money code. What is the big money code? And how do we crack the hidden money code? Well, we crack the hidden money code with big money keys. Now, Elite investors are trading with literally billions of dollars every single day in the stock markets and the options markets. Now, this activity is largely hidden to the untrained eye, but it does actually leave a trail. And it reveals the, the, the big money keys reveal these hidden footprints. And the result of you being able to identify these footprints means that you can follow them and you can bank consistent profits in the market. You can move the guesswork, uh, save inordinate amounts of time, and also at the same time eliminate overwhelm. It's quite a simple process when you have the tools to do what you need to do. And it can all be done really now, literally by clicking a button. I'll show you that in a moment. Now, the essence of what I do and what I've been doing for years was effectively revealed this summer by the unmasking of SoftBank being the whale that stoked the tech rally. What SoftBank was doing was buying loads and loads of options 
And the market makers who were selling those call options had to cover their positions. And what that had the net effect of doing is ramping up stock prices, particularly in tech stocks, that they were going large on. And so that is the exact essence of what we do. It's a key part of what we call the hidden money code. And what happened this summer just literally went to prove our point really beautifully. Now, <clears throat> I will stand out differently to many of the people you might hear from. I do not believe that the same techniques apply to the same securities. In fact, I could provide you with infinite empirical evidence to suggest otherwise. There are many investment vehicles out there. There's real estate, but if you have real estate, you might be shackled to long-term debt and to also changes in, in government policy and interest rates, uh, et cetera. Now that's fine. It's good to have a real estate portfolio, but not all your eggs in one basket. Bonds and commodities, great, you can trade them, but you need to specialize in them. Hence, we got the cap and mortar board here. They are specialist things. You trade them differently. You don't trade bonds in the same way that you trade stocks. You don't trade bonds in the same way that you trade commodities. They are specialist areas. Um, so you cannot apply the same rules for one security over another. And that just makes absolute sense. Just because it's a chart doesn't mean it's the same thing. Crypto and Forex, I, I uh, liken to gambling because with crypto, they're just, although it's a very exciting thing, there just isn't enough evidence. There's not enough data to suggest if you can create a, a a consistent trading system from it. And Forex, well, Forex for the home-based trader, the retail trader, is a tough, tough game indeed with lots of leverage and therefore lots of capabilities, margin calls and stuff like that. And then you've got the other kind of uh, investment vehicle like alternatives, whether it's wine, art, vehicles, uh, you know, classic cars, that kind of thing. Again, specialist knowledge is required. So what do I believe the best way is? Well, empirically, the testing that we've done is the best way to invest is with stocks and shares and options on those shares as well. And the beauty of, of it is, as you'll see, is there's a real logic behind buying stocks. There's real value being created. And there's only one set of skills that's required. So it's quick and easy to start learning with minimal costs to set up. You can start anywhere with an internet connection. The time you have is your own. You'll get very quick results and very quick feedback on whether you actually are doing something right. And then you can choose how much you can do. But the beautiful thing about it all is once you master the technique, it is absolutely scalable. You can scale it up as much as you want, as quickly as you want. And the way that I'm going to teach you is a way it's simple, but importantly, logical and very different to anything you might have seen before. Now, the question from then is, why not all traders millionaires? Why not all stock traders millionaires? Well, several reasons, and I'll go through them very quickly. First of all, overwhelm. You've got so much choice. Even today, you have a lot of choices. Where do you start? So that's one thing. You have to figure out you know, who's the person or who's the, what's the technique that you are going to invest in and invest with. Then there's the time commitment. Once you do decide which techniques you want to learn, then that's a steep learning curve, potentially. And with some techniques, you're staring at screens all day. That is not the technique that we use. We do not stare at our screens. We don't do that at all. And then there's who's to trust, who resonates best with you. Now, for me, I always turn to the people that professionals turn to. That was something that I felt I made a rule on. If professionals trust somebody, then that would be interesting to me. But once you overcome these little hurdles, then trading can become literally the amazing vehicle to provide that consistency and that reliable income that you can be confident in as well. So what we're gonna be doing today is by the end you'll understand what the hidden money code is for the consistent lifelong profits. You're gonna learn first the truth about charts, the two costless mistakes people make and exactly what you should be actually looking for to get that consistency. Next, why do prices move? Why is it important that you know why prices move? And that's gonna be able to simplify your task incredibly. If you understand the essence, what drives price, then you'll be able to latch on to when price is likely to make those moves, simplify the whole thing for you just through pure, pure logic. And then we're going to go through the big money keys, the footprints, if you like, that will literally change your life if you adopt them. This is why people have been with me for 13 plus years without a break. Okay, this is where you're going to see a strong sign that big money is already involved in the stock and has likely, is likely to continue being involved and then create price movements. Let's go quickly now to the truth about charts and the number one biggest mistake. If you have a pen, please do write, scribble some notes. Uh, and I know this will be recorded by Jeff and his team as well. The number one mistake that 
so many people make is they forget the fact that what's inside a chart is actually a reflection of real activity with real people, whether they're on the floor of the exchange, like the New York Stock Exchange, one of my clients in the picture there, or whether it's people at home trading. And because of that, then they believe that they should have as many bells and whistles and indicators and lines and curves and angles and numbers all over their chart. This looks very pretty. All charts look very pretty when you stack them up, but it means you're then overcomplicating. And in mathematical terms, you're overfitting. Overfitting will guarantee failure at the end of the day. So we don't want to overcomplicate the chart, and we don't want to ignore the fact that the chart is just a representation of real activity. What you want is something that's simple and easy. And simple and easy and logical will lead to profit. And the charts I show you are also interchangeable. I want to make very clear the charts I'm going to show you today are interchangeable with Metastock charts as well. Metastock have the things that I am talking about today. So we're going to focus on the markers of real activity to become consistently successful. So give me a wave if that makes sense. We're not going to be doing as many lines and bells and whistles. We want markers of real activity. If you give me a wave, that would be really, really good. So just so I can see you. Okay, so there's some good waving going on in there. So why do prices move? And why is it important you understand why prices move? Well, the best way I can explain this was with a metaphor. Now, let's just say that you are, you've been hunting for your dream home and the asking price of that dream home, you've been saving up for months, maybe even years, the asking price of that dream home is 950,000. It's just a metaphor example here. And you offer the asking price. You think it's good value, you offer the asking price of $950,000. Now, uh, one of your rivals for this property is called Bob. He also offers $950,000, and so does Sue, and so does Jim, and so all the other people who are making offers on this home all offer the same price, 950 thousand dollars so what's the lesson here what's the learning point well big money is being thrown at this particular piece of real estate but big money on its own hasn't moved the price everyone's offering the same price everyone's offering nine hundred fifty thousand the price is still nine hundred thousand hasn't moved the value hasn't moved so let's now go on a little bit and let's have a different scenario the scenario now is that google have announced that five miles down the road, they're gonna build a headquarters. Now, what's that gonna mean? Well, it's gonna mean, one, everyone knows about it now, so everyone's got the same information, but information is good, it's very useful. But what it means is that the price of properties around the area is likely to rise because there's an influx of people being paid very well, gonna need homes, gonna need leisure facilities, and need improvements and uh, restaurants when they become open again, <laughs> et cetera. So the whole area is likely to improve, and so Bob, receives this information and offers more, as does Sue, offering 960, 970,000. You get the same information. You think it's worth even more, 990,000, and so on it goes. Now people are bidding against each other and it's becoming a bidding war. Here's the learning point. Big money on its own wasn't enough to push the needle, but big aggressive money, and the big word here is aggressive. Big aggressive money has moved the price, and this is how it works in all walks of life. But there is a third scenario, and this is key. Make sure you write it down. The third scenario is one not just of information, but scarce information. So Bob is particularly good at his due diligence and took a, a, a ride around the entire area, and he found that around the back of this dream home of his, there was a past of land owned by an old lady who is willing to sell, but not on the market. It's a private sale list. She's not making it public knowledge. And he now has that information. The parcel of land is available privately at the back, and only Bob knows about this. So now Bob has scarce information, which also means Bob has an edge. And with that edge, he knows in the back of his mind that he is willing to pay more. He's willing to pay 1.2 million, perhaps even more. Now, no one else knows this, so Bob has an ace up his sleeve. And if you want the ace up your sleeve, if you want to have the best edge you can possibly have, scarce information makes sense, doesn't it? Just give me a wave on that one, yes or no. Scarce information will give you an edge. If you give me a wave, 
that would be very, very useful. There you go. Thank you very much. So scarce information is the prize that everyone really wants to have that consistency of edge. And that is the learning point. You can write this down. Information is valuable, but scarce information is priceless. It's a bit like the diamond dealer, if you like. Now, most people have had experience of buying a diamond or receiving a diamond. And what we know as lay people, we know about, you know, vaguely about cut clarity, color, carrot, maybe even source. However, only the diamond dealer with their specialist education and training knows how to value it precisely so that they can have predictable outcomes each time. So they know that when they buy a diamond for $2,000, they will certainly be able to sell it for between four and $6,000. Typical diamond retail markup is between 100 and 200%. And of course, the average person, like us, only has a vague knowledge. So again, information is valuable, but scarce information is priceless. And the aim is here to make you the diamond dealer of the stock market. So what moves a price recap? Well, it's big money and it has to be aggressive. Big aggressive money is what moves prices the fastest and by the most. And again, information is valuable, but scarce information is what gives you the biggest advantage. And you know that just makes sense. And you also know that it works in exactly the same way with stocks. And this is the ultimate thing that you want to be looking for, scarce information. So we've done part one and part two, the biggest mistake with charts and what you should really be looking for and what drives price and why it's so important. Now, part three <clears throat> is what we call the big money keys or the big money footprints. Because the big money keys are the footprints where you can see big aggressive money, which is present already and lining up to do more. And it's the lining up to do more, which is key, because that's what's going to fuel the price move moving forward. And that's what you can take advantage of. Now, three of these footprints are happily readily available for home-based traders like all of us to exploit. And if you can identify these, then you will have that lifelong skill to make money consistently in the markets. And that's what you're going to get in the coming minutes. Before I get onto that, I'll just very quickly uh, talk to you a little bit about me because it might be useful for you to know that I might know what I'm talking about as well in order for you to pay best attention. Now, I am a professional trader. I've made over seven figures and thousands of percent in personal trading gains, including very spectacular runs, like from 14 and a half thousand to 187,000 uh, in just six months. Done that several times proven. But I'm also the uh, CEO and founder of OVI Traders, which is dedicated to helping home-based traders because I design uh, applications for me being a home-based trader. And I share those with people like you. And I work alongside people like Metastock as well. I have my exploits have uh, led to me being you know, various media channels like Reuters and Bloomberg, ABC News. I've had clients such as New York Stock Exchange for nine years where I design software for them. I analyze data for the International Securities Exchange. And I've had books, best-selling books on stocks and options with Financial Times and Wiley out of New York. So we're going about those, but there's some, some credibility there, I think. And also my big money insights, where I understood about big money uh, even more than before, was really from these blue chip clients like the New York Stock Exchange and the International Securities Exchange. And one of the big takeaway lessons that I learned from working with these groups as my clients is that, again, as I said earlier, one of the big things you must start to think about is that a chart must be a reflection of real people making real trades, not just lots of lines and squiggles. It's got to be having that, that um, interpretation, if you like, of supply and demand, buyers versus sellers, bulls versus bears. Now, this work has also taken me to having loads of professional clients. So I provide trading systems as well for professional money managers. Now, this is uh, two equity curves you can see. One is of the S&P in red here, which has done okay if you invested $10,000 in the S&P <clears throat> in 2005. That would be worth around $36,000 today, give or take. But if you'd invested in our systems, automated systems, long only automated systems, so a few things against it there, then that would be worth now around $277,000. Um, and that means an outperformance of the benchmark of 8.7 times or 769%. And if you want to know what happened this year so far, 
including the COVID crisis, we are currently beating the S&P this year by 19.71%. Our systems are up over 24%. The S&P is up just over, well, just a, a shade under 5%. That's a difference of 19.71%. It's pretty spectacular. It's pretty good. And it's holding its advantage pretty consistently through the year, as you can see from this chart. Again, we are in blue. The S&P is in red. So on, a, on a, an alpha basis, we, we have great superiority over a 16-year period. And that's why I'm able to command the big fees from the big professional money managers who pay me last, large sums. And literally, there are millions of dollars at any one time traded in the markets using my systems every single day. And that's how I get those big fees of 100,000, 122,000, 73,000, 44,000 fees from professional money managers. But this is what I really enjoy. I love speaking with people like you, making friends, seeing you at events, and just interacting. Many of my friends now are just deeply entwined with what I do, and it really helps when you help people make money, then they're going to be your friend. So I serve also home-based traders, and I've helped people transform their results and even their lives. Uh, there are just dozens and dozens and dozens of them. I'll just make a quick reference to Chloe, who 10 x her account in 18 months at a point where she was about to give up. And uh, we took her in hand and we changed her fortunes and changed her life, really. And she actually works for me now as well. But she almost gave up. She's actually based in Kuala Lumpur. So had quite a few disadvantages from a time base, time uh, horizon. And there's other ones who become, who, who trade a lot more and a lot bigger. And this is Roger. Again, not a massively active trader, but he's now about $450,000 in profit as a direct result of what we've done. He's a retirement guy. He isn't retirement. He's about 75 years old now. And it this what I'm about to show you transformed his retirement life. And you'll see something pretty spectacular as we go along. But for me, trading is all about my family now. I'm not nearly as aggressive as I used to be as a young uh, single guy. Uh, but I also like to do things for my kids. I had a new baby daughter earlier this year. Yes, I know I'm a bit old for a dad, but that's just the way it is. Um, luckily, just before I hit 50. And this is my new baby daughter. And for a bit of fun, I opened a little, you know, little sub account for her. And in with very little effort this summer, I uh, improve, in, increased her invested capital or my invested capital for her by almost double, 81.27% earlier this summer. Uh, and again, I was very selective about when I wanted to trade and how I wanted to trade. And that's what I did for her, 81.27% on invested capital. So that's a nice little nest egg that I will keep on growing for her and my son as well. Um, my little doggy doesn't have an investment account with me, but his needs are rather more uh, modest than the other two. There's my my son, about the same age as my doggy there. And that's all of us. It's really about family. But I've had 24 plus years now in industry experience, made millions of dollars in there. But also, I have learned how to simplify things and keep things logical and make them fun as well so we can enjoy the fun things in life. And that's what you're about to see as well. It didn't actually begin that way. When I began with trading, I was actually in a health crisis. I won't go on about that, but that led me to taking a finance MBA right in the heart of the financial district of London. That MBA finance would now cost around $57,000. And here's what I learned. Well, I learned quite a few things. But here was the thing that transformed my thinking, if not my life at the time. It was these two professors. And I won't go into it, but this is Gordon and this is Kevin. Gordon is a proper professor, very nerdy, not particularly commercial. And this is Kevin. He is uh, a very successful trader and worked at all the major big banks as well. Changes his business card, makes millions of dollars. But what was interesting, in, in different lectures, they both said the same thing. And that is this. And again, write this down. If you want to make big money, follow the big money. But even better than that, follow the big options traders, these guys. These are the elites. These are the people who take bigger risks. These are the people who risk more in order to make more in percentage terms. Now, it just makes sense, doesn't it? It's logical that if you know what they're doing and you know why they're backing the horse that they're backing, then, of course, this would make complete sense. Why? Because they've got the biggest resources to, how, to, to research the markets. And that's why these people are worth piggybacking on if, big if, if you know what they're actually doing. So this became a bit of a quest for me. I'm like, if I could follow the big money, make big money, that made sense. But if I could follow those big options traders. Now, this was back in 1997. And that was exactly the year that IBM and their 
supercomputer, their artificial intelligence, supercomputer Deep Blue, a real game changer at the time, beat Garry Kasparov in a series of chess. First time that had ever happened where artificial intelligence had beaten a human being, let alone a champion. Now, <clears throat> like that. Now, the big thing was for me, I was thinking, gosh, that could be my equivalent. And it became a big obsession. Uh, but what I soon discovered is that the scope of figuring how to do that would literally take years to research. It would require billions of rows of market data even then. It would require people called quantitative analysts. They are the analysts, the sort of mathematicians, if you like, in the heart of Wall Street and the city of London who get paid vast amounts for their mathematical prowess. We'd need specialist programmers industrial standard, uh, industry standard servers, serious specialist expertise, and of course, millions of dollars. I was literally banging my head up against a brick wall in discovering what it would take to be able to follow those big options traders. But luckily, what I did discover as well was that there were three other big money footprints for a fantastic success that I was able to use. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. So, what are they? Um, well, big aggressive money is what moved prices. We remember, it's not just big money, it has to be aggressive. So first key is actually big money itself. We measure that by volume. I'll show you that in a minute. The second key is aggressive. I hope that you can all hear me. Just give me a quick wave just to make sure you can. I just saw some comments. Okay, good, we can carry on. The second big money footprint is, of course, in the sentence in red. It has to not just be big money, it has to be aggressive money. People bidding above each other on the way up or uh, uh, below each other on the way down when they're trying to sell. So next key, the second key is aggression. The third key is very important because that gives you a tip off to the future. And what am I talking about here? I'm talking about key levels. When a stock penetrates a key level, it gets on the radar of certain institutions, maybe even amateur traders as well. And the more eyeballs a stock might have on it for specific reasons, then the more likely it is to make a move one way or another. Obviously, we want to make sure it's in the way that we are looking it to go in. So when we talk about big money, I uh, talk about a, what we call a volume rush. I'm talking about a spike in volume. If it's a green spike, we would correlate that with a move going up. And if it's a red spike, we, we would uh, associate that with a move going down. So big money, evidence of big money. So here's Perkin Elmer. And as you can see on my chart, if you follow my mouse down at the bottom here, you can see big, clear volume spikes in Perkin Elmer earlier this year. And that, what happened, that in addition with a couple of other factors, was able to move the stock uh, by 11% in seven days, making us a quick profit of $2,230.83. Very easy. That was based on volume. There are a couple of other factors as well, as you know. The second big money footprint is aggression. What do I mean by that? I mean a price jump. So the volume may have coincided with the actual price moving in a big way, as in it moved the needle. And ideally what you want is a jump in price and then a sideways move, like a flag or a consolidation, because that's going to then set up the ideal trading um, setup. So we want to jump. We also want to pause, but I certainly need that jump uh, as well. So I need the, the buying that's happened to be aggressive, or if it's on the way down, I need the selling that's happened to be aggressive. So here's tractor supply, again, earlier this year. And you'll see here that there is a big move. This circle is around a red bell. That red bell is obviously earnings, and that has triggered a big move up but it's often just the beginning. And you want to watch out for that because this is a great indication of future potential move, provided the other big money footprints are there. So I circled that just uh, to, to show you. Um, but yes, we have the big move from you know just around 90 to almost $115 in just a week or so. That constitutes a pretty decent big move. And then what followed from there was a 27% move in seven weeks, making us $3,360.20. The third key money footprint is key levels. Now, a key level can be any support resistance level, but here's the point about support and resistance that no one ever tells you. Support and resistance is made more relevant and more important the more eyeballs that are on it. And of course, the 200-day moving average, nothing magic about it, just has more eyeballs on it. 
Paul Tudor Jones made it famous by saying he wouldn't buy a stock below it. And so even hedge funds, institutions, as well as amateur traders, home-based traders and others, uh, and large investors too, will be looking at that 200-day moving average and seeing activity around it. So what we're looking for specifically is for it to have crossed a key level like the 200-day moving average and stayed above it on the way up or stayed below it on the way down. Very important. And there's special ways of filtering for that. So here's Lavungo uh, again earlier this year. And what you see here is a big move. It crosses that 200-day moving average, the red line there, and holds. And then it's ready for the next move, assuming, of course, the other big money footprints are there. And that, pro that propelled a move there of 160% in 11 weeks. And the reason it did it is because big money was not only already involved in that, as you'll see, but big money was also lining up to put more big money through that stock. So let's have a look at all the three big money footprints with Lavungo. And as you can see, big money footprint number one, big volume spikes, yes, in there. Aggression, yes, it's gone up from $20 to $30 in just a few days. That's a pretty big move, 50% in not, not long. That's, it's more than enough. Then the key level is breached and held. Give me a wave if you see this, if you see this absolutely instantly. What you're looking at here, guys, is not a chart. You are looking at behavior. We have simplified it. You're looking at behavior. Big money is in this stock and lining up for more. And that's how you make the $4,800 here, or 160%, almost tripled, in uh, just 11 weeks there. And you see, if we go back to Perkin Elmer, you see they're all there as well. You've got the volume spikes. We've got the cross and hold of the 200-day moving average, in addition to having seen uh, the big money, in addition to, obviously, the... the um, the aggressive move up as well. All big money, all three big money footprints are there in that stock, which is how it was such an easy trade. The same with tractor supply earlier. I talked about tractor supply earlier having the big move up. It did, but it happened to have a big move up through that moving average, it happened at earnings as well, and it did have a volume spike as well. So you see those three big money footprints all together. Now, what about bearish stocks? We're not always going to be in bullish markets. And look what happened in the COVID crisis. It was obvious there. Here's Roku. And let's just count them up. Do we have big money? Yes, we do. Big red volume spike there. Did we have it? It Was it aggressive? Well, sure it was. It went from 150 down to 110 in just about a week's time. That's pretty aggressive. Very aggressive. More than aggressive enough as we need. And then was a key level breached and then held? It sure was. So again, like, by the way, that was also the catalyst at earnings as well. And that made a profit there of $5,750.40. All because we saw what the big money was doing. We could identify it literally in a click of a button. And it's not just small stocks and little price stocks. It's big stocks as well. Amazon did it when it was $2,000. Did it exactly the same setup. It's so easy. And therefore, once it sets up in some kind of consolidation of flag, you're ready to go in there. And then that's a 50% move, even with a big stock. So there's a $2,000 stock. And then there's a $3,624 profit just with a couple of stocks. 50% in three months. All the big money markers uh, and keys are there. It's also for smaller stocks like Bank of America, even smaller than that. Again, we've got all three big money uh, footprints there already 16% in eight weeks. So let's just do a quick recap of those. First of all, we want to filter for what we call a volume rush or a volume pocket. That's the big volume spike in the last 30 days or so com in comparison to what's gone before it. The second thing we need to do is filter for price jump, okay? Because that means that big money has not only been there, but it's been aggressive. And the third thing we're going to filter for is a key level being breached and held typically the 200, but you can also include um, the 50 and even the 20 and other key levels. But we only fo I focus on these because I want to know where all the eyeballs are on. I want to know where all the attention is. Now, there is a fourth step. Earlier on, we talked about scarce information and how valuable that is. Remember, scarce information isn't just valuable, it's priceless. And if you can align that with what we're doing here, it puts you at a serious advantage to pretty much anyone else. So again, we want to be the diamond dealer of this. Now, this is something that I talked about with a private group um, of mine, but before I did, 
I was on Twitter and I just said, here we got some classic winners, including Workday, JB Hunt, uh, Silver, Pass, FCX, etc. And I just mentioned some. And I said, who's next? Roku, perhaps. And Roku was setting up beautifully. All four, all three big money footprints were there. And in my private group, here was Jennifer in my private WhatsApp group saying that she was looking at a few stocks. And I just sort of mentioned her very casually, have a look at Roku because Roku was setting up. So I did, and she said, that was interesting. Uh, she I said, thanks, Guy, Roku looks interesting, more interesting than the other ones she was looking at. <clears throat> and she said she then got into Roku, since the stock she was watching didn't move as fast as Roku did. Thanks for highlighting that. That's what happened. So she made a quick $509 in just literally a few hours in and out. Now, it's not normally our way, but she just did it uh, and made that quick profit there. Pretty cool, I think you would say. For that one again the three the, the big money keys the big money footprints were all present and then broku broke out and formed a really easy <clears throat> trade so we have those four pieces and i'm going to talk about scarce information a little bit more with you because if you can add scarce information to the three other big money footprints, you'll never trade another way ever again. It is it is literally like that. Uh, and again, you will focus on stocks and stock options. And I don't care what anyone says. Everyone, it, these different securities need to be traded in different ways because with stocks, you don't get the scarce. So with in other securities, it you don't get the scarce information. It's only with the stock market that you can have the ability of following a certain type of aggressive money. I'll come on to that in a little bit. It's very, very important to, for you to understand that. Now, in addition to those four factors, there is, of course, no escape in the fact that any kind of trader will always need a robust trade plan. In that, you have a trade plan in order to control risk, but also ensure your consistency. And for that, I have a proven four-step formula which means that you enter in the right way and you have your stop in the right place and also you take your profits in a logical fashion and can ride, ride a trend if a trend's going to actually happen. Now, I teach that all in my Flag Trader program. Flag Trader has all the tools, the training and the support to help you generate a consistent income. Just to give you an idea, I set up Flag Trader 13 years ago. It has obviously advanced progressively year by year, got better and better, and I still have the same people being members of Flag Trader today as who started 13 years ago. And there's only one reason that's happened is because it works and it keeps on getting better and better. And this is your path for lifelong profitable trading as so many have found before you. And literally this can be done literally in you know as little as a few days or weeks where you can be confident and consistent and still have the time to do the things you really want to do because we're not there sitting and staring at our screens. And if you noticed here, the images showing it on mobile devices, you are correct. It will work also on a mobile device. Now, here's your routine as a flag trader. You would log into the members area, again, with your morning cup of joe or whatever it is you, you have. Uh, and again, you can do it on a mobile device, particularly a tablet, like, a, like an iPad. I use my iPad mini. And what you then do is you click what I call the fast filters. It's just literally a button. And what that button will do will instantly reveal stocks exhibiting the, for the big money footprints with one click, just literally all the filters preloaded, bang. And you can evaluate those with the training that I give you. And then you go through the stocks and you pick the best looking setup or best looking setups if they are looking good that day. And again, you don't be having, you know, not having to trade every day. In fact, you can be as selective as you want because it, you're not having to invest that much time to do this. And there was a message that David sent in uh, literally, this was literally last week uh, when we released a new version of what of this whole uh, software. And he says, Guy, I am blown away by the constant and continuous updates, developments, ongoing ways, making the whole system more intuitive and easier to use. I love you guys. But of course, you know that. Thank you. This is what we're about. This is what we do. Now, this is how you use Flag Trader. First of all, you can use filters instantly for the best big money setups. Now, these are like no others. You won't find them anywhere else as a 1997 value, but you've also got the ability to use my one-click fast filters and view my, my trades, my watch lists as well. Now, that literally makes everything a button just like this orange one here. You click on that and literally you will see 
the results of those fast filters in literally a millisecond. And again, that has a value of 1997. Then there is a learning vault. Now, the learning vault contains videos and written articles to, in order for you in courses with interactive Q&As as well. So you can test yourself. And that's going to help you establish consistency. That has a value of $597. And critically, and I emphasize this, this is an entirely logical system with some very special uh, parameters and filters that no one else in the world has. Um, and the essence of that is that it only ha the course is only about eight and a half hours. You don't need to be spending 100 hours. You need practice, yes, but the learning of this system is tremendously easy, including the four-step trade plan in order for you to trade not only with confidence but with the lowest possible risk and that has a value of 997 again there's no trade plan anywhere else like that now i also hold members only live sessions where we go through stocks i go through the different filters and i show you what i am looking at and why one might be better than another as well and we have these wonderful interactive very entertaining and fast paced and uh, exhilarating live sessions that has a 997 value again for members only support is something that i'm well known for we are really hot on it i make it a big priority that's why people stay with me for 13 years and more and this is just some uh people who have said um, in twitter so you can actually look these up if you follow me on twitter the worst bugs the ones you can't replicate thanks to your team for your hard work guy thanks for your diligence and persistence exemplary follow-up says Ollie, there was stressed problem there was straightened out within minutes of reporting it to support. So we're really hot on that. Now the total value of all this is six thousand five hundred eighty-five dollars. It the regular price is three thousand nine hundred ninety-seven. I'll show you a link later where you can actually see that is the price if you went there. But today, just for MetaStock, just today, it is nine nine seven, and we do have a twenty-five seat limit because of. That's something I will show you a little bit later, which uh, has a one-to-one -one basis of what we do. So what we like to do is we like to actually have one-to-one -one sessions with you. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Now, <clears throat> I want to get on to scarce information because we've made a big point about that. If you have scarce information, then you automatically will have an edge. Information is valuable. Scarce information is priceless. Now, Roger, I mentioned earlier to you, Roger is based in the UK. He's made over about $450,000 in profits. And that was after six years of trying other things and getting very frustrated. It literally, trans what I'm about to show you here, literally transformed his retirement life. Okay, so it's super important that you pay attention for right now, because this is the money shot right now. This is why I get paid these big sums by professional money managers in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is why I'm able to consistently outperform with our portfolios, even though they're long only, even through crises like the COVID crisis, et cetera. This is why we've outperformed the S&P by, by about nine times or why we've outperformed it in this year alone by, over, by almost 20% and still going strong. It's because of those professors and what they got me to think about. And following the big options traders was, yes, a bit like hitting my head against a brick wall. It did require years of research. It does require billions of rows of market data, which grow every day exponentially. It does require quantitative analysts, quants as they call it. It does require specialist programmers, industry-sized standard servers, special expertise, and it has cost me millions of dollars cumulatively over the years. But this is exactly what I've gone and done. The answer is this simple line um, is what I created. This simple line here is the result of looking at what options traders are doing. And this advert here, interestingly enough, this advert here, do you have the skill to spot where the line crosses from negative to positive? Uh, was the advert that Roger answered, and that changed his life. This little page here changed his life, transformed his retirement life. He's made hundreds of thousands of dollars very part-time. Because the reality is that I created that indicator that follows the big options traders. And that indicator is called the OVI. It has recently won a patent. Uh, you can actually look it up, 10803522B2, October 2020. After eight years, I finally got it patented. And that means it's pretty special. It's very difficult to get any kind of software patented these days. And what it is, is it's a line 
that has a min minimum of minus one, that would be in the bearish territory, and a maximum of plus one, that would be in the positive bullish territory. And so if you look at overstock here, all we're doing is with the OBI, the options volatility indicator, is revealing what hidden money is betting on. Options, transaction, data that no one else has got. And again, it's patented, it's protected. So we would expect it to be red if the stock is going down, and we would expect it to be blue if the stock is going up. That means it's correlating quite nicely. And of course, with overstock here, that's exactly what's happened. Stock is trending down nicely, and the OVI is mainly red, and it's trending up on the second half of the chart, and of course, the OVI is blue. And when it is doing that, then we can look at setups. That's the magic of it. And again, it's going to transform your trading. And again, it's only a button now. But with Chloe, she went from having a 40% win rate, in other words, she had a losing rate, to then having a consistent win rate of over 80%, 84% win rate. That was for her a dream trip to Europe. She came and met us. And then we thought, wow, this girl's really, really bright. Let's hire her. <laughs> so that's what I did. It completely changed her life. And she's trading fantastically well into you know, well over 100 trades and still doing fantastically well. 10x to her account. And this is Kyle, slightly more modest, but Kyle is a retiree in Florida. And he went from having a 3 out of 10 win rate, which is a massive lose rate, um, to then having an 8 out of 10 winning ratio. And now what he makes from his trading exceeds his social security. So, you know, really important. And it says here um, the results are almost predictive uh, on that one. So super important with real, real people. And again, real money is traded in this as well. Now, let's talk about this hidden money or scarce information because now we don't just have big money and aggressive big money in the key level being penetrated we now are looking at hidden money and if you look at the chart of Lavunga again can you now see why it was so easy to do can you now see that not only we had the big money and the aggressive money and the key level but we also had the hidden money because this indicator in here everyone no one else in the world has got that it's just us. And also there's some with Metastock as well. But this is because we have an agreement with Metastock as well. But this indicator is invisible to everyone else. No one else can see it. And what it represents is aggressive options activity in a way that is algorithmic and not replicated anywhere else, no, nothing like it. And of course, you'll see in those other examples I showed you now, they all, if you hadn't noticed before, you'll notice now, all had hidden money before the move and the setup actually happened. Just give me a wave if you can see that now. And now you can see not only the big money in the stock, but you can see the big money in the options. Give me a wave if you can see all that. And I'm gonna show you example after example. Here was 11% in seven days with Perkin Elmer, it was like 160% in just a couple, in just a few weeks. Here's tractor supply again. Hidden money is there. So the setup is here. The one, two, three are there. The big money, the aggressive money, the key level being hit and uh, being crossed and held, but also the hidden money. Again, the hidden money that no one else can see, giving us a 27% return in seven weeks or $3,360. But that's just 27% with the stock. If you played the options on that, obviously you'd be looking at more like over 120%. And that's with deep in the monies. Here's Roku, the example I showed you on the way down. And look, look where the hidden money is here. It's negative. It's bearish. It's persistent. There's a big sell-off happening, and we're catching it at the highly opportune time with minimum risk. And again, still another 50% it traveled down in just 15 days. Very, very simple and very, very easy. Five and a half thousand dollars there. And with Amazon, the same kind of situation. Um, there had been negativity in Amazon with the uh, options traders, and then it turned positive. And that's when we could get in safely. And again, it happens. And all these examples I ever show you are not done after the event. They're all done with trades done by us and our members out and, and, rec and not recommendations, but certainly highlighted stocks as well before the event. And that's how you made just with a couple of shares, $3,624 and $40. Again, the hidden money's there. There it is with Bank of America. You can see it. And you choose your entry point you know, again, at the opportune time when it's gone up and sideways through that key level with big volume and, of course, with the hidden money present. And here's Kirkland. The Kirkland was a great one. It was actually quite a low-priced stock. But look, there 
is hidden money. What does it represent? Either people suddenly realizing what a wonderful uh, opportunity this is right now, or uh, maybe some uh, shenanigans. Who knows? Doesn't matter. This did 100% in just six days. You can see all the big money uh, uh, footprints all there, and the key level, the big move, the big volume, and the hidden money with this scarce information. So $1,748 of profit there, but it got even better. Uh, this was a note on Twitter that I received immediate first profit on this one as well, but it got even better because it then traveled even more, 643% in just two months. And again, that's a profit of almost $6,500. And you see it, it breaks out and then it keeps on going. And then we put our trade plan together to manage that. Here was Leg Mason back in January. And again, this happens quite a lot. You'll see a lot of this going on here. Again, the big money footprints are there. Big money spike in there. The big price rise from 35 to 38. That is plenty in just a short place of time, uh, over 10% and or almost 10% really. Actually, it was 10% there. And the hidden money coming in. And what happened to that one, as happens more frequently than we would imagine, is it ended up being a buyout, a takeover, and that made a profit of $3,913, 34% in just three weeks, and that will often happen as well. Here's what the quants say, those eggheads, those very intelligent people in Wall Street and in uh, the city of London, they say using institutional standards of financial modeling, the OVI stands up to rigorous scrutiny as a valuable, logical, and robust indicator, highly valuable, predicting the broad market sentiment and also identifying stocks that subsequently perform. The link to get it is www.ovi.to forward slash big money. Do not do HTTPS, do not do that. It might not get there. So make sure it doesn't do HTTPS. Now, again, if you'd had $10,000 in the S&P when this started, uh, you would have about $36,000 now. But if you'd had it in, the, in this OVI model, that would be around $277,000 today. Uh, what new people say, people haven't necessarily traded before. This was Henry, uh, and this was literally just in August. Uh, I started trading with OVI in May. I set optimistic monthly income goals. Guy, I'm easily meeting my trading goals using options. Thank you. This was actually on Twitter. Again, you can see this if you follow me on Twitter, easily meeting my goals. This is Bernard. This is a few years ago, so you can see some history here. First and foremost, using OVI has increased my confidence trading the market. It feels almost unfair or like cheating. And in many cases, we might actually be following what cheats are doing. It doesn't really matter. That's not our business. What we want to see is what big money is doing. Downside risk feels very low as well. I've learned to take my profits. That's part of the trading plan. Uh, and uh, we were up about 70%. I had one that was up over 550% in gains. And these are the steps. It's terribly simple. You log in and you can do it on a mobile device. You click this button to get the, the big money filters. It's just a button. And then you can review stocks with the training we give you. And you'll know exactly which ones are, are ripe and which ones are not. The good, bad, and the ugly. And we want to trade the good and the pretty. Um, and because it's a, um, a mobile optimized piece of software and all the data is put in there as well, you can actually also do this uh, anywhere you like and anyhow, it doesn't matter who you are and what you do, you can be doing this as long as you've got a mobile connection, uh, you can be doing your research pretty easily in all kinds of exotic and nice places. Now here's the special meta stock offer. First of all, the pro that you can filter for the big money setups using an array of filters uh, which give you plenty of flexibility while being focused on the technique that has a 1997 value. But we also have the one click fast filters and watch list. This enables you to do it literally by clicking a button to find those stocks. All the filters pre prepared for you. Again, a 1997 value, immense time saver there. There's the learning vault of videos for consistency that you'll get. And not only that, but you can not only take a bit of a course, but you can also test yourself as well and see if you're going in the right direction, learning the technique. We also have the four step trading plan for the lowest risk. This is hugely important. This will be, this will absolutely, uh, th this trade plan has saved people left, right and center in terms of being in control of your trades, 
and also you've got the empirical advantage that the OVI gives you and the big money footprints, but you also need the trade plan to make sure that you control the risk as well. And you can ride a trend if it's gonna happen. Now, we have my members only live sessions. Again, that has a 997 value too, and that's where we interact. In an environment similar to this, but looking at live opportunities. Priority support, I went through this. We're very hot on it. It's very important to me that we do that for you. But there are some bonuses as well. The first bonus is, not surprisingly, but it's a key one is that scarce information in the form of the OVI is locked in, it's built in to those filters, and that's what's going to give you the highest odds, the most confidence, and the scarcity that no one else has unless they're in my group. That has a value of 1997. The second bonus is that interactive one-to-one -one piece. So there's two parts to that. First of all, you'll get an onboarding session, and that will be a recorded uh, event with me. So that will get you and show you through the program. And it's you know, nice and fun and fast paced, uh, but it also show you what to do and how to do it. Plus, there'll be also a live one to one with one of my top mentors as well to basically personalize this for you because no one's walked you know a foot in your shoes let alone the millions of miles that you have walked in your shoes and so we can tailor this for you as well and, and make certain adjustments for you you're tr still trading the same system but it can be adapted for your particular needs time scales risk appetite etc has a value here of 1494 and that's why we also make that um, at that 25 limit here. The third bonus is you might have noticed me circling those red earnings bells. Well, earnings is one of my favorite strategies, particularly my post earnings. So we also will give you the ultimate earnings blueprint. This is the favorite strategy of all my OEI traders everywhere and that's worth 497 but actually priceless and number four you heard about chloe 10 xing her account having a hit rate of 84 percent well guess what she has her own watch list and you can now have access to that as well we call it the 10x watch list and that also changes with time as do mine it's dynamic watch list that also has a 597 value so you'll be able to literally uh, follow the kind of things that she's doing or and at the same time, follow what I'm doing as well. The link to go to is ovi.to forward slash big money, and there is a 25 seat limit. It has a total value of over $10,000, $10,673, with a real price of 3997. There is a website you can go to, and you'll find that there. But just for today, just for Metastock, it is 997. When you do enroll, you'll then be able to book your one-to-one -one coaching session. Uh, you might get me, you might not. If you do get me, uh, you might have one of these guys also uh, interrupt the uh, session. Don't worry, it won't take any, won't take any time away or add on the time. But sometimes we get joined by a few other little creatures. Again, ovi.to forward slash big money. Um, I don't have a, uh, a, what we call the impossible guarantee. I give you a very straightforward guarantee. None of these extra time, this and that nonsense. I give you just a 30-day guarantee. If you don't like it, we'll just give you a cash refund. No questions asked. There's no catches, no quibbles. If you don't get along with it, for whatever reason, we'll just give you your money back. It's not a problem. And guess what? Hardly anyone does because once people are in, they want to keep it. And that's why I've had people for the last 30, sorry, 13 years. But again, the choice is yours. And it is plenty of time to evaluate this. But again, it's a zero risk zero risk to do this and if you do go to a link you will see it here at literally at 3997 that is the checkout page so don't use that one use this link here obi.to forward slash big money do not do https that might get you in some trouble uh it might not get you to the thing sometimes that's a bit flaky but um the total value again over ten thousand dollars real price almost four thousand dollars but meta stock value right now with a 25 seat limit and there are hundreds of people here today that is 997 at ovi.to forward slash big money there are people from all over the world doing phenomenally well this is mike in minneapolis just show you again if you look at this with m phase you'll see exactly what he was doing i'm going wow that looks easy and of course it is if you have the big money footprints, if you know what they are, and you can click on a button to find them. And actually, there were several instances of that one for him. That's how he made a 150% winner again. And he's WhatsApped me to tell me about it and etc. as well. 
And there are some big hitters we have, like Steve making 53,000 on LinkedIn a few years ago, 600% return. We've got Vinny making $34,000 in profit on Apple. And we often see this a seven or eight out of 10 win ratio. That's what Vinny's done. And again, so has Doug, an eight out of 10 win ratio, five Xing uh, profit on on Boeing with the ten thousand ten and a half thousand dollars. Here's Carl again. Again, the results almost predicted eight out of ten win ratio for him. Here's Kedzie made over two hundred thousand dollars in profits with us. She did have fifteen newsletters that she subscribed to. She's now down to one, and she even just sort of writes to me pretty casually. Says I've made twenty one thousand since January the first, and maybe another four or five thousand in the next hour or so, nice and casual, isn't that? But again, we have um, people from all walks of life all over the world doing this, and there's lots of them, and this is why they stay, because it's consistent and it's very focused, and it's focused where you can get an edge with scarce information. And the only place you can get scarce information is with stocks. And the beauty with stocks is you can then apply leverage, simple leverage with options as well. So the link to go to is ovi.to forward slash big money. It is risk free. There is a 30 day guarantee and we honor it if that's what you want to do. Now, most people then do these kind of presentations and they have some sort of quote from Mark Twain or whoever it might be, Tony Robbins, whatever. And I just don't have any of that, but I do have a different type of quote. Um, and before we go into the cues, if we have time, and that's this. If you write this down, this is the mantra, T-W-Y-S, and it's not a stock. It actually is not a stock, but here's what it stands for. T is for trade, and W is what, and Y is you, and S is C. Trade what you see, and what I mean by that is what we see, because what we see is big money. We see big money that's being aggressive. We see key levels that are crossed and held, either bullish or bearish, and we also critically, that no one else sees, we see hidden money activity as well. The place to go to is www.ovi.to forward slash big money. I can tell you two things for certain. There is only one security that you can take advantage of scarce information, and that is stocks, and the beauty is, you can leverage with stock options as well. That's it for me. I can hear Jeff anxiously. I can hear Jeff has come online. Kick me out, Jeff. Yeah. It's good to see you, Kai. <laughs> as we, always, we I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping that in 2021 we can go back to breakfast again. We will. Don't worry about if that. Lo if London will let us in, like our passports aren't very good right now. It will, it will be fine. 12 months, it is. It's a 12. Robert, Robert, it's a 12-month subscription. It's a 12-month subscription, Robert. And, and yeah. grand, grandfathered. Can I just also say grandfathered as well? So if you're in at that price of 997, that's what the price will be uh, forever. It will never change after that. So you can re-up at that same, or that same price as well. So uh, 997 PA. So you won't have to come in at the $4,000 level if you get it here today. That's why it's such a great deal. And again, it's risk-free. I also wanted to kind of point out real quick, um, if you do have uh, any access to the club membership, you can actually for free pull all the OVI data into Metastock as well. And yes. um, we worked really hard on that, but it's I think it's the only platform you can actually kind of pull OVI into. Am I right about that? Yes, uh, I will, will also do, and I'll tell you, that's one thing that I meant to do, and I, I do apologize, is plus we'll give three months of club as well. So three months of OVI private, and that will then, you'll be able to access that uh, on Metastock as well. So three months of private club will come with this as standard. So when we see that order come in, I will know exactly what to do. I'll tell my support people and we'll interact with Jeff and his team. Give it a day or so. If you're doing it today, let us, you know, we'll, we'll get that done for you early next week. All right. One last thing. Uh, thank you for the great presentation, Long says. Thank you. Uh, pick a number between one and 1,000, uh, 12,624. I've got to. I've got to pick a number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're. You're. It, we're giving away a valuable prize in a second. Oh, okay. I'll do nine nine seven. Then how about that? Okay. All right. Thank you very much, guy. Thank you, everybody. We're, we're, Thank you. <laughs> All right.
Let's do this real quick. All right, very good. Oh, I... <laughs> uh, sorry about that. I didn't, it, that wasn't intentional. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and show this. One of the things, oh, Greg, here you go. One of the things that I did want to kind of point out was like with the, uh, if you do have this club membership, and that might be a good place to start. We do, it's not an add-on that you necessarily pay for. As long as you have your the OVI club membership, you do have access to get in the indicators, the explorations, and expert advisor, and a template with OVI. You can actually get that with Metastock um, if you want. His private club membership is really, really good. And what we're going to do on that is if you pay, you can pay $197 for the, a month of membership, and we'll give you two additional months for free. So it's kind of like a buy one, get one too free. Uh, that'll include full access to his club membership as well. Uh, give us a call at 800-882-3040. Uh, you can visit us online for that at metastock.com slash sales chat, uh, or you can come up to metastock.com slash conf promo to take advantage of that. And also available up there is our buy one, get two free months of Metastock offer. So, you know, Metastock, it's been rated number one in its price category for more than 25 years in a row. We've been talking about it all day. We've been talking a little bit about scanning and it's really a great platform. If you go up to metastock.com slash comp promo, I'm just gonna show you this real quick. I know we are running a little bit, um, behind, but um, let me just show you kind of how you can take advantage of that. So I'm going to just go in and type in metastock.com slash conf promo. And um, if you're new to Metastock, you want to do the two free months uh, or the two months for the price of one, just right here uh, on the page, you can do either Metastock DC or Metastock real time that allow you to do that. Um, if you want to do that club membership, there's a lot of different options that are up here, but right here you do have the club membership for Guy Cohen's OVI Traders Club. And if you buy one month, you'll get three as part of that as well. So the website for that is metastock.com slash conf promo, um, or you can give us a call 800 882-3040. We'll also give you, uh, if you're new to Metastock, a buy one, get two free as well. So uh, we are running a little bit behind, but it's important. We're going to give away a prize right now. And um, let's go ahead and find number, what was the number 997 on here? And it'll, it'll take just a minute. <laughs> All right. Uh, the prize that we're giving away is uh, a, a recorded DVD from John Bollinger, um, where it was recorded in ca in California. It's called the Introduction to Bollinger Bands. It talks a little bit about the construction of Bollinger Bands and how to use it in your trading. Uh, he, they normally charge $197 for it. And the lucky winner of that uh, particular prize is going to be da -da -da -da, Sean O. Okay. In the USA, Shano, I'm going to be sending you a message and uh, we'll get you out that uh, 708 area code. Sean, we're making an effort not to like call out last names here today, but I'll drop you a message and um, we'll get you in touch with that. So, Sean, uh, uh, wait for me and we'll be sending that over to you. So, um, Thank you, Stocks and Commodities, for sponsoring today's event. You guys are awesome. We appreciate it. And our next presenter um, is going to be Anne Marie Bain. Hey, Anne Marie, how are I did notice, it uh, looks like your audio is connected. How are you doing today, Anne Marie? I'm very well. And how are you? Good. It looks like we're, yesterday it was kind of interesting. We were running on time all day yesterday. And today we are just running behind since from the get go, but we are starting a little bit late. I apologize. Just like me to gum up the works. <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah. It's totally your fault that we're bringing you on late. <laughs> anyway, um, let me introduce you properly. Um, Amory, we've been working with for a while now. I know. Um, I, I, I thought it was interesting that I talked about Roku. We like to look at Roku charts from time yeah. to time. Um, Emery does a great job. Uh, we just, uh, she's a frequent guest in our market recap. And um, I'm going to basically just get out of the way, let you start talking. So before I do that, let me go ahead and pull the screen over here for you. All right. Okay. 
I made you the presenter. All righty. Okay, well, I'll hop on in if that's okay with uh, you. And uh, I uh, can't see any of the questions, so you, I'll leave you to be in charge of all of that for me. And um, we'll go from there, right? All right. Sounds good. Okay. I'll ask you questions if we need to. All or right. To. Superb. Superb. All right, everyone. Uh, again, my name's Anne Marie Band. Uh, Jeff and I have known each other uh, over over a decade. It's been so long. And the older I get, the less I seem to remember. So if you can hear anything in the background, it is landscapers. Since I am here in Cape Coral, the, um, the grass never stops growing. So what I wanted to talk to you today about is managing your risk and how to assess risk. There have been some incredible uh, presentations about all kinds of things that you can use to do well. And of course, my add-on is no different. It's an excellent way to allow a system that sort of uh, you resonate with. And it allows you to say, hey, where can I buy? Where can I sell? And that sort of thing. But one of the most important things that a trader has to focus on, and my thought here is to give you information that no matter who you purchase from Metastock, realize one, you're getting the best customer service literally on the planet. There's no place better than them. And if you call in and there is a question about any one of the add-ons that you buy, a lot of times those folks reach right out to someone like me or whomever it is that has the add-on and say, hey, here's a question, and we get to respond immediately. So we are actively engaged in getting your answers, and they are very keen, they, Metastock, very keen on making sure that you are getting the best customer service that you can so that you can use the product well. Now, here's the interesting thing about any time we buy a product. There's a part of us that goes, wait a second, how do I, do I just look at it and go, okay, it tells me to buy, so I buy. It tells me to sell, so I sell. And when trend is doing well, that is absolutely true. The markets, however, only trend about 30% of the time. So when you get a signal, in order to use that signal best, you must assess your risk. And so one of the things I'm going to talk to you about is really what I think is my trading edge. And I, I trade to eat for a living. I trade every day. I trade the futures market. And so my goal is, can I get in and make some money without, one, drawing down my account, or two, um, demoralizing myself by losing more than I need to, or more than I'm uh, capable of losing psychologically before I get into trouble. And so there's really one thing I do. So what I wanted to do is sort of give you that shot. My face looks so gigantic in here. Can I make it smaller? Um, what I wanted to do is show you something called an OODA loop. So here, here it is. I'm going to assume, one, that you've purchased a fantastic Metastock product. And two, that product is, where is Cape Coral? It is on the Gulf side of Florida. So I actually am on the coast. And it is uh, very lovely, I will have to say. So that being said, um, what we do here, what I want to do here, is show you how you can use any mechanic. And within this presence, which is the OODA loop, you're going to be able to discern where your risk is and what needs to happen from your price action. The OODA loop is something that I use every single time I step into a trade, every time. What it will do is allow you to use something that is 
wonderful, like my add-on, of course. I'm going to say my add-on's wonderful because it is. So that OODA loop is going to help you see, OK, if this is telling me I have a cell zone, and it actually begins, these uh, occur during the formation of the candlestick. And so it'll tell me something while that candle is forming. If I say, hey, listen, this is a cell zone, by orienting around the chart, it will tell me what is my risk and where my targets are very likely to show up. All right? So let's look at that very closely. Background, UDA is really from... Um, her sharing screen looks stuck. I hope not. Um, but what the UDA does, and let me make sure that you are seeing my... Let's see which screen you are looking at. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. You're so kind. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to observe. Here's something that I want to share with you. Metastock is clearly in a class by itself. It sits above and beyond in so many different categories. But for you to use Metastock most accurately and most efficiently, you must become an active part of the process. So here's what you do. You, you come in and you build a scan. Sorry. That's me using my hands. You come in and you build a scan, and whichever add-on you're using, you're going to observe a list in that scan. My thought is always choose the one with the most volume and something that looks like it has trend. If you look at something sideways, what you have to start thinking about is, hey, if this is sideways, does that mean that my risk could be very far to the bottom of this range or very far to the top of this range. So the first thing you're going to do is observe. Second thing you're going to do is orient. And I'm going to walk through that very quickly because I do not want to jam up against um, the next speaker. I do want to be cognizant of that. So if I am looking at, let's do this. All right, if I am looking at my chart, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see something that either tells me I've got a buy zone or sell zone or I'm at resistance or I'm at support, depending on whatever system. I'm talking about mine right now. All right, so you really are going to observe the forest first. Wow, this says a sell or this says a buy. What does the forest tell me, right? The forest tells me as I'm staring at it, Oh, that cell zone says that I'm going to be moving into some kind of support, or the buy zone tells me I'm going to move, be moving into some kind of resistance. Now you want to orient yourself. And so because the OODA loop was developed by a pilot who really was looking to help pilots perform better in the cockpit, this is a very active system and it involves you paying attention to everything around you again as i mentioned to you i'm a very active trader i trade all day long and before i click the button for any trade i perform the ooda loop i orient myself am i in an upward trend if i'm in an upward trend and it's giving me a buy zone trigger the trend is going to be my friend. My risk is going to be closely associated with the prior candle just showing the list of uh, where the last high-low close was. If it's giving me a sell and I've got negative events, I know that it's going to be moving into the deeper support. 
The other thing that we need to do once we perceive that and try to understand what the overall formation is, we have to decide on an action plan. And I've got to tell you, I've been coaching folks for a long, long time. People will think about what they want to do over and over and over and over and over again. They'll hit the target that tells them to come in and they'll say, what if I'm wrong? Trading is a business where you're going to be wrong. So the question isn't, what if I'm wrong? The question is, if I'm wrong, how much could this hurt me? If you focus that way, that's going to give you better results overall. And once you've done that and you've built that decision process, you must act. So now we're going to go directly to the chart and we're going to see how the OODA loop works, how we observe, how we orient, how we decide, and how we act. All right. And we're going to be looking at, of course, my add on. And we're going to be looking at here the E mini S&Ps. OK, so sitting right here in this space, let's just take. Let's go to right here where this says sell zone and we know it did not converge to the south. So I'm looking for a place where it says, hey, you've just hit resistance and I'm giving you a sell zone. The sell zone is always an active pressure event, and it's an active pressure event into, let's go down here, into frontline support. So when something says sell, that's your observation. The next thing you have to do is orient. This moving average is a 14 time series. It shifts once in a while. But if you use a 14 time series on your chart, it's going to give you relative trend very nicely. And so when you see, hey, I'm moving up, and then you see a sell zone, your thought must be the following. If this just gave me a sell zone, the first place it's going to go to is my diamond pattern that told me I had frontline support. So you're going to look to the left. That's orienting yourself. You're going to look to the left and you're going to say, hey, this is going to come down into my last region of support. And if your sell zone comes here, and you're already at that support zone, your question then becomes, okay, what's next? Now, right underneath this stop is actually a re-entry signal that is sitting from an upside perspective here, so you don't get to see it. But this formation, I observe, then I want to orient, and my orientation says, hey, listen, this is going to move down to frontline support because my moving average is generally bullish. If you do this, you're going to be in much better shape to understand the flavor of the market. All right. So let's take a look at edge of July. It gave us a buy zone. Am I sitting above that time series? Yes. If I'm sitting above the time series, it's telling me, hey, this chart has got some kind of bullish pressure. That bullish pressure is going to push us up into our last sell zone, right? That last sell zone ends up being, let me delete that. Our last sell zone ends up being this region. where it opens up, right? And so we get to look at this and say, wait a second, here's my last sell zone. If all of a sudden I have support, I can take profit there. That's what the manual says. Hey, listen, if you see this starting to happen and you see a green diamond, you take profit because chances are you're going to end up seeing a green arrow. So your orientation to include, hey, listen, this is a sell zone that just triggered. Where am I going? 
if you look at this, you can say immediately, well, I'm headed to this buy zone event. And so if I bounce and I don't see a green diamond, it's going to show me this edge as my target area. So what does this do? When we get into the trade, it tells us one, where we're likely going, two, what happens if we bounce and then fade, can we still take that short? And three, when support begins to build, when we can continue to take profit. The biggest problem I see with traders is that they stare at these zones, these triggers to go buy or sell, and they jump in without saying, wait a second, if this is a sell zone, where is it going to, right? The chart is always going to tell you that there is a sell zone present when it comes in. The problem is in bullish formations, a sell zone is always going to come in to a higher region of support. So now we want to talk about my risk event. What is the risk of motion when I'm looking at a chart like this using the OODA loop? Let's say you look at this and you see that it's come into frontline support. You have a buy zone way down here, a sell zone that takes you into support, and then a breach of your resistance zone where the diamond is. Once you breach the resistance area, it's telling you it's going to hunt for another resistance. And again, using this 14 time series, particularly on your daily charts, is going to tell you where and when you can engage. So notice this resistance sign says, this resistance signal says, listen, I'm going to head down to a region of frontline support that's going to tell me where the new set of buyers are sitting. Could I break the zone? Probably. I could break the zone, but I should recapture it because my moving average is up. Let's say you look at this and you go, okay, once it gets up over this diamond, how can I re-engage in the trade? Or how can I get involved in the trade? Now you're going to look at this and you're going to say, wait a second, I'm underneath that moving average. This is the difference with the time series versus other traders, uh, other moving averages. The time series, you only want to look at the slope. Only the slope. If the slope is mildly upward and you can look at your candlesticks and they are moving up, you're in great shape. Absolutely great shape. Your risk is always going to be defined by the market conditions themselves. And here's what I want to share with you. And I, I, I want you to see my face. When you are in a trade, I hear people say this all the time. You know what? I'm just going to have a 2% stop loss and X, Y, or Z. That's fine. The problem is the market doesn't care that you have a 2% stop loss. And if you get involved when the market is requiring you at that point that you choose to have 3%, or 4%, your job is to say, hold the phone. If I have a 2% stop loss, I must wait for my price action to come back. So here it is. It bounces. It tells you this is resistance. It bounces up, and then it comes back down to tell you, hey, my old resistance is going to be new support. When you get down to this edge that has been holding for day after day after day, you can then go, okay, that's my real stop right there. Now, if I know this is my real stopping area right here, 
don't I want to get as close to that as I possibly can so that I can obey my actual parameters? In speaking with traders, they set stops too tightly, they tighten up their stops too quickly, and they do not allow themselves to let the chart do its thing. They just jump in, and then when we get stopped out, it's like, here you go, open up door number three for another punch to the face, okay? Listen, I I've been trading a long time, almost 20 years. And my goal, I love Metastock, and I've been working with Metastock for years and years and years. And my goal is for those of you who agree like I do that Metastock really is a platform that has no equal in terms of true power. There are a lot of platforms out there that can give you all kinds of this, that, or the other, but this one has true power, soup to nuts, and uncompromising support. Absolutely incredible customer support. And if you are using something like this, where you're being given really the best tools in the business, your job then must be to say, how can I maximize what I'm doing? This is not a point and click game. I would love to tell you it is, but that wouldn't be true. The fact of the matter is every single time you engage in a trade, you can lose and you can lose a lot. And so the question becomes, if I lose, how little can I lose? This is the storyboard that you want to think of for yourself. How little can I lose in the environment if I take this trade? Also, trading is not a slot machine. And you don't bet everything on, you know, whatever, right? It's not a roulette wheel and it's not everything on black or whatever. You've got to look at things as if I took this trade 10,000 times, would I have made money 7,800 of those times and the others I would have lost the minimum? That's how you get through this trading game. It is a long haul and all you have to do is look at all the graybeards out there that have been in the business for a long, long time, and they've been sustained. That sustaining only comes with the development of pure, solid risk parameters that you follow all the time. So what does that mean? It means, one, you observe, two, you orient. So if you come into this buy zone, you say to yourself, hey, that slope is upward. Let me see where my last resistance candle is. It's here. That's my last resistance candle. And so all of a sudden you can look at this and say, you know, the top of that candle, that's where this chart could come into if I buy it right here. If I buy it here, it can fade all the way to here and it'll still give me a buying pressure event. So what do I want to do? You want to watch the buy, realize where the last resistance edge is, and the next day come in and say, you know what? If it comes down here, I'm going to have a buy zone. That buy zone, everything's in your favor. You've got green upward candlesticks. You've got a buy zone. You have known resistance that was also known support. So this is a very strong level, and you come in as close to it as you can manage. And you go long. And where are you going to go to? First place is going to be the top of the sell zone right here. That's going to tell you, wow, I'm right up here. That's going to be my first profit marker. After that, you've already got support here. That's where you can move your stop. You move all the way up here. If you hold this and then you say, well, all right, that's my first sell zone. This diamond pattern is my next 
resistance zone, I'm going to take some profit here. Listen, way too many of us hang on and say, let's just see where this goes. It's not a valid way to trade the market. It isn't. Cycles are getting much shorter and people are moving into resistance and then back down into support. So you've got to be proactive about your motion. When you look to the left, the chart is going to identify troubles for you. If you get here and you hit a downward event and you begin to fade and you see a sell pattern, your thought is, if I don't resume my trend, I am going to have to get out. And that is going to be, where is that? That's going to be, hey, what's the open of this candlestick? What's the close of this candlestick? You don't want to wait all the way down here to your last support zone. This is telling you, listen, I have a sell zone coming up. This resistance area is telling you I'm heading back to support. Look where that support is. It's right here. So as a trader, if you're waiting for the sell zone, Remember, it's about, have I broken my resistance? Can I see the price action here? And if this opens up and I bounce, where's my last resistance line that's going to show an area, a front line, broken support, right? That's the zone. So any kind of bounce up into this zone, here's the cell candle, that's the low of the candlestick that shows, hey, we've got a problem with resistance. So the bounces into that range are going to tell you, hey, I have a sell order here and my stop is going to be somewhere near the high of these wicks. Where am I going? You're going right here to the last zone a frontline support and look at it. It comes right down into it, bounces, and then fails again. But this tells you, listen, here's my sell zone event. I know it's going to bounce. For me, I will leave my stop at break even after it gets to the first one in hopes that it does not get to that next area of resistance and then it moves there so your job again as trader is to say what i see this as a buy zone but orient yourself what are the traders telling me that's going to happen how are they looking at price and if i'm looking at price the same way what I am trying to do is squeeze my risk. So let me open this in this way and let's look at something that might be interesting to people. That is the gold chart. If you don't trade the futures, it's going to get hard to see what we potentially mean by, all right, what's going on here? All right. So this chart is a mess. This is GDX, GDX, and let's draw some quadrant lines. And what we're going to do is, listen, if you do this every time you trade, you are going to have, one, a deep understanding of where your risk is, and two, an understanding of where your stops need to be relative to risk, or just waiting for the trade. So let's take a look at what's happened here. We had a sell zone, punched us all the way down, right? Remember, it's always exactly the same. You look for the resistance line. You see the sell zone, okay? The sell zone tells you there is downward pressure. This resistance line this resistance diamond will tell you, hey, I could bounce all the way into that level. And as long as I don't break the zone, 
I have a short. So here's my cell zone. It looks different, but I have to wait two days before my stop, this stop reinitiates because it simply looks back and says, hey, if I break above a certain low event, I've got to get out. This opened up, this cell zone likely opened up right here. So if you caught it right when it opened, look at what it did. It went straight down into the last buy zone. See the buy zone here? The buy zone or the support zone? That's where it's going to go to. It went straight away there, gives you the target. As long as it bounces and doesn't close over that level, you've got more downside pressure. This way, you are in control of what you are seeing. Here's the thing. This takes two days. Do you have patience to wait two days? Do you have patience to put a limit order out and say, hey, listen, I'm going to take the short at that 4028, knowing that I only have, you have to leave things a little squishy here. So you might want your stop to be at 4060. So it's only 35, 40 cents. And then you're just going to stair step through everything. You've got a buy zone here right, where your last buy zone was, it fails it, and now here's your next support edge. It's going to be, for heaven's sakes, ah, that's my quadrant. Your next zone is going to be, hey, here's my support edge. Now, take a look. Here's your original cell zone, second cell zone, same thing. It, wait for it the next day and say, you know what? When it bounces into that area, I'm taking the short. And it's going to go into my next target. As long as this moving average has steep downward slope, you're in great shape to do that. The second you see a support edge forming, watch the break of it. Look to the left for the next higher low. And if your next candle doesn't break that, you've got to get out of this trade. Your sell is over. Your sell is absolutely over. So your job, again, as trader is always to say, what's my risk? Not how much am I going to make. It's going to be, what's my risk? All right. So I have a few moments left. And so let me take a look. I did see maybe a potential question. Oh, okay. Nothing there. Um, do we have any questions about anything? Jennifer wanted to know where Kit Coral was. Oh, it's I did mention it was in the south <laughs> southwest Gulf Coast of Florida. Way down well, at the bottom. It's a I sent her a map. Oh, yeah. oh, that's funny. That's funny. You know, uh, this is really the the stuff here. It's nobody wants to nobody wants to love sitting around chatting about how much risk you want to expose yourself to. It's not the exciting part, but it is the part that's going to allow you to not only survive but thrive. And my goal is really to help folks do just that. Marius, uh, Marius was wondering um, what period of a moving average you're using. This is a time series 14. And it's going to work okay. on anything that you use. Remember, it's not about whether you're above it or below it. It's about the slope that it has relative to everything else. Your goal is always an orientation of, okay, where is my support? What happened the last time I was there? Can I take this trade and where is my stop? Those things, you've got to, to be engaged and not so overly engaged that you wind yourself up, but looking simply as are people selling here or buying here? And if they were 
to move against me, how far could they move against me before the strength of my direction begins to show up? All right, Betty wants to wanted to know why your 14-day moving average is different than hers. And so, because I'm uh, using a time series. Uh, Paul wants to know what advice you have when the market is reaching new highs. Okay, that's a really good question. And it really depends on what are you what are you trading? So the bottom line is this anytime a chart reaches new highs people are going to try and sell them right so let's look at one of my favorite etfs it's lithium battery technologies are really going to have a huge part in our lives in the future and so i love uh lithium americas i absolutely love this uh I love this group. So here we have this formation, and it did come into brand new highs. And you'll notice every new high gets sold off. So we shouldn't be buying breakouts anywhere in this kind of market. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if something is approaching new highs, as it was here, your thought must always be, where was the last area of support? And that's going to be the close of a candlestick. Now, this candlestick gaps up, right? And so when you have a gap up like this, you're also likely to have a gap down that fills the motion for you. So my thought is always, listen, look at the close of the prior day. If you open up below that close, then go to the day before that and make sure you're holding that day. And that's how you can enter. And as soon as it gets to a brand new high, start thinking about, okay, if this is brand new and it's gonna roll over, what does it have to hold? And it's going to be, where's my old resistance? Where did I see old sellers? It's going to be right here and so here's the chart anytime you're in a long trade and something gaps up and doesn't fill the gap during the day as it gets to the close of the day you have to take some profit you must because the very next day is very likely to gap into your support zone and your job should be hey am i at least holding higher lows and testing new highs. And as long as those answers are both yes, you're in great shape. The moment you start saying, okay, I have a lower high and a lower low, look to your last area of resistance, and that's gonna tell you, listen, this chart could come easily into that zone. What do I have to look at? It's gotta recover, and if you don't see it breaking higher, after a day or two, you have got to get out. That's what you do when charts are giving you brand new highs. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> let's see. I am. Um, let's see. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if you can answer this quickly, and I might be able to find an answer when I have a second. And we are we are just about out of time, but. What yes. is a time series moving average is what he's asking about. And if, if it's going to take a few minutes, I could find a definition to send to him in a minute. Um, I think it's probably to get, it's a good thing to get a definition, but a time series average is an average that looks at the high, the low, the open and the close, mixes them all together, adds a function, and I think that function might be exponential. Um, and then it plots a line, right? You know, again, I use the time series because it gives me the real flavor of motion. Because it's collecting high, low, open, and close over a specific region. 
Okay. And I actually pulled the definition out of uh, this program that I use called Metastart. <laughs> I'm going to put right in the post for him, too. Awesome. So, <laughs> very good. Uh, Anne Marie, there's a couple of comments here that I, I think we're out of time for questions. But uh, James says, this is the best and most detailed technical session uh, so far. Thank you very much, Henry. Very much. Hopefully it wasn't too technical, but my goal was to, to tell you that, hey, listen, I'm a team player and I'm in team Metastock. And there's some fantastic add-ons that are available to you, but you are never going to excel as a trader unless you put that extra piece of, wait a second, what am I seeing? What's actually happening here? And when you begin to look at the market as this moving, breathing thing, you're going to have much more power over what you're doing mentally, and it's going to give you much less pockets of anxiety so that you can say, hey, listen, I just need to trade from point A to point B. I just need to treat, I need to move from point A to point B. And if you can use something like the OODA loop and it cuts down on half of your bad trades and it cuts your losing amounts in half, think about the rest of the good stuff that you're doing and how much better you'll be for it. Thank you very much, Henry. One more question. Sure. Please pick a number between 1 and 12,624. 11. 11. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use that for a drawing. So, um, uh, awesome. Marie, thanks again. That was great. And it's um, my pleasure. It's always good to have you on. Thank you so much. Have fun, everybody. Put on those thinking caps and enjoy the rest of the day and tomorrow. It's been an exciting event. Thank you. All right, very cool. What a, uh, just, she does a, such a good job. Let me go ahead and uh, kind of move over to me again, uh, show my screen. We had a question earlier that I, uh, I was hoping kind of just to talk a little bit about uh, b uh, before we get on in terms of uh, a gentleman from India was asking how easy it is to uh, scan for Indian stocks. And so I figured I'd just kind of just show you how to do that real quick. I'd promised to do it earlier. And now since we're back on time, we might as well push the time back a little bit, right? So um, let me kind of just show how that works. I'm going to come in here to my Metastock program. This is the Power Console. I'm going to go to the uh, exploration tab. So this is charting and there's a quote window and scanning and we do, do system testing, forecasting, and, and then our, our option program. What I've done here is I've loaded up uh, the Explore. Uh, what I'm going to say is I'm going to have it actually, <laughs> oh, uh, I'm going to have it actually look for a uh, target rich trade entry signal. So this is using Anne Marie's add-on. We're going to look for entries today, and um, I can literally scan just about any market that I want. So if I want to do the S&P 500 or like the Optionable Universe, or if I wanted to do London, I know we've had quite a few people from London today, as well as other countries. Australia is a very big market for us. Actually, India is a big market for us as well. So if I come down into India, we put India in the Equities Asia category but literally you could scan this and the process would be the same we have up 288,777 issues that we cover so I'm gonna go to equities Asia I'm gonna come down here to the National Stock Exchange of India and we go ahead and click on start exploration I'm gonna have it load the minimum required records here and it's just gonna go in and scan through the National Stock Exchange of India it'll give me the actual uh, information for anything that has those long entries that Anne Marie was pointing out. And it's literally that easy. If I let this complete, which I probably am not going to do, um, you'd have a list of the results here. You'll notice that it's rejecting about 92% of the tray of the stocks that it's looking at. And it's just going to give us the 10% or so that'll have an opportunity that we want to look at. So um, Anne-Marie's add-on for Metastock is great. Um, with all of the add-ons that we kind of design or that I kind of design or I'm involved in, I want to make sure that it has like the 
ability to do scanning and the ability to do um, expert advisors and signals. And, you know, I just love the ability for us to go in. And like we were looking at before, you can open up a chart. It can tell you exactly what's going on on that chart. And um, this has been a very, very popular for add-on. Uh, a popular add-on for Metastock, but it's been very popular because we took, used it to, or we developed it and we've designed it to be successful, uh, and to successfully use what we're good at and that's scanning and showing you the right signals at the right time. So Anne-Marie, in terms of her add-on, go ahead and start the presentation, I guess. Uh, it does give you the real-time signals of the setups, the triggers, the exits. It gives you those uh, zones that she's showing on the chart for support and resistance. It does have a detailed commentary breakout. It does give you full market scanning for setups. There's a user manual. You can test the idea, trading ideas. Um, after Jake, Jake Bernstein is our next presenter. We're gonna actually going to go through, and Kelly Clement's going to give you a really good idea of the power tools that are available in Metastock and how all this stuff works but a great add-on and we do back it up with our 30-day money-back guarantee this is an add-on that we sell as a one-time cost of $399 and we do give it a money-back guarantee we want it to work well for you obviously we don't want to give you your money back but we we do want you to feel comfortable in your purchase uh, we want to give you a low risk we're confident enough in the software to, to let you try it if it's helpful, you're going to be happy to pay 400 bucks for it. If it if it doesn't work, you'll be happy to return it and get a refund. And uh, the the bottom line is most people keep it, so we can go ahead and offer that money back guarantee. We well, can pair that up with the buy one get two free offer of Metastock with our conference promo. And um, if you go to metastock.com/conference/promo or conf promo. Um, it's going to take you up to this page. If you don't have Metastock, it'll give you the ability to get Metastock DC or Metastock real time. And then, like all of the add ons that we're going to be talking about over the course of the next few days, um, are available here. You've got Anne Marie's Target Rich Trades right here. You can view a little bit of a video demo if you want. And then that's just basically all you need to do to go ahead and check out. Okay. Um, I would. I know I do know that we're kind of talking to a lot of different market experts today, and we're do, there's a lot of add-ons and stuff like that. If you have questions about, okay, hey, I'm trading stocks and options, and uh, uh, if you want to talk to us about like really what you're trading, uh, give us a call. We're, we're happy to kind of sit down with you and kind of see what your goals are, what instruments you want to trade, and kind of give you some advice based on what we like. So the phone number you can reach us at is one eight hundred. 882-3040. You can also meet us uh, online at metastock.com slash sales chat, and we'll be happy to kind of help you with that as well. And um, uh, and uh, that's, I think, where we're going to kind of leave that. I do want to talk about the premium classes that we're doing. Uh, you can sign up for those there on Sunday. We're going to have Steve Bigelow, Dr. Alexander Elder, Oscar Carbonion. They're going to be doing some really good classes. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to the one Oscar does on technical formations. I love Alexander Elder, and I think he's a, a great technician. He's going to be talking about current market conditions and the triple screen trading system. <laughs> and then, oh, boy. <laughs> Hello, Jake. Your front mic's hey, working. All right. And then uh, you can do that at metastock.com slash conference uh, 20 prime or give us a call 800-882-3040. So let's talk about Jake. Jake, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing very, very well. I, I'm a mean? little bit more awake. <laughs> um, and you're showing my high school picture. Yeah, yeah. How are you? Uh, let's see. What am I going to say about you, Jake? Jake has written a ton of books on trading the markets. I really like kind of his seasonal approach. Are you going to be talking about seasonals today or more of your technical systems? Is the Pope Catholic? Okay. I'm going to say that, that, <laughs> that, that that's seasonal system, said. Absolutely. So we're going to be talking a little bit about seasonals in the market. Uh, Jake, uh, I, I, I've went to dinner with Jake and his... Uh, uh, back several years ago when I lived up in the Boulder Creek, California area. A very, very good technician. Uh, we love Jake here at Metastock, and we've been working with him for years. And um, Jake, I, before I kind of just uh, get too slobbery, I, I think I'll just turn the time over to you. Let's go ahead and get the presentation over. Thank you, Jeff. Hold on a second. Share my screen. One moment, please. Yeah, I'll tell you that when we can see you. 
Okay, it's coming through. It is? Okay, mm -hmm. there we go. And let's go full screen. Can you see me now? Mm -hmm. Well, Good. we can't see you, but we can right. see your slides. Well, I turned off my camera because I don't want people to be distracted by my beautiful face. Well, that's good, because I want to take notes. <laughs> Thank you. OK, we all set to go? Uh, yep, you're, it's all yours. Okay. Thank you. So Jeff, I want to thank you and all the good people at Metastock for all these years of quality, professional service that you give people. It's just wonderful to be associated with you guys. I just wish I had more time on my hands to do more than, more than I do already. So what I want to do today is cover <clears throat> a couple of things, excuse me, <clears throat> in great detail. I'd rather teach you a few things really well than many things poorly and leave you wanting for more information. And Anne-Marie, it was a great presentation. Thank you for keeping people grounded. So many people give expectations that can't be achieved, but you kept people's feet on the ground talk to them about risk, and I really think that's great. So today I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence and seasonality and where the twain meet. The bottom line, of course, is we have to give the first most important thing, the disclaimer, and a few things. I'm actually going to teach you a few things today <clears throat> that are very specific. But first, let's talk about this. Are you an artist, a psychic, or a trader? If you're an artist, <laughs> Excuse me, sorry about that, folks. I'm still a little bit, little bit grainy from the smoke we had here a couple of weeks ago. Or you're a psychic. You can open a psychic booth and give people psychic readings. Or are you a trader? If you're a trader, you're going to be specific. You're going to be rules-based, and you're not going to do anything based on instincts. So my feelings and instincts, just one moment, please, folks. I'm going to turn off the mic and get a drink of water. Hang on one second, folks. Okay, let's try it again. So I'm a trader. There's no room in what I do for my feelings. My feelings are the least important things. When I traded on my feelings many years ago and interpreted things, I lost money and it took me 15 years to realize what I was doing wrong. My instincts when it comes to people <clears throat> are really good. I can spot people a mile away in terms of whether they're going to be a good trader or not. I can talk to them for five minutes and tell you Will they be successful? But my instincts in the markets suck. So the source of my success has been objectivity. Totally objective, rules-based trading is what I do. Fact-backed, rules-based trading. I want to talk to you about caring and not caring. <laughs> caring is the least effective thing you can do when it comes to trading. The more you care about a trade, the more you care about making money, the less money you're going to make. So a very profitable trader told me many years ago, which I've taken to heart, in order to make money trading, you have to not care. Think about that. I also want to talk to you a little bit about the value of less is more. I will show you the kind of charts that people send me. They're pathetic. They've got so many indicators and so many lines on them that you can't help but look at it and say, this is confusing the daylights out of me. I can't do this. I don't understand it. People talk about discipline. They say, no wonder you can't make money. You need discipline. So you say, sure, I need discipline. Where am I going to get discipline? Well, you could read a book. You could go to a psychiatrist and lay on the couch, and they can tell you about their improper potty training you had when you were a kid, and maybe that's why you don't have discipline. That's not going to work. I wrote my first book, The Investor's Quotient, many years ago about the psychology of trading. I've written 45 books since then. People say, Jake, can I get good information that will help me get discipline out of your books? The answer is no. Don't buy my books. Learn trading methodologies that are profitable. If you have a methodology that's profitable, you will have confidence in that methodology. If you have confidence, 
that confidence will give you discipline. If you have discipline, you'll apply the rules with confidence. That will make you money. Making money will give you more confidence, which will give you more discipline. And it goes around and around from there. So the most important thing is this. Discipline will come from confidence. Confidence will come from doing things that work. In order to do th things that work, they have to be specific. They have to be rules-based. They have to be clear and consistent. Most of what people will teach you in trading is not consistent. It requires you to interpret a chart. Interpretation will get you into trouble. If I teach you something, and I teach that same thing to 100 people, and say, what is the answer? I want 100 answers that are exactly the same. To the penny, to the day, to the minute, to the hour, to the buy, to the sell, exactly the same. If that doesn't happen, then either of two things are going on. Either I'm not a good teacher, or you're not a good student, or you've got a learning disability. It has to be consistent. So we live and buy by and die by the rule. So let's go forward a little bit here for one second, please. Hang on a minute, please. Change slides. Okay. We live in a very impersonal world. People meet each other on computers. They don't know where they are. They don't know what they're doing. I want to show you where I am so you know what I'm doing here today. So I am right here a little bit south of San Francisco in Santa Cruz Mountains. So now you know where I am. Let's go forward. You can read all of this stuff about me later. I don't want to brag on myself. But I've been around the block a few times. I trade what I teach, and I teach what I trade. I've been at webinars and seminars all over the world. I've been on Wall Street Week. My clients, individual traders, top newsletter writers, and many of the biggest hedge funds and banks are traders who buy my research from me. Why? Because my research is clear. It's not interpretive. The conclusions are very specific. So here's the problem. Someone wants to start trading. They go to the internet and they type in, teach me short-term trading. Let me get my little, my marker here for one second, please. Teach me short-term short -term trading. And what happens? They get 433 million results. So what are you gonna do with that? How do you know what to do? How do you know what to buy? Where, do you, where are you gonna begin? Is $2,399 a good price for learning how to trade? Do you know it will work? The answer is most likely not. So what are we going to do? We're going to focus on very specific methods. I'm trying to change my slides here, but it won't work. One moment, please. OK, so I'm going to give you a very bold warning. Please pay attention. And folks at Metastock, Jeff, I'm sure you'll pay attention to this too. I believe that within the next five years, most trading decisions will not be made using the timing tools that are popular today. They're going to be made by computers using machine learning and artificial intelligence. So a lot of the decision-making models that we're using right now, such as moving averages, Elliott Wave, Fibonacci, and so forth, will not be part of what is being done by the machines. And traders who have been able to identify the high probability patterns, the high probability indicators, and feed them into AI computers will be the winners. So I will share some of these ideas with you today. And remember, it's a question of having the right information. It's a question of having information that is clear, consistent, repeatable, and most of all, testable. And then it's a question of applying that information. So what good does it do you to have great information if you're not going to apply it? I can teach you, and I will show you, trades that are going to happen in November and December with 75, 80, 90 percent probability of success over many years. The problem is not that. The problem is, what are you going to do about it? That's where confidence comes into play. And I'm going to share with you a list of what to do. So let me go to the next slide. So I have a few choices today. In one hour, I can show you a bunch of stuff that requires judgment. I'm not going to do that. It doesn't work. Don't use judgment. The two dirtiest words in the trading lingo are looks like, by which I mean 
The market looks like it wants to go higher from here. The market looks like it's bottoming. The market looks like it's topping. What does looks like mean? Something that looks like something to me might look like something entirely different to you. Don't do that. I can tease you with a few ideas that are incomplete and say, hey, you know what? Now you can buy the rest of these ideas from me. I can sell them to you for nine ninety seven. And then if they don't work, I'll give you another six months for free. I don't want that. I can entertain you with pretty charts. After which you're going to say, WTF was all that about. I can't do that. I'm going to teach you two amazing things today that are very powerful. You can believe me now or you can believe me later. So let's do that. Number one. I'm going to teach you a list of things that you absolutely have to know before you take any trade with any method from anybody, including myself. Number two, I'm going to show you the high probability of seasonality with timing. I'm going to show you my setup trigger follow through. If you've seen my work, this will be repetitive to some of you, but there is some new material here. If you've never seen my work, play back the recording and let it be an eye opener to you. As I said before, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing it for a long time. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. But here's what I know. Most people will not listen. Most people will take notes and never look at their notes again. I'm sure that does not apply to anybody here. I'm sure everybody here is going to do what they're supposed to do. So that gives me confidence. Then I'm going to give you an invitation to attend a free, in fact, two free webinars, which I'll be having in the next week or so, which will show you my highest probability trades for November and December. I'll show you how to register for this soon. So I talked earlier about the kind of charts that people use. This is the kind of stuff that people send me. I look at it and I say, what the heck is this? I don't understand any of this. I don't know what it means. I don't know how to use it. Where's the buy signals? Where's the sell signals? What are the moving averages? What do they do? How do you know the rules? What are the rules? Most people say, well, it's not a question of knowing the rules. It's a question of interpreting it correctly putting the information together and coming up with an Edsel. We don't want to do that. So I say, take that chart that you have and just get rid of it. It's worthless. It's going to lead you astray. So let me show you this. If there is only one thing I can teach you today, this is it. I mean this very seriously. I have done extremely well in my life. I'm blessed. I was born to a very poor family. I grew up in a monastery until I was three years old in Germany after my parents were in concentration camp. I had nothing when I was young. Grew up in one room in someone else's house. When I finally discovered what I'm about to share with you, after 15 years of doing the kind of nonsense that people do, drawing trend lines on charts and analyzing charts, this finally made sense to me. If you can keep this checklist and ask the question every time you make a trade, before you make the trade, this is what trading is all about. This is how the real money is made. You want to know which market to trade, stock, commodity, option. You want to know which one to trade. You want to know whether buy or sell. These two are obvious. I want to know the exact time to buy or sell within one minute or less, tell me when, or tell me what price to buy or sell at. I want to know my odds of success, number four. Number five, I want to know my average profit, my average loss over many years. Number six, my stop loss or my risk, the profit to loss ratio. Am I making more money when I'm making money than I'm losing when I'm losing money? The complete track record as far back as you can go. When you ask people for a track record, they say, I'll show you the last 15 trades. I'll show you what my account did a month ago. I'll show you what my account did a year ago. That's not good. I want to see the complete track record of every trade that this methodology made historically. And I will show you that. Your average profit, your average loss in percentages and points. The maximum loss, the maximum profit, the maximum drawdown, the maximum upswing. I want to know the number of consecutive losses. I want to know the number of consecutive profits. Why is number 13 important? Because people can't take more than three losses in a row. Imagine a new trader begins trading and says, I'm going to make a trade. I saw this great system. They make a trade, they lose money. They say, 
That's all right. It's normal to lose money the first time. I'm going to give it another shot because I've got discipline. They take another shot. They lose money again. Two in a row, they're saying, somehow I thought it was going to be easier than this. I saw the guy on TV with the E-Trade screen in front of him, and he was making money, and he was happy. But I've lost money twice in a row now, and I'm not happy. But I'm going to do it again because I've got discipline. They do it again. They lose money a third time. They say, okay, now this is no fun anymore. What did I do wrong? They don't realize that the best trading strategies in the world will lose money six or seven times in a row. They're not prepared for that. So after the third time, they're done. You want to know what your strategy has done historically. Maximum consecutive losses, maximum consecutive profits. Many people can't handle profits. You see, I've made money on seven trades now in a row. It can't continue. I'm not going to do the next one. Don't do that. You want to know the accuracy of your strategy and percent? How often has it been right? How to minimize your potential loss? How to maximize your potential profit? Let's go back to number 16. People say, Jake, what kind of work do you do? I'm a risk manager. I manage risk. If I'm managing my risk and I've got a profit probability of, of success with my methodology, that's even 60% right, which is much less than we do. We do much more than 60% accuracy. You will make money. It's all about minimizing your potential loss and number 17, maximizing your potential profit. You want to know when to move your risk to zero, and that happens very quickly with my methods. In other words, you're out of the so-called danger zone quickly. You want to know when to get out. And you want to know a few more things. So I respectfully submit to you that if you take these 19 items and these five items and you learn nothing else from me today, you have learned a lot more than anywhere else. But here's the thing. You're probably not going to do it. Why do I say that? Because I know people. I have taught people all over the world how to trade, and I know human nature. It's the exceptional person that's going to say, I have discipline. I have confidence because I have discipline. I have discipline because I have confidence. I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow your lead. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to do this. But then you're going to say, but the methodology that I'm using doesn't allow me to get this kind of information. Then guess what? You're using the wrong methodology, and you're asking to lose money, and you'll get what you deserve. So let me show you some ideas here, okay? Number two, second most important thing I can teach you, if you don't already know this, every trade you make has to fit into this model. Setup, trigger, follow through. What is that? A setup is a pattern. The good news, there are thousands of patterns. The bad news is most of them don't work. Well, how do we know that? Well, guess what, folks? We've got computers. We've got Metastock. We can put a pattern into Metastock and ask the question, does it work? And if it works, we keep it. The good news, there's a few that were keepers. The bad news, 95% of them are worthless. So you need a setup. It says, this pattern has predictive validity. It has a probability of working. But that's not where to stop. That's the beginning. You also need a trigger. The trigger says, now this pattern has been effective for such and such a period of time. It's right 70% of the time. But will it be right this time? The trigger gives you that edge. It says, yes, the market is doing what it's supposed to do based on this pattern. Will it happen this time? I will apply this trigger, and that will increase my probability of success. Then we go to step three. In step three, we manage our risk. And most of all, we maximize our profit. People call me and they say, Jake, I made a trade in gold today. I say, what's your risk? They say 500 bucks. So you want to risk 500 bucks on your gold trade. Why is that? Well, because that's all I can afford to risk. I can only risk $500 because I've got a small account. So you mean to tell me that in the gold market, which is trading in a range, of $4,000 a day from high to low in futures, you're risking $500? What's wrong with you? You really want to walk out into the middle of traffic? You're asking to get stopped out. That stop is insufficient for that kind of volatility. The stop has to be related 
to the methodology that you're using. And if that methodology that you're using says you can't risk more than fifty, if you can't risk more than fifteen hundred dollars, don't take this trade. Either take a smaller position, a proxy for that trade, or don't take the trade. People say, I want a day trade. I say, why do you want a day trade? Because if I can make five hundred bucks a day and go home every day with five hundred bucks in my pocket, that's great. That's a great big if. You don't want to do that. When you're day trading, you're competing against the biggest and best traders and machines in the world. I wrote the four best-selling books on day trading for McGraw-Hill. I tell people, day trading ain't what it used to be. Don't do it. Short-term trading, great. Day trading, you're asking for trouble. Sorry about that, folks. Don't mean to burst your bubble. So using the model that I just showed you, we can then go to the computer and run an artificial intelligence program. That artificial intelligence program is loaded with a whole bunch of stuff. Moving averages, Fibonacci, GAN, Elliott Wave, <coughs> trend lines, support resistance, anything that can be quantified, anything that can be put into algorithmic form, into rules. The computer looks at all the trades and says, here are the trades that work best with this combination, and here is the pattern that we can use at this particular time. So we take that additional step, and I'm going to show you some examples. So let's go forward. So the most successful trading strategies in the world are based on patterns. As I said before, there's thousands of patterns. The bad news is most of them don't work. The most accurate patterns are based on seasonality. So I'm going to show you how we do seasonality and what's going to happen and how well it works. So let's look at some facts instead of opinions and myths. You've probably heard about the golden cross, the 50 moving average versus the 200, the 50-day closing moving averages, trading above the 200-day moving average, crossing above it. It's supposed to be the golden cross, meaning the market will probably go up. We've heard all the commentators on CNBC talking about that at one point or another. I know I've been on CNBC a number of times. They know how that, how that show works. Suddenly, the people that used to be newscasters on CNBC are now market experts. They'll tell you what's going to happen. They'll be happy to tell you. So we take the golden cross. Then, of course, there's the dreaded death cross. The 50 crossing below the 200, meaning the market's going to go down. This is all just myth. I say that because if we go to the computer, we check out the opinions and ask for facts. Let's take a look. <clears throat> Track record. 50 versus 200-day moving average in a spy S&P spider. Accuracy, 48%. Do you want to trade something with 48% accuracy? By the time it makes money, your account's going to be wiped out. I'm not interested in this. We can do so much better than this. This is utter nonsense. It's garbage. Don't do it. You say, well, maybe it worked better in the Dow Jones. We need a bigger sample. So here's 91 trades in the S&P in the Dow Jones. So we dropped to 41% accuracy. And looking at the bottom of the screen, you can see max consecutive losses, six. So by the time these six losses have happened, you've either lost your money, lost your confidence, lost your discipline, but it's a losing proposition all the way around. So let's do this. Let's talk about high odds seasonal trades. In my opinion, the best book ever written on the stock market was written by Art Merrill. The book is called The Behavior of Prices on Wall Street. Art did something very interesting. He went back and he studied the behavior of the Dow Jones Industrial Average on days before major holidays, legal holidays in the United States. <clears throat> Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, Easter, Good Friday, <clears throat> Veterans Day, etc. And he discovered something very interesting, studying prices all the way back to the 1800s. On the day before a major holiday, the market tends to close higher. Definition, Dow Jones. Day before major holiday, 
It's exactly what I mean. Example, Thanksgiving is on a Thursday in the United States. So in order to take advantage of this probability, which by the way is in excess of 70%, you buy on the close of trading Tuesday, you get out on the close of trading Wednesday. That's all there is to it. There ain't nothing else to it. It's really simple. But people will find a way to screw it up. I can give you some examples later. This methodology, very simple strategy, not a day trade, but an overnight trade, has been right in excess of 73% of the time, all the way back to the late 1800s. The overall strategy for the pre-holiday seasonal trade has a probability of occurring by chance less than once in 10,000 times. I've been teaching this for people to people for years, but still people will find a way to mess it up. How? Oh, they'll call me up and they'll say, well, it's a Tuesday. Should I buy it right now? I say, well, what's the rule? Buy on the close. Yeah, but I want to buy it now because I think it's going to, I don't care what you think. I care about the numbers. They wait till the end of the day. They buy it. It goes up first thing in the morning. They say, should I get out now? What's the rule? The rule is to get out at the end of the day. Well, I'm going to get out now. They get out now and it goes much higher. So people will find a way to mess it up. I know that nobody here will mess it up. So I took this concept and I did something else with it. I asked the question, is it possible that this pre-holiday behavior happens sooner? Is it possible it begins sooner instead of just on the Tuesday and the Wednesday? Is there more money to be made from this trade? Is it possible to maximize and get more money out of this thing? So I did something very simple. I went to the computer. I said to the computer, Show me every possible combination of buying stock index futures beginning in mid-November and ending in mid-December. So I'm taking advantage of what I call spread of effect, the spread of the relationship starting earlier in November and ending later in November, earlier in December. And the computer crunched the numbers and came up with this. Buying March S&P futures or an equivalent, such as the spider, end of day, November 20th, or the next business day, close of trading, if the market is closed, getting out December the 4th, where it says exit date, risking 3% stop close only, and a profit to loss ratio of 17 to 1, with 81%, folks, that's 81% accuracy, since the start of trading in S&P futures. So there, there is my trade. Now, go back to the list of 19 things. Does this tell you everything on that list that I gave you? Indeed, it does. It tells you whether to buy or sell. It tells you what to buy or sell. It tells you when to get in and when to get out. It tells you when to get in and out to the minute, to the end of the, to the, end of the day, to the very minute of the end of the day. It gives you your profit to loss ratio. In some total, it's made more money. It's made 17 times more money in some total than it's lost. It tells you the percentage accuracy, the average profit, the average loss and percentage and points, max consecutive losses, max consecutive wins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everything that's clear. But here's the funny thing about it. People say, Jake, why are you telling this to everybody? Why are you publishing it in your books? Why are you teaching it at webinars? It's going to stop working if you do this. It's not going to work anymore because too many people are going to know it. Hey, folks, it doesn't matter. Just like it doesn't matter who's going to be the president, it doesn't matter what people think or what people know or what people do. It doesn't matter. People will find a way to make this not work for them. But we're going to stick to the rules, and the rules are very simple. So I can take this trade, and I can detail it and examine it, every single year. So when was the last time someone showed you a track record like this, detailing every single trade? And I'm showing you this before it happens. Why? Because I want you to see it. And you're going to say, but Jake, this is really so beautiful. Here's the entire record year by year on the top and cumulative on the bottom. It's been working too well. It can't possibly work this year. I'll say, why not? They say, well, first of all, it's been working like how many years in a row now? And then they're going to say, 
And besides that, the presidential election has not been decided upon. And furthermore, there's evidence of fraud. And besides that, we've got COVID. The only thing that you as a trader should be concerned about is, are you able to take the 3% risk in your account? 3% of what? 3% of the closing price on the date of entry. If you can't, then you can trade a micro S&P. If you can't do that, you can trade an SPY spider. If you can't do that, you can trade a binary option. If you can't do that, you can trade a call option. If you can't do that, you can take a call spread or, or a calendar spread. There's many, many different ways to do this. So where does the artificial intelligence come in? I'm a firm believer in actual intelligence instead of artificial intelligence, but I'll settle for artificial intelligence. I've put a red arrow. Let me get rid of my screen for just a second. One moment, please. I have put a red arrow by all of the losing years. So you can see there haven't been many. But the question is this. Can we go to the computer and ask the computer to examine in detail what happened every losing year? Was there a way, an indicator, a combination of indicators, a methodology, a strategy to help you avoid these losing years? either by not taking the trade or by getting out sooner or something? The answer is yes. The computer found a number of different ways to get this job done, and it gives us the information so that we can improve our accuracy. On the, on the list here that there's an average profit per trade, it says average profit 19.83 S&P points. We have found through the computer and through actual trading that if you take your money off the table, part of your position, if you hit the 19 points chart target, which is usually it within two days, and reduce your risk effectively to zero, you will make a lot of money because you'll be then riding the winning trades, getting out of the risk zone, the danger zone as fast as possible. So let me show you something. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you some more trades. People say, well, wait a minute, Jake, you've only got information there back to the start of trading in S&P in the 1980s. Do you have more information? Well, sure. Let us do this. By computer, we can go back to 1920 in the Dow Jones. That's 100 years of history. We can make one chart that shows the tendency of prices over this entire period of time. Imagine that, 100 years of history. And on this chart, we eliminate the high and the low of the year. We make the low zero, we make the high 100, so that we normalize the chart. <clears throat> that way, no one year or series of years will have an impact on the chart. We're looking at the pure seasonality trend, not the magnitude, just the seasonality. And what does the chart say? What does it give us? In green arrows in the bottom of the screen, it shows by weeks, those weeks that have a high probability of going up or probabilities for going down. Now you're gonna say, well, wait a minute. That's a long period of time and the market's been in the bull market since then, but I respectfully submit to you, is it not true that since 1900, we've had several world wars, Korean War, Gulf War, Desert Storm, inflation, deflation, recession, OPEC, bank failures, Democrats, Republicans, idiots? We've had it all. The only thing we haven't had is nuclear war, and let's hope that doesn't happen. So all of these economic conditions have not changed. I see something really big here. The first three weeks of April, three weeks in a row, high probability of success. I see two weeks over here. I see this over here, the end of the year, November, December. Very impressive. So what do I wanna do with that? I wanna go to the computer, do a search and zero in 
find specific trades during that period of time, and the computer helps me with that. I can do it in S&P futures, or I can do it in the Dow, or I can do it in futures. Now that I've shown you the chart, let's look at this one for a moment, and then we'll do a little Gedanken experiment. You think, and I'll show you. Based on what I've been brainwashing you with, the seasonality, look at this chart. This is a chart of coffee futures. We can do any futures we want. I'm just showing this to you as an example. <clears throat> Looking at the chart and based on what I've told you, without me giving you the answer, think. Do you see anything here on this chart that is a high probability of success in the down direction? You don't even have to think about it because you see it right over here in June. You see four weeks in a row in June, let me get my pointer, four weeks in a row in June, down. Percentage odds, right over here. Size of move, pretty big. What can we do with that? This is only the first level of information. This is a setup. We go to the computer, we do a search and say, give me the exact dates. Give me the exact stop. Give me the exact profit target. Give me all 19 things on that list and you will get them. Then the burden of proof comes to you. You've got the good information. Are you going to use that information? And by the way, I'm guilty of some of this myself, by which I mean this. I love cars, probably because I grew up in a poor family. I love cars. I bought a new car about eight days ago for the winter because the winters get pretty bad over here in terms of wetness and I can't drive my fast car in the rain. So I bought this car. I haven't had a chance to look at the manual. I've only had a chance to drive it once. The one time that I drove the car, I'm looking at the screen, and there's a little thing that looks like, like a wine bottle. And it's a very high-tech screen, and this little orange wine bottle is moving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Sometimes it turns red and beeps at me. Sometimes it turns, turns green and stops beeping at me. And I'm thinking, what the hell is this wine bottle? What's it mean? I'm talking to a friend about it, and the friend says, why don't you read the manual? <laughs> it's the same kind of a thing. If you don't know what this means, learn what it means, and you'll get some great information. Follow the rules. The rules are clear. So let me show you something else. Do you remember what I just showed you back here? Let me go back to it. The first three weeks of April. Most people don't know this, and I can tell this to people till I'm blue in the face. They're still not going to want to know it. They're still not going to do it because people are people. They want to shoot themselves in the foot, present company excluded. Let's take that and put it on the computer and ask the question, can I crunch that data and find the trade? Sure. It's right over here. Again, meeting all of those 19 criteria that I told you about. The date to buy the date to get out, the percentage stop, the percentage accuracy, and so forth. But still, even though this has been correct 81% of the time since 1950, people will find an excuse to not do it. Well, okay, so we talk about it. Let's, let's Let's look at it in reality. I'll, I'll come back to this in a moment. Here is that April seasonal trade last year. The statistics that I showed you over here are through 2019. We didn't know what was going to happen. In 2020, we took that trade right over here. Here was the entry date. Here was the exit date. But I have something else on the machine, the artificial intelligence. In other words, these two lines, which I'll explain to you momentarily, came to us from computer search through AI. And the computer basically said, the best indicator to use with the seasonal trade is this combination right over here, the red line and the blue line. What are these lines? First of all, this was the entry date. And you'll notice if you waited, you missed it. Here's the exit date right over here. Beautiful trade. Consistent with this indicator and this one, which we will teach at the free webinar we're going to give you. So the bottom line is this. What happened? If you were using judgment, you'd look at this chart and you'd say, I can't buy it now, it's going down. Over here, you'd think I should have bought it over here. Don't do that. The only decision to make right over here is, number one, 
Does the computer agree through AI that this indicator is turning bullish? The answer is very simple. These two lines are two moving averages. The red line is an eight day simple moving average of the closing price. The blue line is an eight day simple moving average of the opening price. So please note, these are not moving average crossovers of closing prices, as I showed you before. This is not what this is. This is open close. I call it eight open close. And it's confirming by the closing moving average being above the opening moving average so that it's a buy. And that is where the AI comes in and filters our seasonals. So that was the trade. We could look at the same trade from different per perspectives using additional indicators, which we're showing you on the bottom of the screen. So let me go back to this. <clears throat> because I realize that I can't teach you everything that I've learned in 52 years in one hour. Maybe if I had 10 hours, I could do it. So I'm inviting you to two free events, Sunday, November the 8th, 7 p.m. Eastern time, and Wednesday, the 11th of November. This meeting here is for my regular members of my group that Chris Moody and I run. And here's a bonus for Metastock. We're going to show you the indicators on Metastock. And anything we don't have on Metastock yet that we use, we're going to be adding for you. So if you get the Metastock plugin, you'll have that. No more promotion. You can come back and sign up later if you want to. But let me show you this. <clears throat> We ran a very exhaustive artificial intelligence study on all of the popular indicators that people are using these days. We're talking about 180 different indicators. And the best indicators for my methodologies, my seasonality, my divergence, came up with this list right over here on the left. By which I mean, the computer says the best leading indicators and current indicators are momentum, Divergence, open close moving average, MACD one line, and so forth. I'm not going to go through each one of these, but these are all valid, predictive, accurate triggers to use with your trading. So check it out. We're going to be teaching a number of these at the free webinar for you so you can take a look and see how they work. But I want you to notice this the conspicuous absence of the most favorite indicators. Why? I'll tell you why because they don't work within the context of the methodologies we need and the questions that we need to answer. In other words, they don't answer the questions on my list of 19, 19 things. I'm gonna go back to what I said at the beginning. Do not interpret anything. Interpretation is not what we do. Analysis is not what we do. We do fact-backed rules-based trading. That's all there is to it. The facts are clear. So let me show you something else. Check this out. <clears throat> the same strategy as futures and indices holds true on stocks. So here's a 3M seasonal chart. The same idea, covering the period from, seven, from 1970 to 2019. And I've highlighted with circles the two areas that I'm interested in. If I'm interested in short-term trade, I've got two weeks over here. If I'm interested in a short-term trade, I got two weeks over here. If I'm interested in the big kahuna, that is right over here. November, all the way back to 1970, four weeks in a row of higher prices, probability of success right over here, and the size of the move right over here. So <clears throat> what am I gonna do? I'm gonna zero in on that. How I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do a search on the computer Computer, show me 3M in October and November with high probability of success. Computer, and I'm gonna come back to this. Computer shows me, come on computer, computer shows me this. It says, buying 3M on the close of trading, November 19th, getting out March 18th, risking 15%, and if I don't like 15%, I can go 6%. All these different combinations has been right 76% of the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I can see the complete history of this trade. 
taking that information and putting it on 3M right over here. This is the trade right over here. Here's the setup right over here on the lower left. Let me move my mouse. There's the trigger right over there. This is a different indicator which we will teach you. So the bottom line is it triggered, and this is a close-up of the trigger. And again, as I said before, <clears throat> if you were simply looking at the chart and saying, I'm going to make my decision based on what I think, you would not be inclined to take this trade. Over here, you'd be inclined to say it's too expensive. It's already made its move. But the indicator is very clear, and you see how it has remained consistent all the way from entry to the target. So let me show you a couple of more things that you might be interested in. Here's the track record. Is there a problem here? The problem is in your mind, by which I mean, and remember this, I have met traders all over the world. I have personally mentored hundreds of traders. I know how traders think. The average trader looking at this chart is going to say what? It's been working too well. It's been right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years in a row. It's at the high. The economic environment is not good. The stability of our political system is in jeopardy. Who knows who's going to be president? It can't possibly work this year. I'm looking at the chart and I'm saying, what's my risk? Is there a way to mitigate the risk? Is there a way to put timing on this trade and deal with it? more effectively. So we do fact-backed rules-based trading. So think about this. As I said, I've been trying to brainwash you into, into thinking the right way about this. Remember the setup trigger and follow through. And again, here's the moves. There's a move coming in S&P, which I showed you at the very beginning. I hope you remember it. It's not happened yet. This is the move that happened last year. And again, the entry, the profit target, and you'll notice the profit target, which was $1,000 on futures, was hit only three days after the trade went on. The rest of this is gravy. And for that gravy, we use a trailing stop to help us lock in some profit. Let me show you a trade that's coming up in December. I go to the computer and I'm saying, computer, give me trades in S&P futures that have been correct 80% of the time or more since the start of trading that are short term, 15 days duration or less, computer gives me this trade right over here. So again, and I'm gonna take questions in a moment. Again, it's very simple. You're either in it or you ain't, and that depends on two things. Does the trade trigger to increase the probability of success, even though most people would be thrilled with 78% accuracy? And number two, can you afford the risk on this trade, which is 4%? 4% of what? 4% of the closing price on the date of entry. Now, think about what I said before about pre-holiday. Is this a pre-holiday trade? You betcha. December the 25th, Christmas, January 1st, New Year's. It covers both of those with beautiful accuracy and a very lengthy history of success. And here is what it looked like last year. And sorry, I'm using a different chart than yours, Jeff. But that's all right. We'll get to it. Here's the December trade last year, right over here. Very simple. And this was the November trade. So what's coming up? There's a trade coming up in February. Again, we find these trades very simply and very straightforward with fact-backed rules-based methodologies. So here's a couple of things that I do in the way of publishing. But in the event that you want to come to my meetings, and we're going to finish up in a minute and take questions, Jeff, Sunday and Wednesday. And here's the registration for you. So I want to thank you all for coming here, giving me your attention. I hope I've not bored you too badly. If you have any questions, oh. I'm ready to take them. Go ahead, Jeff. We don't have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, somebody had asked for the book you had recommended, uh, which was Behavior on Prices of Wall Street by Arthur Merrill, right? Yeah, Art Merrill, M-E-R-R-I-L-L, -L, Art Merrill. Okay. Uh, and like, have, like, 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 like most good books, Jeff, it's it's out of print, so you might it might be a little pricey for you, but the concept is very clear. Go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, you're fine. 
Don't worry about it. Um, the, a, a little, we have quite a bit of feedback. Uh, like for example, on your on your presentation today, for example, Michael said, "Absolutely groundbreaking information. A real thought provoking session." I'd rather um, have feedback than blowback. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis said, "This is an absolutely outstanding webinar." Um, uh, Lynn you. says, "Great presentation, Jake. Thank you." Thank um, you. Michael. Michael says, you might want to comment on this. Michael says, uh, seasonality is excellent, but it can break down during market meltdowns like February and March. That's why we have a timing trigger. There were some trades that didn't work, but the trading, the timing trigger kept us out of those trades. That's the beauty of this whole thing, is that even though we're not perfect and we don't even try to be perfect because we know that's not going to happen, we do have triggers which came from artificial intelligence that basically say, don't do this trade. The probability of success has decreased, not increased. So seasonality, no, it's not perfect. But I can tell you this, after trading seasonals for probably 35 years now, I swear by them, they're absolutely fantastic. But of course, not perfect. Hey, Jeff, can I ask to, a question? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, what was the wine bottle on your dashboard? <laughs> <laughs> the, the wine bottle on my dashboard was a lane departure warning. Ah, thank you. That was driving me crazy. <laughs> it's driving me crazy for two days. I'm thinking, what am I doing wrong? The car is not happy with me. It doesn't like me. It was just too high tech. And I never seen one of those before, but now I know what it is. Thank you for asking. <laughs> uh, let's see. Marius says a very good night webinar. Thank you. Omar says uh, uh, you were very positive. Good webinar. Um, let me say one more thing, if I may. Go ahead. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. I've made my money. I've made my wealth. I'm very, very happy with what I've done and very accomplished and have learned a lot. What really does it for me is when people say, Jake, you changed my life for the better. You taught me some things that given me, given me a different perspective. I'm very happy with this information. It's working for me. I'm making money for the first time in a long time, they say. That really does it for me. It makes my heart go pitter pitter patter. Well, that's great. I want to thank you for coming today, Jake. I'm going to talk a little bit about your uh, setup and timing triggers that we that we worked on. Uh, we're getting some questions about how it's integrated into Metastock. Sure. Uh, I want to say thank you for coming in and uh, thank you for working with us for so many years. Now yeah, I think been it's been a minute. It's 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 my honor and my privilege. Thank you very much, Jeff. Take care. All right. And goodbye, Thanks, everybody. Jake. Best of trading to you. And wear a mask. Yes, I agree with that. I'll probably get into trouble for saying that. They're going to censor me. No, no, I'm going to agree with you. Okay, bye, All everybody. Right. Goodbye, Jake. Okay, let's go ahead and kind of get this back. Okay, not, not, not there. There. Okay. All right. So as we had kind of alluded to, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my camera uh, before Greg turns it on for me. Uh, we have worked with Jake uh, we, to develop like the technical methods that he uses. Uh, he uses his own websites for, for the seasonal stuff, and it does a really, really good job of it. Um, what we've done is we've actually taken a, a lot of time and put the setup and timing triggers methods that he uses into Metastock as an add-on. And um, it's something that I'm very, very proud of. We have done two iterations of this uh, now. Uh, there is a version there, basically, you can kind of break this down into two parts. There's the 33 commitment of trader systems. And if you're interested in trading like futures and stuff like that, you're gonna be able to use his special commitment of trader system to trade gold or soybeans or any of the contracts that are really listed up here. For me, I'm more of an options trader and an options guy. And so I like to trade using the technical systems. And so the second part of this add-on is the um, the technical systems. And uh, they come with uh, the expert advisor, explorations, system testing. You can go in here and you can get it really, really good advice. And I think I do have a list of the technical systems. So here they are. There's a 15-minute opening range breakout, the five-bar moving average channel, the ADMA, the move, momentum moving average, the power momentum, and the stochastic pop. So 
having them all kind of programmed into Metastock allows you to kind of go in, get specific feedback, apply it. Well, we'll just show you one of them on a chart, just to kind of, <laughs> might as well, it's easier to kind of paint a picture this way, right? Uh, so this, the system that I'm using right now, this is the DAO, which is pretty much what we're looking at all day, but this is a Williams ADMA system. And you'll notice that it did trigger a buy on the DAO today. Here's where it had a bit of a short. Here you had a really good buy that lasted into about right here. All of these are painted on the chart for you, so you have buy and exits and et cetera, et cetera. We do integrate this fully into our expert advisor, meaning we do have commentary for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of show how that works. Right here is the commentary. Again, when you open up a commentary in a chart, it's gonna apply that and look at the very last day. And here you go, here you go. a new long trade has been triggered in this implementation of the MAC setup. A new long signal is generated when the instrument trades, kind of gives you some advice about how it's actually doing that. It's gonna give you some advice in terms of what your stop losses should be and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can scan for this. You can go in and uh, using the Metastock system tester. Kelly's going to talk a little bit about the power tools coming right up in the next session. But you can go in and say, okay, show me the systems that work best on the stocks that I'm interested in or the futures that I'm interested in. And this does have full futures in it as well. It's a great little system. And um, uh, there's a list of the systems that are in there as well. It does have the commitment of traders, data systems that are available in there as well. And all of them use the setup and trigger, set up trigger follow through methods as part of it. So uh, the cost on this is normally $499. So $499. Again, that is a one time cost. It does come with a 30 day money back guarantee. So one of the things that we like to do is, uh, is we want to make sure that you're very, very comfortable with the stuff that you're using. Uh, we back all of the purchases that we have for their one-time products with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And uh, so uh, you can go ahead and get that. If you're new to Metastock, you know, Metastock's been rated number one in its price category for 25 years, basically, in a row. Um, we're going to start, start to talk in full about what's uh, available there and what you can do with it. But in order to kind of take advantage of the offers that we're doing today, what you're going to want to do is just go up to metastock.com forward slash conf for conference promo. So uh, that'll take you to this page. Again, that's metastock.com slash conf promo. Um, you'll be able to set, sign up for any of the add-ons you want, right? For example, here is the Jake Bernstein setup and timing triggers. There's a little bit of a demo. If you're new to Metastock, right here is where you can sign up for the extended trial where you pay for a month and get two free months for free. Uh, you can do that with the real time or the end of day model right here. Again, uh, our Metastock DC is like 69 bucks and we're going to give you three months for that price. Our real time is about $250 and we're going to give you three months for that price. So um, for basically about 20 or 30 bucks a month, you can have access to the highest rated software program that's been rated number one in its price category for 25 years, basically in a row. Um, it's gonna, it's definitely something that we'd recommend that you take a look at and I think you'll like it. I would not personally trade with Metastock. So the link for that is metastock.com slash conf promo. And um, I think I have that right here. You can also give us a call at 800-882-3040. We can answer any questions that you've got, help you get set up, help you get set up for um, the free installation appointment that we offer. You can also chat online with us at metastock.com slash sales chat. So um, I do want to say thank you for Jake for doing such a really good job uh, with that. And He's been a great, uh, just a, a high caliber, always does a really, really good job. I promised that we had done a drawing <laughs> and then I forgot to kind of look up who had actually won the the um, the drawing. So I did that while Jake was talking. And uh, let's see, where did I do with it? Uh, the, the drawing that we're gonna give away is, um, two years access to the Hughes Optioneering service. It comes with some trainings, a couple of eBooks, and a two-year membership to a, a, an options pick service where you'll get information by email uh, from delivered from Chuck Hughes, our partner. Uh, that's gonna go to a Ferry OS in California. And I will get in touch with you after I get a little bit of time to breathe, and we will help you get set up with that Ferio.
Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, kind of blew past that a little bit. So uh, one moment, we will take a, a moment to thank our sponsor, Stocks and Commodities Magazine. Uh, if you do spend over $300 on any Metastock products or if you subscribe, well, if you, if you subscribe or spend any money with us, we're going to give you six months of Stocks and Commodities Magazine. But if you do a, uh, spend $300 or more, we're going to give you a complimentary two-year subscription. So there you go on that. And where did Kelly go? Okay, let's talk about our next presenter. I'm just kind of taking a look at the time. Our next presenter is Kelly Clement. Kelly has been with Metastock for almost, but not quite as long as I have. He does a really, really good job. He's going to talk today a lot about the form, uh, about the power tools in Metastock, and um, he does a really, really good job. So he, his technical title here is the president of Metastock, and um, very nice guy. Knows his way around Metastock. Also a really good presenter. So let's go ahead and bring you on. Kelly, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing so good, Jeff. Thanks for having me here. You know, I'm, not, you. I'm never going to be able to catch you in a number of years. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I've got uh, just turned over the presentation to you. All right, perfect. All right, I'll let you go. On. Let me get my big camera view over here on the other screen so we're not staring at that. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, for joining us today. It's a, it's always a pleasure to come in and talk about trading and what's going on in the markets. This uh, this presentation is very focused on kind of what's happening right now. Uh, obviously, there's a lot going on in the markets. We've seen a lot of different changes, and I'm going to show you today some ways that we can use Metastock to actually do some powerful trade identification. So that's where we're going to be focusing our time. Uh, as you as I go through the presentation. If there are any questions, please feel free to jump into chat, ask them. I'll try and address them as I'm going through the presentation. Uh, also try and reserve a little bit of time there at the end uh, so we can answer some questions there. Uh, as Jeff said, I've been here at Metastock for a while. I'm coming on my 19 years, not as high as Jeff's 22, 23 years, but I've been here quite a while as well. I know my way around the software. Uh, I do get to travel around quite a bit uh, and talk to traders. And it's one of my favorite things to do is to do these types of presentations. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, Jeff actually read the disclaimer this morning. So you're lucky you don't have to listen to me read it again. But I am going to talk about risk for a minute because there is actually a lot of risk in the morning, in the market. We've heard that throughout the day. Um, you know, as you, as you heard every presenter talk to you, they've talked about the risk in the market. There is that risk and it does exist. And we're going to talk about ways to alleviate that risk and put the odds in our favor, because that's really what we're trying to do as traders is put the odds in our favor. So just to give you a little bit more background on Metastock, I know Jeff's been talking about some of the features in Metastock, but let me talk to you a little bit about who we are, how we kind of got started, and then we'll jump into the presentation. So we were actually founded back in 1982. So this was the computer back in 1982, if you remember this uh, particular computer, uh, the IBM, the, the Macs were just coming out. And we were actually started by a gentleman named Steve Akalis. He wrote a great book called Technical Analysis from A to Z as well that you can still get. And he started Metastock to help his dad because he saw his dad doing charts by hand every day. And he wanted to help his dad be able to automate his look at the market every day. And from there, we've grown into a global organization. We've been part of major corporations like Reuters and Thomson Reuters. And we use data from Refinitiv, which is one of the best data providers out there. So that's kind of how we got our start uh, going back. And we have been around for about, uh, 38 years now coming on. So we've been around for quite a while. And as Jeff has uh, repeatedly told you, we have been the Reader's Choice uh, Award winners for the last 26 years in a row. Something we're very, very proud of. Something that you don't get very easily. This is based off of reader feedback. It's not us advertising with the magazine. It's actually a vote process. Uh, we're all talking about elections right now. So here's another vote process in which uh, we win every year that we're very, very pleased with. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into the uh, the presentation. So here's a few of the tools that are available in Metastock. Uh, obviously, you're able to chart. You've been seeing that today. Scan, backtest, 
forecast. If you saw Scott Brown's presentation yesterday, he talked about forecasting and actually forecasting. We might get a, into a little bit of that today, but uh, if you want to learn more about forecasting, jump back uh, after today and watch Scott's presentation yesterday. Uh, options analysis, global data, and powerful news from Reuters are things that we offer. We're not going to talk about all these things today. We're going to focus on charting, scanning, and backtesting is really where we're going to focus today. But before we get there, what I want to talk about is this. So, you know, as a you know, working for a company like Metastock, we work globally and we have partners who are all over, all over the world. Uh, and it's something that I really enjoy. I get to travel around the world. I get to visit with our partners and our customers globally. But, well, obviously not right now, right? Nobody's traveling right now, but, but this is something that I normally do. One of the things I like to talk about here is if you're a pilot and you sit down and you get into your seat and you're about to travel somewhere, you're about to fly that plane somewhere, the very first thing you have to do before you do anything is you have to pull out your checklist and you have to go through that checklist step by step. If you don't go through your checklist, odds are something's going to go wrong. And that's one thing I love about pilots is they have that dedicated checklist that they have to go through every time. And we trust that they go through that every time. So it's an important thing. You know, one of the things, I, one of the shows I like to watch, uh, and people always laugh at me because I travel a lot, is I watch a show called Airplane Disasters. Now, why would a guy who travels around the world all the time, is on planes all the time, want to watch a show called Airplane Disasters? Well, what I like about it is they try and figure out what happened, what went wrong. And oftentimes, if it's not a mechanical failure, it's something that the pilots did. They missed something in their checklist. And it's that working backwards. And it's actually something we should be doing in our trading as well. If something's not going our way, if something goes wrong, well, what happened? Let's take a step back. Let's learn from it. And let's not make that mistake again. So I, I really like that, uh, that aspect of it. Now, just talking about discipline, we've heard a lot about it this morning, as I've, as I've said, uh, but let's talk about what, about what have some of the other presenters have said. So Anne-Marie talked about her OODA loop. I love that, the OODA loop. So the observe, orient, uh, decide, and act. That was great. It's a great circle of, way, of the how to actually set up your trades and go through. When we talked about Jake Bernstein, he talked a lot about discipline and discipline giving us confidence. And that goes back to that pilot analogy, right? So if we have discipline, we're going to have confidence. Okay, so those are, those are a few of the things that we learned about today. Jake also talked a lot about you know, his 12 things and then went on to add more things that we need to look at before we make a trade. And we're gonna talk some more about those things today as well. So here's what we're gonna talk about. Here's what we're gonna go through. Trade identification, okay? When, how to find the best stocks to trade. And this could be commodities, it doesn't have to be stocks. It could be Forex, it could be Bitcoin. Whatever it is you trade, this is what we wanna be looking at. And then we're going to talk about uh, when should I get in and out of a trade? How to test your trading strategy before spending your first dollar? And how to add clarity to your trading decisions? Because that's a big one. So let's go ahead and look at it. Now, when we talk about trading, we talk about different types of indicators. So there's four really basic types of indicators. You can get a lot more granular, but we're going to focus on these. So there's trending indicators, momentum indicators, volatility indicators, and volume. Okay, so those are our four types. Now, if we dive into that a little bit deeper and we kind of segment this out. So if we're talking about trend, we're talking about indicators like the moving average or the MACD, okay? So those are some basic examples of trend indicators. These are very popular. Trending indicators are very popular. Uh, that's one that people will use a lot. Momentum, uh, examples of this would be stochastic or RSI, okay? So these are gonna be indicators that oscillate. You'll see them go up and down and kind of move more rapidly than something like a trending indicator. Okay, we have volatility. So we have Bollinger Bands, average true range. 
Now this morning when Jeff Tompkins spoke, if you listen to his, his talk, his slingshot trade is actually based around Bollinger Bands, okay? So that's a volatility indicator. And he talked a lot about how there's volatility in the market right now. So that's definitely something that, uh, you know, is an important indicator, volatility. Volume, on balance, on, on balance volume or the check and money flow. So these are some examples of different indicators, okay? Now, if I'm looking at a stock, so this is uh, Alphabet, uh, we took this screenshot yesterday. And if I look at this, I can go back and I can put any of these different indicators on this chart, but the question is, how do I know which one is actually going to work the best? How do I know if trend, momentum, volatility, or volume is my best choice? And that's what we're going to explore today. We want to get in and understand what the, what the best system is to use on a particular stock. What we're trying to do is marry personality with the, the stock, okay? So we're going to talk about two different workflows today. One is uh, a lot of people have their preferred indicator. You may be one of these people who like MACD. You may be somebody who likes RSI. You may be somebody who likes Bollinger Bands. So how do you a identify trades with your preferred indicator and then figure out if you should be taking a trade is our first workflow and our second workflow is a lot of people also have stocks that they like to trade they kind of understand the personalities of those stocks but they want to understand what best indicator to use on that particular stock so we're going to talk about those two different workflows and show you how you can identify opportunities either way Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into Metastock. So Jeff's been showing you some of the tools today. Um, Scott again showed you some tools yesterday. Where we're going to start is in that first workflow is in identifying current opportunities and then trying to determine which of those opportunities that are presented is the best opportunity, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a tool here in Metastock. Oh, let me bring over the Power Console. And what we're going to do is we are going to start by scanning a list of stocks for current opportunities. So I'm going to go to our Explorer tool. This tool lets me put a strategy against a list of stocks to identify opportunities, current opportunities. So you can see there's quite a number of different things built into Metastock. So you can really pick what you want to do. You can also design your own systems in Metastock, which is really cool. But we're going to kind of focus on some basic ones. Let's start with trend. One of those trending indicators was the MACD. Now, just before we jump into it, let's just put the MACD on the chart just to, to look at it. We'll look at the Dow here since everybody's been looking at the Dow today, right? Uh, so here's the Dow. Okay, so we have our MACD up here, and what we're looking for for a buy trigger is a crossing of the lines. So what we're going to see here is uh, actually an entry. So the Dow is actually triggering an entry. Uh, Jeff has showed our expert advisor here. So if we go down and we find the MACD, we could put that expert advisor on there. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the expert because we have Jeff's been showing that quite a bit. Okay, so there is our MACD entry signal actually yesterday, okay, is when that came in. So you can see here we get our, when we get buy and sell alerts, we can see the buy and sell signals right on the chart. We can also view the commentary window, which kind of guides us right through that trade. So if I go back to yesterday, step back a bar, you can see that it shows that the MACD is bullish, it crossed zero periods ago, which would mean it's crossing that day. And then it kind of sets you up into the trade and kind of walks you through what you should be doing. So here's, there's kind of our trade setup. So this is a, a great reference guide if you're not familiar with some of the indicators and different types of indicators to learn about them. But let's go ahead and jump in to finding opportunities, okay? So let's go back to our Power Console here. So we're going to start in the Explorer here. I am going to scroll down and I'm going to find the MACD. We're going to start with that trend indicator. 
So we're going to use our what's called our expert system. So our expert system will look for buy opportunities and sell opportunities, okay? It'll go long and short. It also will give you overbought and oversold. So you can look for MACD overbought and oversold as well. So it looks for a couple of different things. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to look through the S&P 100. Now, you can do any list of stocks that you want. So if you wanted to do, uh, see, Lynn is asking, uh, does Metastock have Forex currency pairs? Absolutely, we do. So we can show some examples here of that in just a little bit, Lynn. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, and you can, we can do the same analysis on currency pairs. Uh, Brahendish is asking, how do you see reversal trend? Uh, we can show you some different scans for that to identify trend changes in uh, in trend as well. So that, that's some things we'll look at in just a few minutes. Okay, so I'm going to put the MACD against the S&P 100. Again, any list, it could be an entire market, it could be Forex pairs, it could be Bitcoin, it could be commodities, whatever you want to look at. I can tell it how much data I want to look at. I can also do time frames. Now I am trading, I'm like using what's called Metastock RT here. So I can look at one minute, five minute, 30, two, two minute bars, whatever. Um, we also have a version of Metastock called daily charts, which lets you do, do week, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. So I'm using the RT, so I have options here. If you're using the DC, you'd be using daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. So let's go ahead and do daily for now. And I'm just going to start my exploration. Okay, and it just goes on the other screen here. Let me bring it over. And it's just going to go through this list of the S&P 100, and it's going to give me a list of stocks that are either giving a buy signal or a sell signal today based off of that criteria. Okay, so you can see it's going through that list here rather quickly. And what, we'll, what you can see is you can actually run multiple scans at once. And sometimes when I'm screen sharing, it just uh, slows it down just a hair bit here. So we'll, sorry for the just slight delay there. Okay, so we are through that list of 100 stocks. Now you can see it's rejected out 78% of them. So most of these stocks have nothing going on today, no opportunity uh, with the MACD. There may be with other indicators, but the MACD no, no opportunity on these 79. Now over here on these 22, I do have opportunity. If I come down here, I can see I have my list of stocks that are giving me a signal, and then I can rank by buy or sell. So I have a buy signal here on Adobe, Altera, Amazon, Apple, Berkshire Hathaway, Capital One Financial. Let's see if I have any shorts. Okay, so US Bancor is triggering a short. And then I can also look at overbought oversold okay so if i go into the expert this will also show uh, if it's overbought or oversold and that's typically um, highlighted on the chart by colors okay we're not going to look at that right now but let's go back here and take a, a full view i'm presented a list of 22 stocks that are triggering a buy opportunity right now well with that 22 stocks how do i know which one is the best one to trade how do i know if any of those stocks, the personality of the trading system matches the personality of the, the, the individual securities. Well, what you can do is you can go in and you can test these strategies historically to see if they've performed well. And that's in a function here we call their system tester. So let's talk about system testing for just a minute and what system testing is and how it's beneficial and maybe some of the drawbacks of system testing. So if I'm system testing, what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, I want to take the MACD in this example, take it and put it against my list of 22 stocks and test them historically against a period of time to see how they've performed. Now that's great because it can paint a picture from me of how these each individual stocks performed over time using the MACD. And that's a great thing because it gives me a good historical picture of the performance. Well, what's the drawback to that? Well, it's historical, right? Hindsight is 2020. So if I'm looking at this and I say, oh great, you know, this is how it performed. Is that a guarantee of it's going to perform that way in the future? 
absolutely not. But what it is, is it's a, it's a way to put odds in my favor. It's a way of saying, well, hey, this has worked seven out of 10 times. You just heard Jake talk about system testing and looking at things historically and going through his points of list and saying, hey, you need to look at all these things before you can make a trade. This is the same type of thing. We're system testing our systems to see how well they've performed against our individual securities. And that's what we're going to do here. Okay, and if there's any questions on system testing, you know, go ahead and feel free to uh, put that into the chat box and we'll go through that. Uh, let's see, so we're going to take that MACD expert system and we're going to come in and we're going to put it against our 22 stocks here. So there's always this option here, last exploration results inside Metastock, so you can take it and, and pull up that list. Now, what I need to do is tell the system tester how I trade, okay? Because if I were to talk to each of you individually and ask you and say, hey, uh, you know, how, how much money do you have in your trading account? Do you prefer to go long or short or both? Uh, you know, don't answer those questions. Don't, you don't need to tell me how much money you have in your trading account. But what you do is you go in and you put that into the system tester, you put in your risk tolerances, and it will give you variables based off of your trading style because everybody's going to be a little different. And I'll show you a few examples of that. Okay, so MACD against those 22 stocks. Now I searched for, a, we're, we primarily had 22 buy opportunities, there was one short. So what I'm going to do is test long trades here. So I'm going to say MACD, 22 stocks, long trades. I'm going to look over the last 1250 records. Now, if I'm looking at a daily chart, that's about five years worth of data. Now, why would I look over five years of data? You can go, you can do the last six months, the last 30 days, you can do the last 10 years, whatever you wanna do. I like the last five years because it just kind of gives me a good overall view of how it's performed in different markets. I want as much information as I can get before I make a trade. So that's the reason why I use that. You can also set specific date ranges and time frames and things like that, but we're not gonna go that deep into it right now. Now I need to tell the system tester how much, again, date, how much money I have in my trading account, how much I'm willing to risk. So this is an important thing. If you're trading futures or commodities or Forex, you do a points only test. But as an equity trader, you put in how much money you have in your trading account, or I can say, hey, I only trade 1,000 shares at a time or 100 shares at a time or 10,000 shares at a time. Whatever it is, that you, however you do it, you can change this in here, okay? We're going to go with percent of available equity. So I'm going to say, this is how much money I have in my trading account and this is what I'm willing to risk. Now, if I were to ask most of you, you're gonna say 20% in your, you're gonna risk 20% in a trade. I'm actually, I actually wouldn't, I actually wouldn't put that much money into a, a trade. But the reason why I put 20% in here for a presentation is because the math is easy. Okay, if I have $100,000 and I'm willing to risk 20% of that, what's my, how much am I willing to risk? 20,000, okay? So I'm willing to risk 20,000 in a trade at a given time. Now, if my money goes up to 200,000, now, how much am I willing to risk? Well, that now becomes 40,000 because I'm risking 20%. If it drops down to 50,000, well, that's 10,000. So th that's the math. That's why I put 20% in there. You put in what you're willing to risk and what your risk tolerance is, and that will help you uh, with your particular trading style. Okay, uh, broker. So in here, you can come in if you trade on margin or if you make money in a money market account when you're not trading. So you can put all that data in. If you pay per transaction to get in and out of a trade, you can account for that. So let's say you pay $10 to get in, $10 to get out. Just put in 10 on entry and 10 on exit, and that'll take care of that. Now, I don't pay any, you know, most brokers now don't charge commissions to, to get in and out. So we'll just leave that at zero. And then trade, uh, trade execution tab. This is the last tab, and then we get into the fun stuff, okay? So this tab, what this is, is it has this option here for realistic market prices. Now I'd actually like your guys' idea of what realistic market prices would mean 
in system testing. So I'm going to give you just a second to throw an answer in there and see if we have, uh, see what people think. I know it takes a second to chat. So, I, so if I got quiet there for a second, I'm just waiting for people to chat. So it's actually a really interesting thing. Okay, yeah. So what, what this means is that I get my buy signal. Let's look at the Dow over here. If I got my buy signal yesterday, when did I actually get into that trade? Because if, if I got it at the end of the day yesterday, I'm not actually getting into the trade until today, right? So that's usually how buy signals work. It could be on a five minute bar. If it's on a five minute bar, I get it on this bar, I don't get in until the next bar. That's how that's what it means. So that's what realistic market prices mean. So you don't so you can change that if you want to. Most people just leave this alone. You can also account for slippage. So if you know if you say, oh, you know, I wanted to get in right at the open, but I moved two to three percent before I got in at the open, you could put that in. All right, so let's go ahead and run our system test. We're putting the MACD against our 22 stocks to see which one performs the best. And you can see it just churn through down here and identify those opportunities. Okay, so we're almost through there. You can see the results coming in. And now let's look at this. Okay, so this is, you know, going even back to Jake again, this is important. This is really good information to look at because it helps us understand the performance of a stock with the personality of the system. What I have here is I have a list of my stocks that I was trading, my symbol, periodicity, my date range, here's what I tested, my net profit and percent gain. So let's rank on percent gain here. So Apple was my top performing percent gainer. Over that five year period, it had 92 trades. And then this one is really important to me. So trade profit loss. So what that means is I had 52 winners to 40 losers. So I had I had a lot of losers in there. I had 40 losers over that period of five years, but I had 52 winners. So what does that tell me? Well, I had a lot of losers, but a, about the same amount of winners. So that tells me that my wins were probably pretty big and my losses were actually probably pretty small. So I can learn more about that and we're going to in just a second, but so that's an important number to look at. So if you look down just at the next one, the Netflix is actually really interesting. Let's look at that for just a second. So I had an 18,000 gain over that time, 18%, 141 trades, 67 were winners, and 74 were losers. So I had more losers than I had winners, but it was my third most performing stock when it comes to trading with the MACD. So again, that tells me that my wins are usually pretty big and my losses would be pretty small. So we're going to look at a couple more things that can help us determine what the best course of action here is. So let's go into Apple here. Just dive in since that's our best performing one. Now there's a lot of data in here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through all this data and telling you what each of these little things mean. Because for me in system testing, there's just a few things that are actually the most critical to me. And I'm going to show you, share with you the most critical bits of information. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at uh, a few of these bits of critical information. And these are a few of the things that Jake talked about when he was talking about system testing. Okay, so we have our performance, our annualized performance. Okay, and then let's come down here. I wanna look at my profitable trades. So I had 52 profitable trades. My average profit was about $1,000. My highest profit was about $5,600. And my lowest profit was $20. Okay, my unprofitable trades, 40. My average loss was 403, average loss 1788, and my lowest loss 389. Now, if I'm, if I'm trading Apple and I'm trading the MACD, these are important things to me because if I can see that my average profit was about $1,000 and my average loss was about 403, I've got a pretty good win to loss ratio there. Now, one thing that the system tester isn't doing by default, but you can put into it, is you can put stops into it, okay? You're not stuck with just, um, you know, 
buy when it says buy and sell when it says sell, which is how we tested it, you can actually go in and put stops in and things like that. But I really want to see how the system performs on its own. How does it, does it stand on its own two legs or does it not perform very well? So I can see my, my average profit's pretty good versus my average loss. So th these are good indications for me to understand the trading system, okay? I can get in, I can look at trade efficiency, I can look at these things. But what we're going to look at is if I look at these different tabs, there's a lot of data and information that you can get into. These are the, uh, the you know, the deep dive numbers. We're not, for me, again, I don't look at these. What I look at is this. This is what's called the equity line, okay? So this is how my money has performed over time using the MACD. And if, the, if this equity line looks good to me, if it's a good smooth upward direction equity line, it gives me a good sense of how that system has performed over time. Because if it's smooth and has a good upward trajectory, well, that tells me that, hey, this system has performed consistently well. So this is a really strong thing to look at. So over here's my initial money, 100,000. I can see that growth over the five-year period. Okay, so these are my data points, basically. And I can see that this has been a smooth, strong, upward equity line, okay? So I can see that Apple actually does perform very well using the MACD. So that tells me that Apple works well with trending indicators. That signal seems to be very good because it has worked uh, historically. And again, I'm not recommending that you buy Apple, or I'm not here to tell you that. What I'm saying is that this strategy has performed historically well. Again, that that is a, a past look, but if I'm looking at something like, let's just go back here and let's look at this again. Now, Apple, my top performing one, down here to Wells Fargo, and if I go down and I just look into Wells Fargo and I just go right to that equity line. Okay, so remember what that equity line for Apple looked like? Now look at what the equity line for Wells Fargo looks like. Okay, so here's my initial equity. It, it's been choppy, it hasn't performed well. It ha it's had a lot of drawdown, which is pullback in our equity. So it's lost a lot of momentum here. And over time it's lost money. So if I'm looking at these two individual stocks, uh, Apple to Wells Fargo, well, which one of those two would be the better one to take, do we think? Something that's worked well historically over time or something that's worked poorly, okay? So there's some odds in our, in our favor right there. I know that Wells Fargo has been horrible. I know that Apple's worked well historically. Well, there's my balance, right? Let's just look at one or two uh, well-performing ones. Let's look, what, let's look at, uh, I can't remember what we just looked at. I think it was Adobe. So look at Adobe's equity line again. It almost looks like Apple's, doesn't it? So it's been trending very, very well. So there's an example of another one. Let's look at Netflix. Okay, so Netflix has had some good trending up, but look what Netflix did for quite a while. It stayed relatively flat. It hasn't been the greatest of of systems with with Netflix. So maybe this is one I want to be a little hesitant on. Maybe I don't like this one as much. Okay. And then so you can start to see how we can use the system tester to identify and weed out trades that we don't want to take just by quickly looking at a few data points and saying, oh, hey, that one works great. Uh, and that one works great. Uh, let's see. Lynn is asking, can you system test more than one indicator at a time? Man, Lynn, what a great question. And yes, we are actually gonna to go to that right now. So thank you. Okay, so let's just review our workflow there. Let me just go back over to our PowerPoint for just a second. So A is use your preferred indicator. So we just scan the market for MACD and it could be RSI, it could be Bollinger Bands, it could be on balance volume, it could be any of the indicators that you like. And then you can say, hey, I want to scan the market and then test. Boom, done. Now we can say, hey, I want to find the best indicator for what I'm trading. So why doesn't somebody give me a stock that we want to back test? I'll just take the first one for now. 
and we'll go from there. So anybody give me a stock and then we'll go from there. I know somebody's got a stock they're trading. So while you're doing that, I'm going to come over here and pull this up here. Okay, Jeff's giving us Tesla. Okay, we'll go with Tesla. All right, so we're going to put in just that one stock. Instead of a list of stocks, we're going to put in Tesla. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a list of indicators. So now I've got like about 30 or 40. <laughs> so I know it takes a second. We'll, we'll try and do a few others here in just a minute. So um, this is the part that always gets everybody excited is when they, we can start to look at their stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a list of systems built into, built into Metastock here. So I'm going to take what are called these performance systems. And there's 26 performance systems built into Metastock. But if you, uh, there's also an add-on that you can get from Metastock called the Performance Systems Plus, which gives you an additional 54 strategies, making it a total of 80 strategies. So I'm going to take these and let's just take a few other ones. Let's take uh, like the MACD, let's take RSI, uh, Stochastic. So we'll just put a, a, couple of these, a couple of these in here and we'll put them against Tesla. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking this whole list of strategies and now putting it against my stock to see which one performs best. And let's say we're going to go both. We'll go long, short, so we'll do both. Let's run that system test and let's see how, which indicator actually performs best on Tesla. So we'll actually do, uh, after we do Tesla, we'll do um, a commodity just to check a commodity and kind of get a, a, a difference for it and to show you kind of how that works. And we'll do it on an intraday time frame to show you some of the different things. All right, so let's look at our results here. Okay, so from our list, we can see that we have systems that have performed very well. We can see that we have systems that have not performed well. So let's go ahead and rank by best profit. So you can see that this PS fractal trading system, uh, I know that that's something that people ask for a lot is uh, fractal trading systems and these are built right into Metastock. So if you get Metastock or you have Metastock, this is a system that's built right in. So this PS fractal trading system too. Okay, so I can see that my average number of trades that were winners and losers. So I had 16 winners, 17 losers. So again, my losers were, I had more losers, but it's my best performing system. So let's look over at my equity line here and get a good idea of how it's performed. Now this is a different equity line, isn't it? This is very different than what we've seen before. Okay, so here it spent a lot of time kind of flat, kind of lost a little bit of money here, now that's over a long period of time, but what's it doing in the recent market? It's actually been performing really, really well in the recent market. And this is where you want to put your most weight, okay? Is right there on, on the most recent market. So again, what I did there is I took, took a list of strategies, put it against Tesla and said, oh, hey, what's my best performing? And that one may be my best performing. Now, one thing I'll caution you on is always look at that equity line, because if you don't, you may get choppiness at the recent market and you want to confirm the recent market looks really good. Okay, so here's another example. The recent market's been looking really good. And we'll just look at the, fir the first few systems here to kind of get a good view. So here's one of our momentum indicators. This is the stochastic. Now, is the stochastic working well on a on Tesla there, I mean, overall, it's it's made money and it's done very well. Um, so it's done very well, but look at this, it's been choppy. So if you're gonna trade something like the stochastic with Tesla, you may wanna be a little more cautious with your, with your stops, okay? So you, you may wanna watch that kind of thing. Uh, James is asking, Thanks. This is absolutely awesome. Thanks a lot, Kelly and Jeff. Can I get the URL to this video for my reference? Yeah, this will actually be right up on YouTube uh, uh, right after the end of the day. So you can go back and watch this. 
Sorry, Jeff, were you going to say something? Yeah, I'm grabbing the URL, so I'll grab it for you real quick. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Jeff. All right, let's uh, let's try a different uh, strategy here. Let's take uh, something like gold. Okay, if somebody asked for gold, I said we do a commodity. So we'll do GC little C1. We'll do the we'll do the continuous contract. Now remember the thing I have to do if I'm doing a commodity is I have to come in here do a points only test, just because of the way that these systems work and um, and test. So let's go ahead and just run that system test. We'll do the same strategies and see what kind of result we get. And this is actually, I mean, for me, this is one of the most powerful functions of Metastock because it really does give you a good insight into how that trading system really works against the security that you're using. Now, earlier today, you learned about uh, Jeff Tompkins trade trend. You learned about Anne Marie's um, Anne Marie system. Now, both of these have all the all the system tests built in. So you can go in, you can take these strategies, plug them in to your against your stocks and see how well they performed. You can scan the market, identify opportunities, test the strategies to make sure that they work. So the system tester is very powerful in that respect. And that's why people like Jeff and Anne Marie have put their systems into the system tester. So you can really see that performance and see how well they worked. So let's, again, let's work by best profit. Okay, so you'll see every time we look at something, it's a different system, okay? Because the personality is different, it trades differently. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this and take a look at it. And let's look at our equity line. Okay, so that that's a pretty interesting equity line because that has performed consistently well over the years, but look, it's flat in the recent market. This is, yeah, if I look at this and said, hey, how's this, how's this going? Yeah, it's been awesome. But hey, wait a minute. It's kind of sticking right here. It's not giving me a lot of good opportunity here. So let's maybe look at the next one. Now look at that one. Look at that. Look at how that equity line has just been ramping up and moving. Okay. So that one gives me a lot more confidence in a current trade than my best performer did because it's working well in the current market. So now how would I use that? If I see that gold is working well with the projection oscillator, how do I, how, what do I do? How do I use that? Well, now what you can do is we can close this, come, come back up here and let's open gold. And remember, this is one of the best things about Metastock is it works across everything. It works across stocks, futures, Forex, options, whatever it is that, you, that you're trading, you can open up anything with it as long as you have the data. Okay, so we're gonna look for the PS. Sorry, actually I wanna go to the expert, sorry. So we're gonna go and look for the expert system, the PS projection oscillator okay so there's my ps projection oscillator i put that right on the chart and that will give me my buy and sell signals and you can see that here's the most recent signal that it gave me now what are the drawbacks to that workflow so the first workflow remember we scanned the market we found an opportunity that was right there the second workflow is we took a list of a list of systems and put it against a particular stock and said which one works best well i found which one works best but i don't have a current signal so that's kind of the difference here uh, is is that so we're going to have to kind of wait for something but if it's something that you actively trade and follow all the time this system testing method is one that's really going to get you the the best information to trade that system. So let's say you're trading a five minute. Well, hey, test it on a five minute. And let's let's just do that really quickly, give you another example. Because this, this is, again, for me, very, very powerful. So let's go interval. Let's do, yeah, let's do a five minute chart. And let's see what the difference looks like uh, for that. 
And it looks like I accidentally selected an optimization system in there. So that's going to take it just a second. So let me uncheck that. And actually, let's cancel that. And let's uncheck optimization. So optimization, I'm, we're not going to go too deep into that. But what it does is I didn't choose my gold again, GCC1. Okay, so optimization really kind of tries to plug in the best scenarios and the best methods. Um, so that's something that you can do in Metastock. We don't have time to, to do that here. Okay, so let's look at my net profit. Okay, so on a five minute, it's actually a different system. It's this PS long sell, short sell uh, trading strategy, five day, which would be five bar in this circumstance. And there you can look at that equity line over time. And again, if we look at that equity line over time, a recent market, it looks like it's performing very, very well. So when you're, when you're using these things and you're using system testing, now there's actually a lot more we can do with system testing. We don't have time to go into all of it. We can test multiple systems against multiple strategies. But that, you know, you can, one of the things that you need to be aware of is you can go down a rabbit hole, right? You can say, oh, I'm going to do this and this and this. What you really want to do with system testing is you want to pick your workflow for it. So my preferred workflow if I come back to my PowerPoint here, is number one. You know, pick pick an indicator that you like, scan the market, identify opportunities, quick test, identify which ones perform the best and have the best equity line, and then I have the confidence in my trades. For me, waiting for, you know, it's great to have a system that works best with a particular stock, but then you have to wait for a signal. I like opportunities that are coming up now so that's that's something that i really work through and look at so i'm going to go ahead and go through a few slides here if you have any questions about system testing go ahead and feel free to put them into the chat uh, but let's go ahead and uh, just talk about your opportunity to try metastock and try some of these tools that uh, we've presented today so we've talked about here again scanning the markets and focusing on opportunities and that's one of the biggest things in Metastock that's the most powerful is that scanning tool is absolutely amazing. Testing your strategies across our, across markets. So you could, uh, one thing we didn't do is say, okay, well, if I like the MACD, which stock in the NASDAQ 100 does it work best on or the whole whole NASDAQ? And you can identify that way. So there's there's ways that you can use this and it's really limited to your imagination <laughs> in the ways that you can system test. Uh, statistically, forecast probable price movements. That's what Scott talked about yesterday in the forecaster presentation. If you missed that after today's session, go back and watch that one. It's a powerful session on what you can do on forecasting what's the probable direction of a price after you've gotten your signal. Uh, you can get real-time alerts. I've shown you the expert commentary and the signals and how you can use those. And what's great is this starts at $59 a month. $69 a month in the US and Canada, depending on if you want end of day or if you want real time. And we've made it easy for you to try it for three months. So you get an extended trial at metastock.com slash conf promo, or you can call 1-800-882-3040. And I'll just show you that page here really quick. So we're just going to go to So it's conf promo. And then let's just talk about the types of traders that you are. So if you're, you know, if you're more uh, long-term swing trading, Metastock end of day might be better for you. Uh, you can do all those same tools, everything that I just showed you with a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly charts. If you are a real-time intraday trader up to swing trading and long-term, Metastock RT is what you'd want to try out. And you can try these, you know, just pay for the first month, second and third month for free. And then you're able to take, you know, and then get, I would recommend getting things like uh, Anne Marie's system or, or Jake's system and or Trade Trend, putting it in, making it part of your workflow, testing these strategies, scanning for opportunities, and being able to pull all that together. And you can get these great deals on any of these add ons uh, for Metastock. And as Anne Marie was kind of alluding to, one of the things that you can do here, which is really 
awesome. Let me just go back to my PowerPoint here for just a second. Is with your Metastock subscription, when you get Metastock, and if people here have Metastock, they would be able to attest to this, is, and Anne Marie said this best, it's world class support. You're never going to get anything better than the support here at Metastock. We strive to provide the best support to our customers that we can. The best part is it's free and it's unlimited. So you can, uh, you know, you can call our support and say, hey, help me do this. Show me how the system tester works. Show me how to open a chart. Whatever it may be, our, they can help you do whatever you want. They can even get on your system. They can help you set up your strategy the way you want to. They'll even call you when you get Metastock and do what we call white glove installation, where they'll actually get on your computer. They'll help you from installing the software to opening it up, showing you how to do what you want to do in Metastock and spend as much time as you need getting up and running. We also offer, offer a, a, you know, you're, if you're on our YouTube channel now, you know the, the quality of videos that we have up there. You can go through and you can watch our videos, learn more about it. There's a lot you get with Metastock. So uh, call us 800-882-3040. Go to metastock.com slash conf promo or visit metastock.com slash sales chat. And uh, our sales reps can talk to you about how you trade and what the best way for you to get started with Metastock is. So, uh, Jeff, uh, any questions we need to address? Uh, no, I don't. Well, let me check YouTube real quick. I, uh, great job, Kelly. Thank you, uh, sir. We did not get a lot of questions except for the ones about that said James saying, this is absolutely awesome. So good work. Well, there we go. <laughs> well, Nick thank you, everybody. Um, it was great to be here. I'll let uh, Jeff take over and get us on to the next presenter. Uh, but thank you for joining us today as part of this conference. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. It's time for another prize, I think. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, share my screen real quick, though. Show my screen. I, I will go ahead and put that up here. And... Um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about who wins the next prize. So I went ahead and instead of trying to find from a huge Excel spreadsheet, I randomly picked another one out. Um, the next winner is going to be Roy W. Okay, Roy W., the prize that you're going to win is from Altos Trading. It's actually a really, really cool prize. They are going to give you two years access to, um, let me just get the, I had the notes right here to their uh, Wealth Bundle Alert Package. That's gonna include um, put rider, iron condor service, uh, and a stock alert annual service. 10 to 12 trades a month is what that gives you. Uh, you also get professional trading with uh, 9.5 hours of training in Jeff's new ebook. And you'll receive alerts via email. And you'll have access to the member area of their website, including two months of trade trend. So you'll also get VIP email and phone support. Um, and all of that will be included. So if your name is Rob, W, I, uh, I know you're in the USA. I don't have a city or state for you, uh, but I'll get in touch with you. We can get you set up for that. So there you go. Let's go ahead and kind of move on a little bit. Um, I do want to mention the premium classes or the premium classes that we are running on um, Sunday. I'm really excited about these. Uh, we're going to have Steve Bigelow. I'm just going to go ahead and, and type the, the link in here. So we'll go to metastock.com slash conf promo and uh on sunday so we again we have a full day tomorrow that's free on sunday oh that's not what i meant to do it's actually i know conference 20 prime is the one that i wanted to go to so we're gonna go up to that uh we have basically uh steve bigelow dr alexander elder and um in addition to that, Oscar Carboni. All of them are going to be giving a 90-minute class. Uh, all of them are going to be really, really good. Oscar, for example, he uh, has worked on the floor. He's really good at kind of drawing ten, trend lines and technical formations. That's what he's going to talk about. Alex Elder does his, uh, if you've read Come Into My Trading Room, um, he does a really good class. He's going to be talking about the current market conditions and the triple screen trading system. And then in addition to that, we're going to have Steve Bigelow talking about his 
best ranked candlestick signal. So all of that $600, uh, we're gonna do 450 for people that come to the, the event today. You can get that either by going to conference 20 prime, metastock.com slash conference 20 prime, or going to metastock.com slash sales chat, or you can even give us a call at 800-882 three zero four zero so um there you go our next guest is going to be here for her very first time celeste lindman uh, celeste is going to be talking about her favorite technical trade setup i've never seen celeste talk i'm not sure uh, i think it's going to be great i didn't have talked to her in a great detail and uh, she's very very nice i think it's going to be a really good class so let's find out <laughs> celeste how are you today I'm doing well. Hey, Jeff, thanks so much for having me on. I'm looking forward to spending some time with you all. I'll probably need, yeah. you want me to go ahead and try to take this screen sharing? Yeah, you should have just got a little bit of a pop-up just then. Yeah, so I think I might be showing you right now. How can I switch that over? Okay, so if you go to the, you know where the dashboard is, right? Let's see if you, yeah, I think so. Let's see if this. Uh, yeah. There should be a, that show screen. Okay. This should be a show, and we're seeing the presenter view of your, of your thing. But okay. on the on on the little uh, go to webinar console, there's a uh, there's like it says file options view help, and there's a little sharing down tab. If you click on that, it'll give you a show my screen, and you can click the down arrow there, and it'll allow you to pick different screens. Okay, so uh, let me see. I've tried. Maybe I'm picking the wrong one. Let's. Oh, there we go. Now. How's that? Switch over yet? Okay, great. Looks okay, good. so now you got my voice, you got my screen. I'm going to try to show you my face here. So I'm going to share my web. Can you see my face? Okay, hey, there you are. Yeah, perfect. It's working <laughs> great. Uh, okay. And we can hear you. Sound is great. Uh, welcome today. Great, thank you. Okay, so oh. everything's still good? Oh, yeah, everything's okay. great. Um, I'm gonna, I'll get out of your way, let you talk, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. All right, great. Well, thanks again, Jeff, for having me. You know, I've actually known you for a good long time, over a decade, uh, have a, a lot of great uh, experience with Metastock, just knowing that you guys are great people to work with and really uh, genuine, and you're just, you know, who you are. So I've enjoyed listening to some of the presenters and uh, great information. And what I'm gonna share with you today is basically you'll be able to use right away, along with what you've heard from these other moderators too. So I'm gonna get right into it. And Jeff, since I'm not really fancy dancy on GoToWebinar, I'll let you uh, ask me any questions. What I'll do is I'll kind of pause along the way and uh, see if there are any questions. But what I wanna make sure that y'all get are the three steps to my favorite trade setup. So um, it may feel like at times it goes a little fast, but I know it's, it's recorded. So if you're interested, you can go back and listen to it uh, again. So anyway, my favorite trade setup is basically this swing trade where we buy at wholesale and I uh, sell it at retail. And it's great because it happens in any market condition and it's basically telling me when to enter and in which direction. And what I love about it too is that it just sets up every week with great potential in stocks like Emerson, uh, where I earned 46% on the stock uh, plus dividends in three months. And of course, you can play with options on this as well. It works just as well on that as well. Um, Halliburton, 58% plus dividends uh, on the stock in one month. How about Target, 27% plus dividend uh, on the stock in one month. And the best part is, is what I'm doing is when I get the setup, I just... I'm letting the market do the work. And I just want to make sure, I hope you can stick around to the end because I'm going to give you three of my next top stock picks that I see poised for the uh, profit potential here in the next couple of months. Uh, but as everybody has been talking about, there is risk in the market. And I think we're all aware of that uh, even in the past week or couple of weeks. But the thing is, is that you always want to understand what you're trading so that you can come back and play this business again tomorrow. And now basically the person that I learned all of my information from is this guy right here, Tom Busby. And uh, he's been in the market for you know over four decades, has a lot of experience and some systems that he has developed 
And that personal training that I received from Tom is really has what made a, a change for me. Because you know what? It hasn't always been easy for me. No, 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 no. I lost a lot of money, my husband and I, in the financial crises of 08. I mean, we're talking the kind, you know, that changes the standard of living. So I needed to find a way to make money in the market. So, for example, here's another stock that I just traded earlier in the year, and it's ticker symbol LRN. The company name is K12. I had a 110% gain just in that five months. Uh, I was actually in uh, our trade room, our DTI trade room, telling our subscribers about this stock right here in this area, and uh, it moved up that far. Now, what is this stock? It's actually the stock, it's the company that I used their curriculum to educate our four boys because, yep, I homeschooled four boys, uh, not that gray-haired guy there in the middle. Uh, though some would say that I had to school him quite a bit too. But basically, who am I? Well, I'm Celeste Lindman. I've been actively swing trading stocks and options and futures since 2008. I've been a portfolio manager and investor since 1992. I um, have an accounting degree and a finance degree from Indiana University. Not saying that that helped me tremendously in the markets. It's really what I learned from people like you've been listening to today and the great people at Metastock as well. I am a CPA. Um, I've been a financial auditor, tax accountant, stockbroker, serial entrepreneur, and uh, just, just have a great family. Love to spend time with them. So here's what I want you to get. And that is this step one to my three steps to that, that favorite trade setup that allows you to get those same kind of trades just like I showed you, okay? So step one is market direction, okay? So when the markets are moving up or down, uh, you might think of it as trend, uh, but market direction, what we're looking at, this is the key, this is different from anything that I had learned before, um, and we're doing it market direction from the opens. And I'll just start down here and say that you want that S&P and that equity instrument, whether it's Target, whatever, you want those trading in the same direction. You want them both moving up to increase your odds of trading. So we're following the S&P uh, primarily. We want to be in the same direction. And specifically, what I mean by that is, so on the daily, uh, from the open, we want that direction moving up. And from the weekly, from the week open, we want that direction moving up if we're going to take a trade to the upside. And on the month, we want that direction moving up. And you can look at the month, the quarter, the year. I'll, I'll kind of go into that here a little bit. As opposed to something that looks like this. When your day is going up or the week is trending to the side and the month is trending down, that is not a high probability time to trade. And just this information alone right here, this would have saved a lot of people a lot of headache over the last several weeks. Uh, what you learn to do inside those choppy kind of time frames is reduce your time frame so that you are looking at something where those three consecutive real tight time frames are trading in the same direction. And what that looks like um, on charts is basically here's a, uh, a picture of a daily kind of chart. You want that direction moving up. Here's a picture of a weekly chart. Basically, you can see that overall direction is moving up. You want that week moving up and you have the month. You want the month moving up. So that's kind of what that looks like. And uh, here's an example actually of McDonald's. At the time that I took this picture, um, uh, it was trading about $222. And the day open was 217, the week open was 220, the month open 221, year open 198. So you can see just by looking at those numbers that McDonald's was trading at that current price up. And that's the kind of scenario that you want. And this is kind of what it looks like on the chart. And you can see that maybe you don't exactly have that kind of information uh, when you're looking at a chart, but when you're paying attention to these week opens, month opens, day opens, you can see that that trend is up. That's step one of that market direction. So it's as easy as that. Are there any questions just on that part alone, Jeff? Okay, I'm gonna assume no there. So no problem, I will keep it going here. And so step two is uh, seasonal analysis. And I was so excited to hear Jake Bernstein talking about seasonal analysis. 
this is number two step. It's my favorite step. Uh, I don't find a lot of people talk about it, but it is so key. Totally agree with Jeff on that. So seasonal analysis, here are some places where you can get seasonal analysis. It's at equityclock.com. You know, this is a free place. But basically what you're looking at is the seasonality. You're looking for these reoccurring tendencies that produce these patterns. And so like right now you can see um, for this time frame, November, October, October, materials, industrials, uh, even consumer discretionary. But looking at those kind of key areas, um, you know, go take a look, see what uh, see what's trending uh, in the last in this past week. I think there's some really good opportunities there. Seasonal analysis. Here's another way to look at seasonal analysis. This is with Fidelity and uh, a free site here. You can get this information and they're breaking it down into the business cycle. So within the business economic cycle, looking at the, you know, uh, recession or out of a recession. So um, it, when you come into a recession, these types of, of uh, um, sectors uh, tend to perform this way seasonally. Okay, doesn't mean it's always going to happen, but seasonally this has this tendency. Uh, when we're early, just in the uh, movement of the cycle, we are, you know, looking at these types of sectors. Or if you're in the middle uh, of the cycle here and then late, just a really good kind of tool to look at these individual sectors to kind of find where the strength is. And so, uh, as I was mentioning, um, industrials, materials. Um, being uh, being strong this time of year and also if you think about the fact that you know if you consider the COVID to have been a recession I think from the textbook technicals you'd have to say that it was um, and so uh, here you've got two things lining up both in this uh, in this early time frame also uh, with um, uh, another seasonal indicator which mean, to me tells me that these will also be good. Another seasonal indicator that I use is this. Oh, did we have an election this week? <laughs> Presidential election cycle, okay? This is the election year. This is right where we are right now. This will be next year, the year after that, and then um, uh, the pre-election year, okay? So right now, this is the election year that we're in. And this you know, line, kind of where I am right now, um, is this fourth quarter and I, I'm pretty sure this is kind of the pattern that we're looking at. I know that's small, but you can go to the seasonalcharts.com uh, and look at this on a bigger screen and just kind of see how we have, even with the COVID times, kind of follow this pattern. And it's not so important to look at the, uh, the heights and the, the depths of the turns as much as it's important to look at the timing of the turn. So if you think about having that kind of September high here uh, in that third quarter, that like uh, S&P last time I looked had uh, popped above that, um, that's right exactly where we are fighting against right now. So uh, that kind of seasonal analysis, I love it. And um, another way to look at seasonal analysis is to look at the exact stock. stocks will have a seasonal analysis or a seasonal tendency. If you think about Hershey's, um, you know, Hershey's, you know, coming into Thanksgiving, chocolate, thinking of thank or Christmas, chocolate. Oh, then there's Valentine's Day, chocolate, and Easter, chocolate. So those kind of time frames will help uh, Hershey's to be more profitable, that kind of a seasonal analysis. And so here is Microsoft. Okay, I'm going to show you. You know, it, again, it's not the depth or you know the the the, ste uh, the how steep that downturn is as important as it is when that turn is on on any of these turns. So this is a seven year average. This is a twenty year average, and so you see it kind of moving here in this August time frame. Okay, August coming down and then September October pulling up. So if you don't believe that happens, let's go take a look. Here's Microsoft. Here's that same time period. Here's August and August pulling up. There we go. That's the kind of seasonal analysis. So uh, look, looking at it a different way, um, a couple of different ways that you can use that seasonal analysis for your trading. So we've gone through step one, which is that market direction, everything moving, the time frames moving in the same direction. And now step two, seasonal analysis. And um, I'll pause for just a second. See if uh, Jeff is online and has any questions. And if not, 
uh, we'll keep going. And uh, if you have some questions there at the end, that's fine too. So I'm great. here as long as I can find the mute button. I'm here. Okay. So we did have one question from Jurgen uh, saying, "How was the 2016 election?" Yeah, same thing. It's actually it was, it was very very it was very very similar. And again, it's not the importance of it's. And when you're looking at that kind of seasonal analysis on the on the presidential election, um, you're not looking at how far down it comes as much as you're looking at for when those turns happen. And you can also go back on the presidential election seasonal analysis. I think it's on that uh, seasonalcharts.com place too, where you can look at you know when um, uh, like when a Republican was elected, or when a Democrat was elected, or when a house you know the houses were divided. Uh, different ways to look at it uh, that gives you e that fine tunes it even more. But yes, even in 2016, it was it was very very similar. So, all right, one more. Uh, we did have a comment uh, from a Rod uh, out of our YouTube audience. He wanted to know if this was based on Stephen Bigelow's trading rules. No, it is not. Though it could be very similar, and I'm sure his is very good. Okay, those are the questions. All right, great. Thank you for that, Jeff. Thanks for helping me out. I really appreciate it. Sorry, hey. I'm kind of fumble, fumble hey. around here with it. I'm, I'm just glad I feel useful for this one. <laughs> You're good. You're very good. Okay. Uh, third step is trade management. Okay, so we've got step one, we've got the market direction. Step two, seasonal analysis. Uh, step three, trade management. And of course, you know, just like Jake had said earlier about seasonal analysis or any of these steps, it's important that you have them all, you know, the majority of them moving in your direction. Not one type of indicator stands alone. You're trying to get as many odds on your side by putting these types of uh, technical indicators on your side. So trade management. Okay, trade management is going to be all about getting into the trade. That's part one. We're going to talk about that. Uh, part two is going to be, you know, getting your targets and your uh, stop loss protection. And then uh, step three is going to be all about letting the market do the work and uh, letting it take you out based on your profit target or on your uh, profit loss stop. So this is another thing that's really key, this confirming the entry. This was very new to me, okay? I'd never learned this in all the types of things that I had done uh, prior to 2008. But really looking at that time, this is key, you got to write this down. Looking at that time between 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern time, whenever the cash market is opening in your time zone, that's what you want to look at that first half hour. And you're doing that because you want to gauge the market direction. So um, if you can kind of look down here, that 9 o'clock, 9.30 time frame, you want that moving up if you're looking for a long trade. That time frame, that half hour, needs to be going in the same direction that you're planning to trade, okay? And we're going to look at how important that is. But for example, okay, so above this range, you're going to go long, and below the range, you would go short if you were deciding to go on a short trade, okay? So here it is. This is it's shown in blue, this blue bar, okay? This is that 9.30 to 10 a.m. time frame, Eastern time, cash open. And what you're looking for is for it to trade up. It trades up, and then you go long because you chose to do that in that particular stock. Now, this is um, showing this, uh, this downtrend. Um, this is actually of the S&P future, so this is happening overnight. But I'll tell you what, this is one of my favorite setups on this time frame, on this confirming the entry time frame. I love seeing this turnaround because often it's very – has a very nice strong upturn. Okay, but this is what you're looking for to get it above that range in that morning hour on whatever stock. Like if you selected it at night, this is what you want to see in the morning. So um, we'll confirm the entry. Now this is an example of why this is so important. Okay, this is Carmax. Okay, this is a 30 minute chart of Carmax. The night before, when I was looking at the market, running my scans and so forth, I thought, oh, I want to, I want to trade Carmax. And it looks like a good stock. It can move the direction I want to. I want to go long. Here is that um, that bar, that 9.30 to 10 o'clock bar. Looks pretty strong, right? Looks really good. And some of you might say, oh, that's too strong. I can understand that too. But the point is, is that it's moving in my direction. And I can be feeling really good. Like, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and get into this stock. But look at what happened next. Okay. Here's what happened next. There's that bar. 
here's CarMax, boom. It really, you know, you, you, you would have to say, it really didn't go anywhere. It went, you know, it went down, slightly down compared to that open, okay? Wasn't, the timing was off. So here you have step one, you have step two, but you come to confirm the entry, mm -mm, it's a no-go. It's a no-go. And remember I said, oh, you always compare this to the S&P. Here's another reason. Here is the S&P right there at that same time, that blue bar representing that opening time, uh, that cash open, uh, 9.30 to 10 a.m. Eastern time open. And look what the S&P did after that. It had a significant you know, significant downturn. So um, that's what kept you on the sidelines. CarMax might have been a great stock and might have turned around, you know, the next couple of days, but today was not the day to enter unless you wanted to feel some pain. And I, don't, I to this day, still don't like to feel pain. You know, that's why I'm going to use these parameters to set my stops, but this is confirming the entry. So again, step one uh, of this confirming the entry part one is you're going to go long um above the range and if you're below the range you're looking to go short okay so that's part one um above if you're looking to go long you're, you're looking for that 9 30 to 10 a.m open uh to move up uh in that direction there okay now part two uh manage the trade uh is actually anticipating the price movement using the average true range and i heard kelly talking about the atr um a great type of indicator um, and he's talking about it, you know, measuring volatility. I just, I just pulled this um, definition off of Investopedia and uh, basically, you know, defining what the average true range is, typically over a 14-day moving average. Um, and it's just, it is, it's a very useful tool. Let me show you how I use that average true range. Okay. And so this is, this is part two of this managing the trade because you want to predict you want to predict where the price is going to move, but you also want to understand where you're going to place your protective stops. You always want to place protection. You're protecting your capital by putting in that stop there. So this is this is accomplishing both of those. And I'm sure you've seen some of the presenters, you know, uh, drawing the trend lines moving up. And so that's what these black lines are here. And so if I'm anticipating this happens to be McDonald's. Um, and I'm getting, you know, thinking to get in here on, this is a, a daily chart and I'm looking to get up, go long. This is actually a weekly ATR. Okay. So this is not a daily ATR. So for McDonald's, um, the expected move on the week is actually 15, $15. Okay. So it'd move from this point up here about $15, but it could also move down $15. And that's why you want to protect yourself. Okay. So if the target is actually for it to move up, um, that's where I'm heading. And uh, and this actually, you'll notice if you're looking at the numbers and adding them up, you're just like, hey, that doesn't exactly add up to 15. That's because on this particular setting, it's a proprietary look at where it could reasonably go based on this, based on the average true range. Okay. Now that's for the price target. And I'll pause here in just a second after I go over the stop loss in case anybody has any questions. Uh, but that's the profit target. Now, the very important uh, profit or the protective stop that you want to place on your trade. And again, this is still the McDonald's example. Um, and you're looking at a couple of different places where I personally would look to place this stop. Uh, one place is right below that area of, uh, of support um, as a good place. So I'm kind of going right in here in this area. You can kind of see that's also kind of on this particular shot. Uh, screenshot is is a you know also a, a major area as well so I think that's actually uh, one of my preferred placement of stop I also like the next area of support um, is it gives a little bit more cushion but you can see too right away when you're measuring profit target compared to your profit loss stop um, you know I always want to get in a trade where I'm going to make uh, more than I'm actually risking so on this example, McDonald's looking for it to go up, uh, up $10, uh, where I'm actually risking though uh, about $4, okay? I like that kind of trade. Even to come down here to this 213 level, um, I still have about a two to one profit to loss uh, ratio, and I like that as well. You could give yourself more cushion by coming back to another area of support or even all the way down to that average true range, but 
uh, experience is kind of if it's going to start hitting these areas, you know, it's it's kind of it just the trade just isn't going to work out. So that's uh, part one and part two of the uh, trade management. I'll pause here for just a second if there's any questions on that. There are two. Uh, and Pico wants to know: Do you use other confirmation signals besides the thirty-minute range breakout? Oh, do I ever use, use other confirmations? Um, you know, basically, I, I have already confirmed it by looking at the, in that case, um, the day uh, that it's moving up on the day, the week, the month, um, and the quarter, probably in that case. So I'm just looking at it. I'm not looking at an awful lot of squiggly lines, not looking at a lot of the moving averages, though I think that there are some very helpful ones. For this type of a trade, I'm looking for that simple, uh, movement above those opens. Uh, Andrew wants to know if you use percent for stops. Percent for stops? Um, oh, actually, I do. In some of my other styles of trading, I will use uh, uh, stops uh, like a 10%. Um, I'll often do that's just an easy, really quick gauge without paying much attention to what's going on in the market. But generally, uh, it, the, my best stops are the ones that I place. Okay. Great, thank you for that. I appreciate it again. Okay, so step three of the managing the trade is basically the exit. And so you're either going to exit at your target or your protective stop is gonna get hit, okay? So you're, you've already placed that, um, you know the direction you're going and you just let the market do the work. And that's what I do over and over again. This is still McDonald's, so here's an example, you know, going up there to that target and uh, here's you know this profit stop uh, loss that I would put in right here. Okay, and that's exactly what I did on JD. Um, had a great run on that from uh, back in the first quarter after COVID, using these exact parameters that I'm showing you and telling you about. Uh, gave me an eyeball into JD well before I started hearing others talk about JD. Found it on my own. Didn't need any help. You know, just did it on my own. JD, same thing with Zoom. Didn't need anybody telling me. I was able to find that and see it and trade it on my own, get in 204% still. Both of those are still really great stocks. So the real question is, and I'll pause again too, is uh, where do you find stocks to trade? And, um, and actually I probably can keep moving with this one because well, you already know, I mean, Metastock is a fantastic scanner. A lot of types of ways that you can scan with Metastock. Definitely want to point that out. But there's a couple other ways, too, that you can get stocks that you would consistently trade. You can look at the Dow 30, you can look at the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500. And, of course, I know what you're thinking. You know, that's a lot of stocks to filter when you're talking about the Dow uh, 30, 500, 100 um, uh, NASDAQ. Uh, but the nice thing about those, if you're constantly looking at those, even if you're scanning them, and this is very important, is you, they're large caps generally, um, or at least they're strong mid caps. Um, they have plenty of volume. There's lots of options trading with tight spreads, and there's just a good opportunity in those solid types of stocks. So I always think that's a fantastic way to uh, scan for stocks. Um, another thing that you can do to keep a short list is look at about 20 stocks that you like and just you know trade them over and over again. Uh, you can also do that with the sectors. You know um, this is uh, uh, the Dow uh, separated by the sectors. So you can look at the financial sector, the uh, uh, information technology, energy, consumer staples, whatever you want to look at. Keeping that number to a short list and uh, kind of here's another example of this with Fidelity. Um, you can go, you can see how the sectors are performing. Uh, FinViz is a great place. I know I'm going a little bit fast, but you can listen to the recording if you need to. A uh, free place to get uh, some uh, trade ideas as well. Um, but I do prefer a seasonal scanner, and I'm going to show it to you here in just a second. Uh, but it's the same scanner that I use to generate like 11% in synopsis. And so I'll pause real quick. Are there any questions for me? Matt? Uh, not uh, let's see. Do you okay? Yeah, we we do have a question from Paul. Do you trail uh, your stop after some profit, and how do you adjust it as you go? If this I, is what you do. Yes, I I generally do like to have kind of a loose trailing stop. Maybe not a tight trailing stop, but I do use trailing stops. That's a great question. 
Okay, it looks like you're all caught up. Okay, great. So I use that seasonal type of the scanner to find the trades like synopsis. And I also did it here in TJ Maxx. Okay, and here's here's the before and after of TJ Maxx. Okay, here's what it looked like before I got in. Now, seriously, did, would anybody want to jump in TJ Maxx right here? I mean, ordinarily, I I wouldn't. I mean, but based on the looks of that, that's a daily. But the seasonal scanner that I used flashed it. And I'm like, hey, I'm gonna look at this. And I did, I traded it, it was awesome. And this is how it traded right up. See that, that double top M, you know, that double top, boom, and then boom. Okay, that's exactly what I did. I can't say it's because I'm all that smart because I really am not. I need something to show me the way because this is the picture of the S&P at that exact same time. Okay, here's that M, that same M that you saw in, in uh, TJ Maxx. But look here, it did trade up. The S&P did trade up. The uh, TJ Maxx traded up. But look what happened to the S&P at the exact same time, okay? So while TJ Maxx moved up 12%, the S&P moved up a whopping 2%, okay? And I say let that sink in, okay? That's key to those three steps using that over and over again. And that's it. That's how I did it. Um, there's It's so much more than just following a trend uh, where I feel left out, like, I mean, how are some of you guys feeling after the election or whatever that was on Tuesday night, um, you know, in the market moving, I mean, are you feeling like you missed out? Well, say goodbye to that, you know, so you don't have to worry about following the trend, you know, but here's my deals. I learned this 20 years too late, okay? But you're here now and you can do it now. So don't fall prey to gimmicks or new ideas. Stick with the process that works. And uh, that's it. That's my favorite trade setup. And all I do is I follow a simple method. And it's just like Hugh. Um, Hugh is one of our students. He believes that the methods worked. He followed the rules. He turned his small account from 2000 into 27000 in just a few short months. And it's right here. This is a picture of his of his uh, account. And that's a multiple of 13.5. I didn't even know how many zeros to add to make that a percent. He multiplied that $2,000 by 13.5 to get 27,000 in just a few short months. Now past results are not indicative of future results because guess what, this isn't a game. This is a business. We follow rules, we follow a process, and we use an incredible tool to do that. And that's my secret, is that I use a very powerful tool and it's called the roadmap software and this was created by Tom Busby and Jeff Smith I introduced you to Tom earlier but it's really cool because look here it gives you market direction so everything about the month open the week open year opens getting that simple market direction remember that looks like this it's all easy for me to see in this software and it does this for day trading swing trading and longer term investing because i'm all three i day trade i swing trade i'm a long-term investor um, and it does this for all of them on those different time frames so i look to go you know up you know with those directions going up and another key and feature that i like looking at that makes it very easy this is actually home depot okay home depot uh, shows me all instantly how far above it is the, from the year, the month, the, the last several days over the week, uh, how it is for the day at the time that I took this picture, where it is. This RB is standing for that blue bar. It's that blue bar entry. So look, I could say, hey, um, Home Depot, which by the way, I'm just going to tell you, is a stock I'm going to give you at the end. Okay, it's one of one of the several stocks. And actually, I don't have three. I have five. <laughs> Okay, I have five stocks three at the end, um, but this is one of them. And so on this particular day, this would not have been a good day to get into Home Depot unless I wanted to suffer some pain. Um, everything was pulling back on that particular day. So I used that, you know, to, to get me in at the right time, to time the market. Here's another picture of seasonal analysis. This is still Home Depot. Uh, if, I put, if I push this little button here, this DTIC button, um, this gives me the seasonality based on the months. Okay, so for the months, I can see that Home Depot on average over the past 20 years, I can change it to whatever I want, but over the past 20 years, it has this type of trending. And so October, uh, we just finished in October, it tends to pull back. But look at November, uh, positive 4.2%, December 1.57, January 2.2, February, March, April, really phenomenal returns, okay? So keep your eye on that. 
uh, because here it is, here that same picture that we just looked at, and here at the time I took this picture, look at that blue bar entry going boom, boom, boom up, okay? Now this scanner, I'm starting to tell you about, um, that's inside this roadmap software, here's where we look brilliant, okay? We look really smart, but trust me, I'm really not. Uh, at all, a hundred percent win rate. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. That's really key, right there. Hundred percent win rate on trading uh, from these dates. Uh, holding Home Depot right there for thirty days, twenty days, thirty days, and uh, earning these types of percentages there on those. Okay, so that's what begins to give you confidence. You know, but there's a little bit more here. So um, here is uh, on a twenty day. Uh, uh, 30 days actually 30 days you could hold Home Depot a hundred percent hundred percent hundred percent and earn these average uh, P&Ls over uh, over 20 day or over 30 days excuse me and then here's the one um, this is the 10 days over 10 days uh, when you could hold Home Depot uh, and get a hundred percent and then over here uh, 20 days a hundred percent and so you can use that timing those dates to help you determine when you want to enter the market based on what the rest of the overall S&P and so forth is doing. And uh, so that's all part of that roadmap software. It also has this trade management. Remember we talked about you know, this, this blue bar entry, this, this uh, early morning right when the cash opens, watching it for that range and, and moving into uh, a, a momentum type of area. Um, it's got part two and three right there built in because you've got these, uh, you know, these buy zones. I'll just show you here. This is Home Depot. You can see my red little dot. You can see that bar, blue bar, we moved into what's actually this buy zone. Okay, so we saw automatically right there, there was strength. We could compare that to the S&P. Is the S&P doing likewise? And then it traded, it continued to trade on up. But right when it entered that, entered that buy area, that told me that there was momentum in Home Depot on that day. And my target just for that morning session is right here at, uh, at that 219 area. Well, on that day, it went well beyond. Why? Maybe because of the seasonals. You know, um, it's, it's moving um, in the right direction. So, um, and then I also can set my stop losses right here. I like to put it right here on this sell zone, uh, especially right when I get into the trade. This is in the morning. Uh, I get into the trade and uh, I, I can set my initial stop loss right here. That's just, that's just about a dollar from where I got in. But we've already established that our target is $10 above, but I can even set it right there at a dollar. I've reduced my risk even more just based on this proprietary setting on this ATR, average true range, okay? You can see that average true range there is $4. That's because this is a daily ATR. This is not a weekly ATR, this is a daily ATR. So uh, software has all of that uh, in there for that trade management, uh, for day trades, swing trades, investing. Um, and so it's the exact same thing. That's uh, the roadmap software is what I use for synopsis. Same thing with XLU. Um, another good opportunity coming up here with XLU and the markets. Same thing with Tilray. Okay, let me show you this because this view of this roadmap software shows you multiple markets all in one place. So you can look at all these different stocks, whatever you put in there. And the reason Tilray is up at the top is because there's a setting on this that I can make so I can find the strongest stocks. Tilray that day was the strongest of all of them, okay? And, uh, you know, whether you're day trading, swing trader, or investing, or whatever sector you're looking at, you know, you can find that strong horse. And look, I mean, wouldn't you like to be in a trade in the morning that went from $27 on a stock, a $27 stock, all the way up to $30? That's how you can find it. And, you know, you can see Caterpillar on there, uh, you know, uh, General Foods, uh, you know, all these ones that you, you're familiar with looking at, and uh, whether you're trading options or stocks uh, or what. And so, um, and Hugh, our student, is actually able to do the exact same thing, okay? Small account profits in one day using this roadmap software, the way that I'm showing you how to do it. And so, um, here is the uh, seasonal report. And um, I probably should pause for just a second because I get to go in. Uh, but this is the seasonal um, analysis scanner. You are you just basically put in your parameters. This one says, "Hey, I want to look at 
forming the same way over the past 10 years. Um, or, and I usually choose eight years because there are days where you have holidays, you know, like the market is, is not always open. It's, you know, if tomorrow is the seventh, well, that's a Saturday. So at least eight times in the past 10 years, it probably didn't trade, or at least two times in the past couple of years, it probably didn't trade. Uh, on that seventh, right? So you adjust it that way, um, put your parameters. I like to have a volume of at least 200,000, 500,000 I think is even better. And I just run that scan, okay? And I'll just go over here to this next one. And that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did to anticipate this move in TJ Maxx, okay? Exactly, those three steps, market direction, uh, seasonal analysis, uh, trade management, and that's what gave me the confidence to get in. So I'll pause for a second, uh, Jeff, if there are any questions. There are. There are, as a matter of fact. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Celeste, what does your analysis say of TSLA? TSLA, well, you know, I would, I would have to fumble around and get off of this screen share and go look at it. Uh, but uh, so I can't do that. So I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, but if I could get to my software uh, during this presentation, I would be glad to do that. And so I'm sorry I cannot. All right, uh, no problem. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, can you use it with E Mini Futures? I'm sorry, what was the question? Can you use it with E Mini Futures? Oh, let me tell you. That's how I learned to trade E Mini Futures. Can you use this with futures? It's, in my opinion, golden. This is phenomenal. Uh, that's what I love about this software. You see the 24-hour market. So, you know, what's going on in China? You can look and see how the Asian markets are trading, how uh, the German DAX is trading. You can trade the German DAX. You can uh, trade the S&P futures. It is, it's beautiful for the S&P futures, the NASDAQ futures, the Dow futures, gold futures, uh, crude oil, uh, bonds, uh, you name it. It's a very, uh, that's, this, is, this is what transformed the way that I looked at the market by taking that 24-hour look. Uh, Sammy wants to know if there are seasonal changes that occur with Forex. I, I do not know the answer to that question, to put it simply. I'm not a Forex trader. I'll trade currency ETFs, but uh, I do not trade Forex. Sorry about that. Great answer. That's the answer we want. All right, that's all the questions. Okay, great. All right, so that's how I used it for to trade the TJ Maxx, and here's what it looked like again. Uh, there it is, uh, TJ Maxx, and uh, here's that time frame. Remember, kind of that August time frame, 100, 100. Uh, so I just, I just used that trade setup. I used the scanner, and I used the method, and it was, too, it was that simple. It was that simple. So um, you know, and here are other trades. You know, this is uh, you can see Microsoft and Visa, Microsoft, Apple, Emerson. I mean, it's just genius. And, uh, you know, the different times, the different percentage win rates, um, it's just it's just phenomenal. And, um, you know, Home Depot, remember we were talking about that. Here's, look at all these, uh, 100, 100, 100. Um, this is Home Depot here, but look at all these others here. So you can just, you can sort through that. Uh, so a lot of stocks. And of course, there's no guarantee that this, you know, this time I'll have the same results. And that, again, it's just like, like Jake said, I appreciate it. That's why we have these steps. We have the market direction. We have the trade management. So you don't just go in blindly into these things. And then, uh, you know, there's other features that are on this roadmap software that I absolutely love. Don't have time to go into those. Uh, but this data miner, that's what we saw with Microsoft. And I show you how it just it paired right there with it. And if you want to test, like, oh, how is it going to say Microsoft, for example, what's Microsoft going to do in the next couple months? We'll go back, look at the a chart of Microsoft, compare it to this, and see if Microsoft is, is tending to trade in the same direction uh, of the seasonal. If it's not, then throw that seasonal indicator out for Microsoft. Go on to something else. There's plenty more. Look at Apple. Uh, look at Caterpillar. Uh, whatever. Look at an ETF. Uh, you can use these these tools for all of those types of things. Of course, there's price alerts. There's uh, just a pops and drops is uh, tells you uh, what the options volume is. You know, uh, some unusual volume activity in options. A great tool to pinpoint. Like, hey, a lot of traders think Apple's going to fall or it's going to go up or whatever stock. It will populate the ones that have the most unusual volume, very helpful. It's very helpful for um, weekly options. Uh, it's got great fundamentals built in there as well. And uh, basically, what I, whatever I'm trying to trade, long-term, short-term, medium-term, um, just roadmap software, I would not 
trade without it. And here's the thing, people say to us all the time, if only I could see the market the way you do. And it's, folks, it's, it's the roadmap. Um, it's easy to learn, it's perfect for beginners, it's really great for anybody, um, any account size. And what I love is that Roadmap automatically adapts to the market conditions so that you can find opportunities regardless of what's happening in the markets. And here's the best part. DTI built a complete program around the Roadmap so the team can really kind of hold your hand and show you how to take advantage of it. And it's called the Roadmap Trader Package, okay? First, you get the complete Roadmap software. So it allows you to see the market exactly the way we do, every kind of market, every kind of trading. And inside there, you get that Roadmap Trader course. Um, you're gonna see the market the way we do. You're gonna master these powerful tools in 30 days or less so that you can begin mastering the setups just like we do. And applies again to stocks, options, futures, day trading, swing trading, and investing. You also get this uh, four pattern, 67% accurate model. You remember, uh, module, excuse me. You remember I said, oh, that's my favorite trade setup um, where the market was coming down. I love that before I go long uh, on the cash open. Um, it teaches you those patterns patterns inside of here, the four patterns, just by following those patterns alone, no other rules, no other rules, forget step one, two, three, whatever, just follow those patterns, it's 67% accurate, just by following that pattern, that's it. So you add those rules, those steps, wow, that makes a tremendous difference, I know I'm living it. Uh, trade management course you also get, uh, it's just, it's arguably the most important piece of the roadmap software because you got to manage risk. You got to you gotta know how to place trades. Uh, you got to know uh, how you can just put them on autopilot, let the market do the work. So you learn to enter, to exit, trade, uh, set the price target. You basically are learning how to make money. Um, you also get this rapid results quick start guide. Uh, so it's your first go-to. It's going to be how you're going to get set up quickly, start finding opportunities immediately, just a general overview, quick start guide. This is really cool too. You get access to the DTI training suite. And so you get to learn, you know, so those of you who don't know about futures, you can learn about futures. You don't know about options. You can learn about options um, in a different uh, different these different styles of trading this focus on more of a tape reading um, and a quick look as opposed to looking at you know multiple multiple charts being able to fine-tune this is the support team that's led by Jonathan Rowe but you get all of these guys they're all gonna help you get your roadmap set up so that you can be taking advantage of the opportunities and here it is um, the complete roadmap trader package you get all of these products you know the trade management the 67 percent accurate uh, module, the, the Roadmap Trader course, you get access to our online members area, all kinds of resources there, and you get that quick, rapid results, quick start guide, along with the complete software, the complete software, we don't hold anything back, you get, you get all of it. Every single component, it's very, very powerful. Let me tell you, I probably use about 20% of it over and over I just it's it's easy for me I love it uh, it's truly is worth a fortune to me it's what made a difference for me in my trading from 2008 to 2009 or to, to this date 2020 um, so again that complete DTI roadmap trader package includes the roadmap software the roadmap trader course the four patterns the trade management course the rapid results quick start guide all access to the DTI training suite, members area, and full technical support. That's amazing. Now, the cost of this is just $4.97. Um, way back when, when I purchased it, it was it was $29.97. It was uh, in 2008. Uh, this is what I paid for it. Um, and you know, of course, a lot of changes come uh, around now. We have better technology, so the roadmap software is actually way better than what I had uh, back in 2008. Uh, but for 497, you get all of that, all of that, and you can get instant access just by uh, getting onto this link here at uh, dtitrader.com/westmark and uh, go there, and you can get set up on this uh, annual subscription of the roadmap software. Um, you'll land on a page like this, and you just go and you check right there the roadmap trader package for that $4.97, uh, and you can get all of those things there. Now, there is an uh, option two. Uh, for option two, it's $9.97. You get two full years of the roadmap software. So that's basically two years um, of the software plus 
you get the live trade room. And this is what kind of, this is key. You know, remember when I said about that K-12 stock, and I was saying, hey, guys, this is a great stock you got to look at. Uh, I think it's got a lot of potential. It's, you know, at home learning. What are we going to be doing? We're going to be at home learning. And what did the stock do? It soared. So that was inside that live trade room where we talked about that. And uh, so you get all of that package set up for that. And I'll pause for just a second. Jeff, are there any questions? Does it work on a Mac? Does it work on a Mac? That's a good question. I know a lot of people ask that question. I believe that it does. Uh, up just, just a couple of years ago, was it, were they able to get it working on a Mac? But I can't say for 100% certainty. So I would recommend going to the dtitrader.com website and contacting them that way or calling them. The number is there. Pick up the phone, call them. They will answer the phone and take your call. Uh, but I believe the answer is yes. But uh, don't quote me on that. So give them a call. That looks all the, like all the questions, Celeste. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, so this no this 24-hour trade room, and it is. It's basically 24 hours open Sunday night when the futures market opens, and it closes. Uh, at the market close on Friday afternoon when the futures market closes. So you get access to all of these types of moderators. They come in and out of the room at various times. Um, here are some of the types of trades that you'll see even mm -hmm. in that trade room. Uh, you can just see the different percentages on stocks and options and futures. They're trading that as well. Uh, it's 24 hours. Again, I've mentioned that. Here's what some of the people say. You know, oh, you know, I've been scared to death watching you stay so calm. It's really helpful. Um, you know, just having your presence in the room is just very calming. And uh, especially in times like these, it's very, very helpful to have that information in the trade room. And here's the kind of things that we do together. Um, find and execute orders, analyze global and economic news. Yeah, like the Fed day, you know, coming out. We always, we trade around the Fed day. We trade around the, the payrolls, the economic news coming out. Uh, it's very well moderated. Um, some key guys in there with a lot of experience um, in options and, and interest rates markets and uh, uh, just the overall global markets. Finding opportunities in stocks, futures, and options, organizing the data. Uh, we just really hold your hand and share our top ideas, and that comes from Tom Busby. Um, the three main sessions in that trade room, if you go to that package two, um, is zone one, zone two, zone three. So that zone one, that's that time frame I was telling you, hey, you want to look at for my trade setup, the swing trade, um, how you can get in between, this is central time, saying that central time, so that's at eight, that 9.30 to 10 a.m. Eastern time, 8.30 to 9 a.m. Uh, central time, but that kind of trade zone, they're helping you get on the right side of the market. So they're following the patterns, uh, they're following what the S&P is doing, what your stock is doing, what the futures are doing, and helping you get on the right side of that market. There's also another trade zone, trade zone two. It happens right after the lunch hour. Same kind of things. Uh, are we going up or are we going down from that time frame? What does this mean for the market for the rest of the day? What is it going to mean for China opening up? What's it going to mean for Germany opening up? And then what's it going to mean for us and our cash open again the next day? And that's all talked about too at the trade zone, uh, trade zone three. Um, you get the pre-market trading opportunities, night out, planning session. This is really good. This is uh, done by Chuck Crow. Um, so he talks, so then, by then you've seen China open, and he'll have the live market open right there. You can see what's going on with Asia and how that's uh, trading against our U.S. day, what the anticipation is for Europe, what the anticipation is for the market open. And um, he's going to give you a lot of some great tools right there. Uh, 9 p.m. Central Time, a fantastic session. Um, DTI's commitment to you, you know, we've been in this game of trading for a long time and Tom says I've made, lost and made fortunes again. We are in this together and our team won't ever leave you behind. It's phenomenal uh, company, phenomenal people uh, that I get to work with, love it. Um, now this mark to market, this I didn't talk about, but this is on the software as well. This is basically on these, you know, like here's Home Depot. And Home Depot would have been the strongest that day because I follow the strongest horses. And, uh, you know, you see Microsoft, a lot of, you know, keep the, uh, the QQQ, the NASDAQ ETF, uh, just uh, Costco, Amazon, Lowe's, Synopsis, looky there. Um, Home, Home Depot was the top that day. 
And uh, uh, but just by following, you know, those four patterns I was telling you about, just by following that, if you had traded every single one of those stocks, uh, the green and the red is the money that you would make that day, just that day on the, those positions, trading 100 stocks, now 100 shares. Now I know you can trade options, you can trade fewer shares, all that, you can trade more shares, but just based on those four patterns, that's the type of income potential we're talking about right there, just on those, okay? So we have a guarantee, it's a no-nonsense guarantee. If you can find any method that is more effective for uh, finding consistently profitable opportunities than the roadmap trader package, then we're gonna give you your money back. Just hands down, we're going to give you your money back. You can find it. Actually, we want to know about it. <laughs> um, but if you can, you get your money back. So um, guaranteed on that. And, uh, you know, the future is not. It's just uncertain, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot of unknowns out there right now. And um, there's uh, a market doing a variety of things as a result. And um, uh, it, you just never know what's going to happen, do you? I didn't know in 2008 that I was going to lose all that money. Uh, but one thing is for sure is that, you know, it's your money and you want to grow it. You don't want to blow it. And uh, that's why we have this, uh, this package that we're offering to you, uh, 497 for one year subscription to the roadmap software, a two year subscription with the DTI trader room for 997. And you can call, here's that number, write that number down, 904-416-1776. Give them a call, ask the question, ask any question that you didn't get answered today, ask them. Um, go to the website, uh, look at uh, the things there, uh, dtitrader.com slash Westmark to get in on this special deal here for the roadmap software. Okay, so make sure you get that. And um, next, get that down. Next are my five stocks. Okay, here they are. There's Home Depot, and I'm not giving you three, I'm giving you five. This is poised for profits in November, December, just choosing the method that I just showed you. United Healthcare, um, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Deer, and NVIDIA look to be some strong ones. Now, you are not going to go in and trade those blindly. You're going to use the steps that I just laid out for you, the market direction, uh, the seasonality, um, and the um, trade management. So uh, with that, I'm going to give it back here to this opportunity that we have for you. Um, with these two packages because here's the deal, you know, we've got it. We know how to do it We know how to pull money out of the markets at uh, with using this process Using this method and we're just trying to pass it on to you and help you out uh, on your journey of being on the right side of the market and that DTI trader package is Really the best way that we know how to do that. So you've got option one four ninety seven option two uh, 997 uh, give us a call right here at 904-416-1776 and uh, or go to dtitrader.com slash Westmark and uh, we hope to uh, be seeing you. So thanks so much again, Jeff, for letting me be on here with you guys. It's been fantastic. All of you guys are great. All the uh, presenters have had tremendous uh, information and content to share. So thank you to everyone uh, and have a great weekend with that. Any questions? All right. Thank you, Celeste. Thank you. All right. Um, <laughs> there we go. Let me go ahead and uh, do appreciate you coming in here. I uh, appreciate your time. And uh, we hope to see you again soon. Thanks. All right. Price time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, oh, I had uh, selected somebody here um, for the next price. The next price is going to include actually a three-month subscription to Metastock. Uh, you can give a uh, basically and a, an add-on that we call the Rob Hoffman Pro Trader Pack Elite. So this uh, this price was in conjunction with uh, with them, and it's going to be awarded to Ahmed I in Egypt. So Ahmed, uh, keep keeping. Keep an eye on your email. We're going to go ahead and I'll send you a message about how to kind of claim your prize. Uh, basically, we're going to give you three months of Metastock Zenith, which is our real-time data feed uh, powered by Refinitiv. Refinitiv is a Thomson Reuters. Uh, well, Refinitiv is used to be what called was used to be Thomson Reuters. Uh, it's a billion-dollar data feed product. It offers news from 2,000 journalists uh, in 200 different news bureaus. Um, one of the best news services available. 
a truly institutional strength product. So we're going to give you that. In addition to that, we're going to give you a program you might have heard about today. It's called the Metastock program. So been rated uh, only 25 years in a row as the best software program in its prize category. We're going to give you three months of that as well. And we're going to give you three months of Rob, Rob Hoffman Pro Trader Pack Elite. And uh, with that, that's going to actually include a, a very, very popular add-on with all of his methodologies. He's an award-winning trader. It's a very, very good add-on. He's going to be here tomorrow speaking. And um, so in any case, I'll drop you an email with that. For those of you that are watching, uh, thank you for coming today. If you do want to take advantage of that free trial, or I'm sorry, that extended trial where you buy a month of Metastock and get three for the price of one, uh, go to metastock.com slash conf promo. You can also give us a call at 800-882-3040 or visit us online at metastock.com slash sales chat. So there we go. Uh, we will talk a little bit uh, more about kind of like our premium classes that we're doing on Sunday. I'll do that after Ed down. So let's go ahead and kind of have Ed come in here. We'll talk a little bit about Ed. Ed is somebody that we've worked with for a number of years. Um, uh, actually, when I started, so this is 20 plus years ago, um, at, we actually sold some ad, uh, some systems and tools as part of our Metastock package that he had designed. And uh, we also sold a, a package called OmniTrader that he creates as well. Um, a few years ago, maybe like four or five, it's funny how time flies, um, he contacted me and he said, I wanted to kind of take some of the AI stuff that we're working on, some of the artificial intelligence stuff that we've been working on for the last decade or two, put it into Metastock. We did that last year. It's very, very cool technology. Ed is a smart guy. He's based down in Salt Lake. <laughs> I'm oh, in Salt Lake. He's down in Texas. <laughs> hey, congratulations on your new location. Oh, uh, it's great up here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in any case, um, <laughs> what part of Texas are you in again? Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, Austin. Austin. <laughs> Salt Lake City. <laughs> but those are just kind of the mistakes when you stay up all night watching to see who might be I, I in charge of the free world. I don't know how you're doing it, but you're doing great. <laughs> right, here we go. This is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and send the presentation to you. All righty. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, all right, I can see it. You're going to talk to us about relative strength today. I am. <clears throat> got a couple of things for, for folks out there today that I hope they can take advantage of. And I uh, really appreciate your uh, great introduction to me. And just to reiterate, we have known each other for all that time, going back to the early days of Metastock when uh, Steve Akalis founded it. Actually, we did utilities for Metastock and have been working with these great guys for a very, very long time. Guys and gals, I should say. Uh, and uh, so I was really happy to hook up back up with them and provide these products for Metastock. So uh, thanks, Jeff, for all your help. And doing all this stuff it's, it's been a lot of fun so you yeah bet. so it's huh it's all yours ed no, no i'm sorry i didn't want to cut you off no i so, said it's all yours okay okay uh so today I, I was thinking about you know this is a great event that they're holding with all these presenters and speakers and i was thinking what can i add that's maybe a little different uh something that i've used that is uh, a really powerful technique and so what i want to do today is talk about <clears throat> relative strength and and how you can use it uh, with certain indicators that I've developed. One second. <clears throat> Sorry, Austin allergies are getting me again. And so I want to show that to you and, and set it up for you so you can actually get it and use it. And then toward the middle of the presentation, I'll talk about our artificial intelligence uh, because some of you may have not heard about it, what it does, and it has a big applicability, not just for this, but for pretty much any indicator that you have in Metastock. It's designed to use AI to find special relationships and actually to build trading systems with pretty much anything. So that'll be kind of on the tail end, but at the start, I want to really get into relative strength and, like I say, give you something that I think you, you can use for your trading uh, right off the bat. So let's go ahead and dive in here. And the first thing is, oops, hold on a second, too far, is that because I am going to be showing an indicator, which is called the Fulgent RS or Fulgent Relative Strength Indicator, uh, there's a download for it. You can just get it. It has um, the all the assets, indicator, expert, template, and all that stuff so that you can play with it uh, there on, on your Metastock. So that's where it is, fulgen.ai forward slash Metastock. <clears throat> it is the third thing in the list on the right there. And there's some other things we have from other presentations, chart patterns, and of course, uh, Fulgen AI and, and what that is. But today we're going to be talking about relative strength. So that's what you want to 
look at, and we've got, got it there for you. So let's <clears throat> start by talking about, I've got this problem. Give me a second, Jeff. Hold on just a second. Ah, I think I killed it. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, we talk about relative strength. There's a lot of uh, things kind of related to relative strength. Um, you know, you've heard about uh, the relative strength index, which was uh, developed by Wells Wilder a long time ago. And that is a way of looking at the relative price movement within a chart. The RSI indicator is very popular, but it has nothing to do with looking at another chart. It's just in that chart. So, this definition of relative strength is looking at another chart and stock movement related to that chart, which is almost always going to be a market of some kind, either the, the Dow or the S&P or the, you know, the, the NASDAQ. And so what you want to know is, is, is the stock gaining strength against that index? Because we know the indexes are really what float all boats in the market. Pretty much everything moves with the index. But every day you've got stocks that are beating it by quite a lot that means they're being accumulated and so you kind of want to know when that's happening and and find those out there to trade because they're great opportunities uh so in this picture here you can see uh two charts the, the top one is of apple and on the left here there's something very interesting happened in the pandemic uh the market dropped like crazy of course but Apple actually didn't drop as fast as the market. So its relative strength to the market was pretty high, even though, you know, they're both going down. Apple did not go down nearly as fast as the market. So that's something where you can get a, a clue as to, you know, what's going to bounce back pretty hard after, after the bottom happens. So that's one use for it. But generally speaking, you're looking at the right example where, you know, Apple gaps up. It's really taken off compared to the index. And I have a chart of the SPY ETF, which of course is designed to reflect the S&P 500. So you're just kind of looking for those relationships. And actually Metastock has some good indicators for, for classic relative strength. Uh, I could put a couple of them on here just to, to talk about it for a second. And this is the way that, that relative strength is, is basically, you know, used by most people. Uh, so I'm going to go, actually, what I need to do is do my little pain thing here, but I'll, I'll put it on first, then I'll do it. Okay, so let's see. Let me go ahead and get another inner window, new, and flip them around. Yeah, the software's so great. Okay, there we go. And go ahead and grab it, pull it down here. So this is, let me see, is that still Apple? It should be, yes. Okay, so this is Apple, and this is the relative uh, performance of Apple to the market. And so this is usually going to be price-based. Uh, so differences in price, and there, there's another one in there called a, a relative strength, uh, comparative relative strength, which is similar to this. I could plot that one as well. Uh, but but they're generally, you know, kind of smooth indicators that, that sort of show basically how the stock is performing uh, versus the market. And, and it is it is useful information because you can see the uptrend here in this, uh, in this chart and the sort of uptrend here, which says the stock is gaining against the market. And so it, it's a great indicator. The other one's also good. What, what we're going to look at is a way to use relative strength to actually get a signal because it really is good for that. And, and that's kind of what I want to get into here. So let's go ahead and look, go back to the PowerPoint. And I can show you what I'm sort of talking about. Uh, the way that I'm going to drive this signal is by measuring relative strength a different way. And the way we're gonna do it is with the linear regression slope indicator. Because what I have found is that if you look at the slope of the stock chart versus the market over say 14 periods, that you can, you can tell instantaneously what's happening with that stock relative to the market. It actually forms a, the perfect thing, the perfect indicator uh, for trading because it, it is an oscillator. Uh, any stock will go up and down relative to the market over time. Sometimes they'll just take off and beat the heck out of the market for weeks and weeks and weeks. That normally doesn't happen because you do have reversions. You have, you know, places where folks will sell a stock that's overheated. You know, it's really beaten the market a lot and then they'll sell it off, take profits and that kind of thing. So what you end up with is something like this. This down here is this uh, uh, Fulgent Relative Strength Indicator uh, that you can you'll download it off the, the site that I gave you. And I'll, sh I'll show the link again in a little bit in case you didn't get it. But it looks like this, and it is the, the difference in slopes between the market and the stock. 
but it's normalized. You have to normalize it because there are different units. Uh, you know, the, the S&P is whatever it is, pretty big number price-wise, so uh, SPY. So any stock, a $10 stock or something, you can't just look at the slope of price. You have to normalize it. And so the indicator does that. So we, what we get is a very nice back and forth uh, indicator that says, okay, the, the angle between the stock and the market, let's say right in here, is decreasing pretty rapidly and right there it turns around. So right there it's being accumulated. So if you're trading something like this and you wait for those points before you trade, that's great because that that is where it's turning. That's where the angle is going from a negative value to a positive value. So it's a fantastic indicator. And of course what everybody wants to do is say, well, let's, let's make a, a trading strategy out of it. <laughs> so uh, we'll go ahead and look at that next year. Uh, yeah, so, but one thing before I show you that, um, in, in this, as I said before, on the other chart, in this zone, Apple is is has a very high relative strength, but it's going down. Okay, so if we're going to trade off this as an indicator, we need something to tell us that we don't want to be buying Apple yet because you know it, it's not ready. And so all you really need is a good basic trend following indicator. So this next slide, you're going to see the template that I created for the Fulgent Relative Strength uh, Expert that combines both signals from these and a good trend following method on the stock. And there it is. So it's just a 20 period EMA, very simple tool. Uh, this is one of the best discoveries in trading that I've ever seen. You find stocks will touch the 20 period EMA and bounce off it over and over and over again. They might poke through it a little bit. You may wait just about another bar or two because usually they'll revert back out of it. But if if you're only trading, you know when when that when you're when you only take these signals when you're above that moving average, that's a great thing to do. When you're below it, I'm not going to take a buy signal right there because I'm below the moving average. I'm fall, I'm dropping. So very very simple, easy to easy to trade, easy to look at charts. And if we go one more slide here, you can see then here is the expert with those buy signals matching the turns down here, but with the condition that. Uh, the price of stock has to be above the uh, the uh, 20 period exponential moving average. Let's go ahead and go to Metastock here and just check this out. So expert advisor, I'm going to attach, if my, if my hand is steady enough, uh, attach, I'm going to go to Fulgent, and this is what you'll see if you download uh, that little package. It's an FO setup that will just install these things for you, and there's no passwords or anything. It just does it. So here's the Fulgent relative strength expert. And there it is. Um, I could also, let me go ahead and put the template on here. Uh, apply a template, yes. And I want the Fulgent, uh, there we go, RS. Fulgent, they're all named Fulgent RS. The expert, the, the indicator, uh, all of it. So there you go. And now you can see that this, these are happening where these turns occur. So there you go. Let's go look at a couple of stocks here. Just kind of check them out. So if if you're if you look for this signal in the market, you'll find you know places where, in this case, in this stock, uh, it was actually dropping faster than the market. So <laughs> the relative uh, strength angle going down is indicative of that. You got a nice sell signal there. Nice sell signals here. Nice buy signals all the way up this thing. And I'm suggesting you could put your stop at the 20 period moving average. You know, or make sure it, you know, it goes through it a little bit because, like I say, there's so many reversions that touch it that go back up. So uh, it's just a great way to to find really good signals, and you also kind of want to make sure that the stock is more or less <clears throat> close to that line. You don't want it going wildly swinging back and forth because you'll get whipsawed. You want to make sure there is a trend in play, uh, which this helps you do. Or like down here, these are pretty good uh, to to stay with that. You know, so you don't have wild swings. You have more of a, you know, a smaller, uh, smaller magnitude of swings in the stock, so that it is trending. These are really good ones over here, as we started to go. Now, the other thing you can do is look at this indicator, and you'll see where where the relative strength is the highest is where these peaks are, are happening above the line, pretty consistently. Okay, and if, if the market's going down, that means that they're 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 below, mostly below the line. So by look, that's what we call accumulated relative strength. And so by just looking at that, you can easily tell, you know, of course, you can look at the chart too and, and see it there. But uh, do a couple more. Just kind of look at a few of these charts. So 
great prospecting signal to you know scan from uh, to, to confirm with other things that you have and uh, you know combine with other techniques that you're using. So there you go. That's like I said, that's that's on that uh, download page. <clears throat> if you go there, and I've got it right here. Let's see again, Fulgen AI forward slash Metastock. It has those three things, the template, the indicator, and the expert advisor that puts the signals out on the chart. All right. So, you know, we come up with something like this, <clears throat> and the next thing that we all want to do, like right away, including me, is to make a trading system out of it. And and hopefully, you know, as profitable as possible. So you can you can do that. Um, <clears throat> there's there's various things that that you know I looked at with this to 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 create one just out of indicators and that kind of thing. But as as uh, Jeffrey mentioned, you know we've been working on on this stuff for a very very long time, and we we built uh, an artificial intelligence engine that actually can do that on its own. And so in this next part of the presentation, I just want to show that to you and show you you know what it does, how it works, so you're aware of it. Maybe interested in it, and Jeff will tell you about that later. But uh, it's pretty cool how it how it is able to take something like this and create a trading strategy or system out of it uh, very easily. Okay, so oh yes, this is I didn't show this slide. So uh, yeah, this thing's great. But what we want to do is get the best signals out of it. Is one of the things we want to do, and and exits. Uh, and so this we're going to talk about. Then how how do you do that? And I'm going to show you this uh, Fulgent AI for Metastock product that we have that, that can do that. Okay, so what is Fulgent AI for Metastock? Fulgent uh, Technologies is the name of the company that we founded to really take our artificial, intel artificial intelligence that we have built for 25 years, package it and provide it to Metastock uh, and, and other, you know, other venues out there. But uh, Metastock is the, is the primo, as I say. <laughs> so uh, really proud of this thing uh, you know, for them and, and they really helped us you know, connect to Metastock properly so that it could run and, and do its job. But it is a complete engine uh, that runs in parallel with Metastock. And what it kind of looks like is this. You've got Metastock is here. Uh, it does have expert advisor and here's all these trading signals being generated. And what they're, where they're coming from is the engine <clears throat> that is looking at a knowledge base. The knowledge base is created from hundreds of indicators. So we, we feed the, the engine a condition that we want to trade against or train against, like a moving average crossover, whatever it is. It can be anything that's pretty good. And it will take all of those indicators, hundreds of them, and do a genetic algorithm process to figure out which indicators work well with those signals. And it, it's massive amounts of calculation. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't uh, really take that long, considering what it's doing, maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, to do a basic training. But once you've done that on whatever the assumption is, your, your starting point, it will generate these signals based on that. And so <clears throat> the product, just to cover it quickly, is it has these different components, the expert advisor, it has an expiration and a system test. And it comes with four four experts that have these different, uh, different entry conditions, uh, <clears throat> like a, a Keltner channel crossover, that's the swing trading one. Uh, quick move is looking at a an internal Heikinashi chart measurement to find figure out where a reversal is likely to happen. But given just the basic signal from that, then the AI go works on it to figure out okay what do we need to look at in addition to that to get a really good uh, signal out of it. Uh, <clears throat> actually tested this against the the basic systems of Metastock uh, that are, that come with it and they're very good. They're kind of classic technical analysis, you know, relative strength and and Bollinger bands things like that. And Fulgent, uh, you know, did come out pretty high on the curve in that test, and we've tested against others. So, it's it's pretty powerful. So, what I want to talk about <clears throat> in this presentation, we're, we're looking at relative strength, is how this thing can take something and create a system out of it. So, the example that that uh, is included, it's in the manual, and it's kind of is included with it, is this very simple relationship: RSI three less than thirty for a long. RSI three greater than 70 for a short. And there's all those little shaded places, you know, greater than 70 right there. Uh, and this is the relative strength index of course uh, <clears throat> that we talked about, and there it is. And so below 30 is a good buy point often, but not all the time. You know, how many of you would just trade with that? Probably nobody because it's not enough. 
you need to qualify these signals somehow. There has to be something that says, well, yeah, that's good. It's a good possible trade, but you know, you just needs to be a little, little more than that. <laughs> so <clears throat> what we do is we go into the, the Fulgent uh, user input indicator, which looks just like this. And there's two lines in here, uh, train longs and train shorts. And you just put a Boolean formula right there. It could be an indicator that returns true or false. So that could be pretty massive. <clears throat> it can be this simple relationship. It could be close, you know, cross, cross, close, moving average of close, uh, whatever. And you just put that in there. And <clears throat> once you've done that, you go into the interface. And I'm just kind of quickly covering this, uh, you know, so we can look at some examples. But uh, <clears throat> the interface and, uh, you know, you, you go through and, and select the uh, the expert that you want to train, which are down here, and then you basically uh, tell it that you want to train it with the included Fulgent AI training exploration. And with this, it's an exploration. What it does is it passes the data for all the charts that you're looking at to train it over to Fulgent. Fulgent does its thing, and then the the uh, the uh, rules are built in that knowledge base to trade that particular thing. While it's running, it looks like this. So the exploration runs, it passes the data to it, <clears throat> and you see this training curve come up where it shows how many rules have been generated so far and how profitable they are uh, on average. And <clears throat> at the end of that, bingo, new systems created. And these are This is one of the experts that has been retrained for that condition. And you can see that you know where, where each of these is happening is, is where those conditions are, except that it's qualifying them with other indicators uh, to get uh, to get some profitable signals out of it. And in this particular case, I ran it against a very simple, the same system without using any AI, which of course, as you would expect, doesn't work all that great. But then with the qualification of the AI running on it, uh, it ended up, um, you know, doing really well. So <clears throat> what, uh, what I want to do is go over here and first off, just uh, get back to, uh-huh, go ahead and attach the, actually, let me go ahead and just close, let's see here. Yeah, I will change my template first. My template to default, apply. Okay, very good. And now what I'm going to do is attach the effulgent expert for uh, Fulgent stocks, Fulgent AI stocks, right there. Okay, here we go. All right, and it'll come up. And <clears throat> I actually want to, let's see, let's, let's go ahead and turn on the, the commentary window here. You commentary. Mm -hmm. And so this is basically all the experts running. And let's see, are we on Chevron? I thought we were on Apple. Let me try Apple again. All right, and we'll go through a bunch of charts here. But so what, what this is doing, like I say, is it's going out to the knowledge base <clears throat> for this and running these different experts to figure out where signals are. Some of them run a very, very long time. The exit for this one is there. Some of them are designed to take profits very quickly, which is what the quick move is designed to do. So that's what that looks like. Um, if I look at the, 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 the system itself, bring it up here, these are the, the different uh, uh, strategies that are, that are embedded. And you can see that FT stocks is selected. I'll talk about these in a second. So if I go in there, I see these experts and I can you know turn on individual ones, whatever. But so those are the different things that are running to, to generate these signals out there in the interface. And um, so, they cut, there's also strength rating down here. You can make it you know, higher or lower and all that stuff. <clears throat> but what I'll do is just go through some charts so you can kind of see where these signals are firing in the charts. It comes back. Like I say, massive amounts of calculation are going on uh, you know, as, it, as it goes through the data. And it's able to pick off reversals like this. The volatility breakout is very sensitive. It's looking for any kind of a volatility breakout signal. And of course you had a very unusual market. So the reason those longs are firing right there is 
the AI had never seen a market like this before. It just doesn't exist. You know, the COVID, the COVID fall is like, it never, it didn't happen. So that's, that's why it thinks that it's oversold because all the times it saw this before in the training, it was, but you get back to normal markets and you have the nice signals that, that do well. So, but yeah, the COVID, the COVID uh, correction was pretty intense. Um, let's go through a couple of these, this American Express, and you can just kind of see, you know, where the signals were firing, mostly short term in nature, you know, five to 10 bars. Uh, but, you know, some of them, of course, are, are much longer because of the stops. And what I can do in here is go to any signal and I can click on it and I'll see over here, that's a quick move signal. Uh, it's rating is 76. There were 565 occurrences of that situation. The exact indicators that are in the rule that fired this. It's not, <clears throat> it's not a trading system that says if this is true and that's true and that's true, fire a signal. It's actually a rule that has any number of things in it. It could be moving average measurements. It could be volatility, volume. So every one of these signals, even though it's the same name, is going to have different rules. So if I if I click across them here, let me find another one. How about this short right here? So that's different. It has 405 occurrences of the exact rule that generated that signal uh, and, so, and so on. So you can click on any of them, volatility breakout, which got out up here. And it says, okay, 250 occurrences of that one. The average profit in the in the training data was 2.53 percent, and it also has a trailing stop applied, and it tells you where that is. So, uh, yeah, so it's it's pretty cool. Uh, like I said, the signal generator are really great, great prospecting signals. Uh, whoop, I just skipped a chart. Sorry, I, I got I got trigger finger there <laughs> on my interface. Um, so pretty much, I mean, that's that's really, you know, what it is, what it does. You just apply it and use it uh, to, to prospect. This is a really, really nice one over here that just happened uh, a couple days ago. So, yep, on that, the turn of the market on this particular uh, stock. Okay. All right. So, so that's that. Now, we're talking about taking this system and retraining it on anything. I, was, I showed you the RSI 3 that I did. And so, for the to 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 train it on Folger uh, on on the relative strength concept, all I do is go in here to let's see to my indicators indicator builder and find Fulgent AI uh, user inputs. Where is it? Right there. Okay. So it's just an indicator, but those are those two lines. This is documentation that explains it, but those two lines right there are the ones that you change, and you can see that I have changed them. No, this will let me zoom in. It won't. So you have to I have to read it. I guess it's pretty small on your monitor. So that says uh, train longs is formula, and I made a little formula for my buy signal, which I call pound fulgent uh, RS buy, and the sell signal is pound fulgent RS sell, and so I. I just change that, right, and saved it. And then I went over to the Explorer, and I ran uh, an exploration. By, first, I picked the, uh, you know, the stocks I wanted to train against, which was, uh, I think, the Dow 30. So I used on this one. Yep, there they are. I'll check down there somewhere. Yep, right there. And uh, 3,000 bars of data. Um, and you can see this is back in time a little bit to leave some room after the training. And I go down here and just basically find that Fulgent uh, training exploration down here. Fulgent AI stocks training, okay, right there. And then I, I ran it. And so if I, if I did that right now, it would it would train uh, those experts. I already did it because it, it takes you know 20 minutes or so to do it. So um, you can also let it trade overnight to get more and more and more and better rules, which I did not do for this. Uh, demo, but you can let it do that and it will continue to find better and better relationships. When you think about the fact that if you have a hundred indicators and they can either be, you know, true or false, if there's just three values, true, false, or don't care, like I don't need a hundred things to be true. I only need like a few of them to be true. And I want the AI to figure out which of those will make my signal the most profitable. If you look at that, that's like a, a septillion number of combinations of all that stuff. You would never figure that out in a million years with 100 indicators. Like which which combinations are good? You can theorize and you can you can find some by experimentation, but you can't look at all of them. So 
the AI is going through the process of, of, of doing that uh, to figure out uh, which combinations are profitable. So what I do now is I go in here and into Fulton AI, and this is where I'll talk about these things. You can see all these different FT stocks, currencies, uh, Disney is one stock. Here's the SPX 30-minute uh, real-time chart. So I retrained the main AI component, which is FT stocks, multiple times to get these different things. So you actually can can train on Forex or you know, whatever you want and save that to use. So I just did this one down here, uh, FT stocks retrained. I haven't renamed it yet to FT stocks relative strength, but I, I, I trained it. And if I double click it, you know, I'll see the experts I train, it's three of them. And uh, it tells me that it was able to get, you know, 76% accuracy on this one, 79 on this one and 59 on this one. So it's really pretty good. And that, that's through the training process. And it shows that little window that I showed you in the, in the slide while it's training, it just kind of sits there and cooks on it for a while. So having, having done that, I'll go ahead and select it now, uh, FT stocks retrain and close. I also want to add my indicator. So let me go ahead and add, uh, actually right here, here it is. Let me go enter window new and drop it down like I did before. And let's bring full joint relative strength down here. So we see that indicator plotted. Because what I want to do now is refresh the chart so that it activates with the expert that I just loaded. And you'll see the signals will change once it does this. There we go. And so these are the ones that it found from that indicator. And if you look at this closely, let me go ahead and, and zoom in on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, get a crosshair here. You can see that where that's firing is exactly right there. So it's using that relationship to find these, these really great trades. Uh, look at this one here, it's a quick move straight down. So it's going off that turn down right there. And of course it's looking, you know, uh, in the indicator I have it looking at the moving average, of course, also uh, as part of the condition for the, for the indicator. It's real simple, but the AI is able to find this stuff very, very easily. And let me go back out again here. We'll look at some more real quick. Gonna go through a few. And again, we're trying to find, you know, really turns with the trend. Here's major reversal that went all the way up to here. Uh, this one got stopped out. Quick move there, quick move here. Let's go through a few more. And again, I did not let this train very long, only about uh, 30 minutes. So if I let it keep going overnight, it would do a much better job of finding profitable relationships. But you can see these short-term moves are actually quite good. All those are profitable. This one got stopped out, slightly unprofitable. Uh, just go through a few more here. And, and like I say, if I were to go and let that come up and, and, and just put the cross here, you would see that everywhere it's firing is that condition. So you can take any, any indicator, anything that you have that is pretty good, anything, turn this thing loose on it and it will find these relationships uh, you know, and tell you, okay, you've retrained the quick move expert. Well, from the retraining, and I didn't let it run very long, so it only has 30 occurrences, you know, of, of that rule that is right there firing that, but, uh, you know, pretty high signal rating and pretty high profit per trade. And I can go across, I might find one that, that has more samples. No, small, small numbers, because like I said, I didn't let it go very long. Let's try this one here, this is major reversal. Well, I got 150 samples on that one. And that's why we have these over here because the more samples there are, the more times it found that little rule that it's using, the more significant it is. So in the in the exploration to find signals, not the training exploration, but the but the real one that you prospect with, uh, it, it shows you this number in there so you can tell that right away. So, uh, but really, so that's really, that's it. Um, I go through a few more charts here. All right. Okay, so today we could end early, actually, because really th these are the things I wanted to show you. Uh, you know how the AI can work on something like relative strength, and then of course the the relative strength um, uh, indicator and template itself. Which let me go ahead and bring those up again for you. And like I said, they're available for for download. Go and detach this, 
and attach the expert advisor for relative strength. Okay, Fulgent relative strength. There we go. And so if you're using this to trade with, with you know, I'm just saying by itself without the AI, what you want to do is plot that moving average on here. And I think the template has it. Let me get the template. Hold on. Apply template. Oh, Fulgent RS. Pretty sure this has it. Yeah. <clears throat> so you're looking for signals with a trend, right? So you 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 get this buy signal and the, the moving average is moving up. You're above it, but very close to it. That's a good signal, very likely. Um, again, close to it, moving up, and you see the relative uh, strength angle is mostly positive in through here. Uh, here it's mostly negative, and so these cells are really good. Most of them are good for a four or five day move. Uh, you know, pretty easily. Let me go ahead and take this thing off. So we don't have an expert, buy, expert commentary for this one. And I guess with that, I'll go ahead and take questions either on, on this or on the AI, whatever anybody would like to ask. So there are Jeff? tons of questions. OK, let's do them. So, um, <laughs> why didn't you train over, uh, Darts Player 32? Um, wants to know why you didn't retrain over the last week and then show us the results today. Well, but, remember I said my. So that's a good question. Um, and actually, it has to do with, as, as you know, preparing things for webinars. You can't always do it way ahead of time. Uh, but it's one of the casualties of it. But remember, the, in the training data, I trained and I ended my training data in September. So it was actually back, let's see, back here. And so these recent signals are, are the result. Well, th these aren't, but the ones that were in the chart are the result of the recent training. Um, but but the 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 Fulgent AI the one the the actual not this not retraining on this but the the one that comes with Fulgent AI the the four experts uh, they were trained until the end of 2018 so we've got two full years of out of sample so all the signals you saw from Fulgent AI that I was showing you on those charts they were all out of sample all after yeah. the training but that's a really good question I'm glad you asked that. You kind of do want to be able to look at. Uh, you kind of don't. You don't want to be able to kind of see how the signals perform after your training period, right? right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. Cool. Scott says. Scott Gow says. Oh, I mean Scott G. Greg keeps telling me I need to stop seeing people's last names in here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, Scott G. Uh, our friend up in Canada says I really like this. Well, now and then uh, our last name on the chat. <laughs> then that's public, that, that's fine. But if it's in a public or private, uh, don't get me started. Please proceed. I, I can mute him if we need to, Ed. I can mute him. Oh, it's okay. He's uh, a good guy. He's actually, a good. you can't mute me on YouTube. Touche. <laughs> We're stuck um, with him, Ed. We're stuck with him. Um, I know it's been a Ed, long day for you guys. <laughs> Did Ed, uh, Paul wanted to know, uh, did you say why there were two lines on your RSI? The, it's moving your RS? It's just moving okay. average. So, okay. you know, it's easier to tell trend with that. That's all. Yep. Um, Lynn has a good question. Um, Lynn, thank okay. you for the question. He wants to, uh, he, I assume, wants to know, do I have to know how to write code in order to use the AI? No, that's a good question. Uh, all you do, let me go ahead and take this off here, is detach this one, add the other one, <clears throat> is you you activate it, and that's it. I mean, if you want to use <clears throat> the AI that we have trained, you know, not talking about making a custom version, but just using using your thing, uh, you just go over here, you attach the Fulgent AI expert, and that's it. And it generates the signals based on the artificial intelligence and the training that we have done. And you know, that's uh, that's all you do. So here they're, they're turned on, and we actually have a template here that will show the exits as well, which I could put on here. My template, F U L. But no, and and I'm glad you asked that because I I always hesitate to to talk about this customization aspect because people do wonder if they have to go do that, and it's just. That's for folks that they have something. I mean, you got a lot of people showing you indicators and things that they're using that are great. And so any whatever it is, you can take it into Fulgent and make a better system out of it 
by letting it work on it and letting it retrain on it. But um, let me go ahead and go back to because uh, I'm on the wrong one right now. Go back to the, the original, which is what you're trading with. And I mean, those are those are good signals, but <laughs> they're, they're from the other training I did. Right. So here you go. That's more like what you what you're going to see. Uh, but this is completely canned. You just turn it on. Turn on the turn on the expert, turn on the commentary and go to town. I mean, and you know, here's our nice signal here on the right edge that we just had. Um, and like I said, all of these signals, all the way back to 2018, they're all out of sample for the other question. Way going way, way back over here. They're all out of sample. Um, let's see. Uh, is the rating 79, is that a percent or a raking? It it is the the profit uh percent, the, the accuracy of those signals. So out of 565 signals that, that it trained on, uh, uh, 76 percent of them were profitable in the training period. Lynn wanted to clarify that that she is a woman. Uh, oh, good. That's <laughs> that's great. Uh, the reason I said uh, him is we have a Linda friend who works here, and um, I just made an assumption. So, um, sorry, uh, my apologies. Uh, Ali says, when we use moving averages 40 and 200 days, do these averages automatically adjust to 8 and 40 periods if we change the periodicity from daily to weekly? I'm not sure that that's a question for Fulgent. I think that's more of a meta stock question. So let me take it. Um, if you're looking at a 40 and a, uh, or is it a, do you think it's a Fulgent question? Well, it, I didn't, I don't think it was about customizing Fulgent. I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Ali, to answer your questions, usually when you're looking looking at a, a 40 period moving average, it's actually a bar. So, if you're looking at it days, it's going to be 40 days. If you're looking at if you move that to a weekly chart, it'll be 40 weeks. Uh, so, it just references the periodicity that you have. So, uh, yep, and by the way, is, this, oh, good. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, no. No, I'm just saying that that people have asked, can I use this on forex? Can I use it on futures? Can I use it on real time? Uh, th these were all the when you open this thing up and unpackage it, it's it was trained on stocks, you know, end of day stocks. But all you do is use that retraining feature. You just say retrain these experts, and it will create a new version. You you keep the old one; it doesn't destroy it. New version on real time on futures on forex, whatever it is that you want to train on. And so, if you want to do weekly, that's fine. Uh, whatever it will, it will use all these indicators to figure out which ones work in that time frame. You're welcome. Oh, I mean, thank you. Uh, Ali says thank you, and I said you're welcome. You're welcome, Ali. Um, Richard wanted to uh, ask how long was the training period for? Oh, oh, wow, that we did back to 2005. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, that that's some really good questions. I think that's the end of them. Uh, Ed, what's that? Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. I've got a summary. Okay. I think. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, full relative strength. You can get it. Uh, hopefully, it helps you. And we showed how AI can turn it into a system uh, that is pretty profitable. And you can do that with anything. <clears throat> but you'll have to. It comes with things already trained. So it has all these things. I think Jeff will probably talk about this with you. But uh, different. Uh, components that it comes with, and it's on Fulgenta. No, <laughs> metastock.com forward slash Fulgenta. So, Jeff, I guess uh, your turn. Yeah, actually, there's one more question. Uh, okay, is that do you, is there a recommended price range or volume range or cap size that you'd recommend avoiding with Fulgenta AI? Not really, because it because it it's looking at volatility. It's looking at you know, other, those, those factors inside there. So you can run low price stocks on it. Um, I mean, generally trading, your best bet is to trade more liquid stocks. And of course, the lower the price, if you can find a liquid low, lower price stock, those are going to move more than, than the higher price ones, like, unless it's Tesla, of course. But uh, so I, I would try to go for like, like, you know, if you can get them, you know, 10 to 50 bucks stock that has very, very high volume, uh, just in general, but you know, it 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 looks at those factors as it's training. So, all right, Ed, thanks for building a really cool AI model for Metastock. 
So I'm gonna go over pricing a little bit. Okay. Um, always good to have you. We also uh, also thank you for creating a really good chart pattern engine for Metastock too. But we'll we'll talk about that a different day. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. It's great uh, to be here, man. Loved it. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Yeah. All right. Very good. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. And I'm assuming that uh, Mike, uh, I didn't see that question earlier about how to add the Fulgent RS to Metastock. Um, just drop me an email. I'll get uh, Ed to answer those for you. Uh, my email is just jeffrey.gibby at metastock.com. And uh, you're welcome to give me an email. Uh, give me a couple of days uh, to get hear back from Ed, and I'll get that back for you. Lynn says, thank you for your uh, presentation. Uh, appreciate it. I want to say thanks for everybody for coming today. Uh, I've enjoyed it. I thought I think it's been a really good day. The uh, Let's talk a little bit about the Fulgent AI. Uh, it is a fully integrated. And Ed did a really good job of showing it. It has the expert commentary, the system testing, the market scanning. Again, it's it, it allows you to be able to look at Metastock and see the, what's what's in there. Uh, normally, the the Fulgent AI is one hundred and forty nine dollars per month. We are we still do have it on an introductory price where you can get it for ninety nine dollars per month. And what we are also offering that with a buy one month, get two for free. So you can actually add it to your Metastock for as little as 33 bucks a month. So you can come up to the website, metastock.com slash comf promo, 33 bucks a month for the first three months anyway. Um, you can give us a call at 800-882-3040, uh, or you can also order that online at metastock.com slash sales chat. And um, while you're up there, if you need Metastock, you can actually go ahead and do that uh, right there on the page as well. So metastock.com slash conf for conference promo. And I'm sure that's going to show up right here in my YouTube chat in just a second or two. So in addition to that, I do want to talk about uh, we um, the we did talk a little bit about Metastock and getting the two free months. I'd encourage you to try Metastock. Hopefully you've been able to see it all day and you kind of see the power in it. And maybe you even have a good idea of why it's been rated number one for more than 25 years straight. Um, I want you to try it. Um, you can try it with our DC packages. You can try it for as low as $69 for three months. So less than 25 bucks a month, basically, is going to get you access to the best rated software program um, for the last 25 years in a row. Um, you should give it a go. Uh, you'll be able to try it until February 6th if you sign up today. And uh, by then, you're going to know exactly whether or not it's going to be helpful for you to make money. My argument is it's going to help you make money at that point. So you, uh, go ahead and give us a call at 800-882-3040. You can chat online with us at metastock.com slash sales chat, or you can go online and order it at metastock.com slash comp promo. And you know what? Try it out. Uh, it is, uh, I wouldn't, I come in every morning, uh, I get in, uh, like the numbers pulled for the sales guys, look at the daily, I get the daily leads reports pulled. And the next thing I do is I look at Metastock and I go and I start to look for the good signals out there. Metastock, there is a reason it's been rated number one. Uh, it's going to help you find better trades. It's going to be help you find better trading methodology. So give us a call. And if it doesn't, well, you know, you can try it for 69 bucks for three months. We're, as part of that, we're going to have somebody from our White Glove Installation Service call you. They're going to help you install it if you need help installing it. They're going to show you exactly how to do different things in the program. If you're interested in scanning, they'll walk you through it. You know, um, it's a pretty low-risk way to try out Metastock. So 800-882-3040, we've been showing it to you all day. You're going to like it. And um, if you don't, no hard feelings, but you do owe it to yourself to try it. There. Uh, um, Anyway, I'm going to get off of that. Uh, the other thing that we're going to talk about today is uh, the last thing we're going to talk about today is the premium classes that we're doing on Sunday. Um, we're going to bring in, uh, this is basically, if you go to metastock.com slash conference 20 prime, it'll take you right here. Uh, we have some great experts coming in on Sunday to do these classes. Steve Bigelow is going to talk to us for a free class tomorrow. He's going to come back on Sunday for a paid class. Uh, Steve Bigelow uh, has some of the best candle methods uh, that I 
use. I absolutely love the methods that t Steve teaches. And uh, I've had the privilege of over my career being able to go and travel around with him and see what he has to say about the markets. And I wanted him to do a paid class because, you know, his patterns, the way he looks for to these top rated candlestick signals have been really, really helped me with my trading. So I'd recommend you come here. Uh, in addition to that, Steve, uh, we're going to have Dr. Alexander Elder on. Dr. Alexander Elder it, wrote uh, Trading for a Living and Come Into My Trading Room. Uh, uh, he's going to talk about his triple screen trading system. He's going to talk about the current markets. And um, it's always, I don't know if you've had the privilege of watching one of the webinars we've done with uh, Dr. Elder. He does a really, really good job. And finally, Oscar Carboni uh, is going to teach a uh, sit down for an hour and a half. Oscar worked on the pit of the floor of the markets. Uh, he's going to show us how to do trend lines and technical formations. And um, he's really, really good at that. So these are all stuff that you can sign up. I do hope you, uh, for all of you that have signed up for the conference promotion, uh, thank you. I was very surprised how many people bought it already. I appreciate that. I really do. Um, I sent you all of the links for logins today and uh, get your order in so I can kind of get you the instructions to get in there uh, when I send you, uh, when, I, uh, when I set up everybody else tomorrow. Uh, normally it's 600 bucks. It's going to be 450 for Sunday. And again, you can visit us online to do that. Um, just go to either metastock.com slash conference 20 prime or give us a call 800-882-3040. So I think that's about it for us. Uh, we do have a little bit of a question. Lynn says, thank you for your presentation. Lynn, thank you for coming today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope it was useful for you. James says, uh, Jeff, I'd already subscribed with Metastock. Thank you. Do you have a, a bundle deal of RT data and the add-ons as far as the monthly price is concerned? James, give us a call. Um, um, uh, or get online with us. Let's talk a little bit about what you want and stuff like that. We do have some of the best deals here at the conference, uh, but let's work on you with you in terms of what you want. And thank you for using Metastock. I really appreciate that. So uh, let's see if there's any last minute YouTube questions. Uh, I just it. some I stuff it. from... I got, before you take off, Jeff, you got to, I mean, were you about to close? Was that going to be I it? I wasn't that. That and was going to be it. The well, most exciting presentation in the whole, first of all, there's tomorrow. So people should come yeah, back there tomorrow. Is tomorrow. At, yeah, let's talk at, about at that. AM, yeah, and Steve Bigelow around starts it off. And then our very own, very favorite Jeff Gibby is doing a presentation. Yeah, let's talk. By the way, Jeff, how you didn't get included in the prime, uh, presentations on Sunday. I just don't know. We need to have well, a talk. I'm happy to give away my knowledge for free. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> or, very or people aren't tomorrow, willing so. to pay for me. Yeah, no, it's going to be a good class on Sunday. Tomorrow, we're going to start out with, um, we'll just go through tomorrow's schedule. Um, that's a good idea. Uh, tomorrow, we do start out with Steve Bigelow. Um, he he does such a solid job. We're going to also have uh, Hema Reddy on, um, Rob Hoffman, uh, myself, uh, Steve Primo, and Oscar Carboni, and Kevin Nelson. So uh, I hope you can come back tomorrow. Uh, join us for tomorrow's session. Um, I'm uh, I'm really enjoying it. We're getting a little, a little maybe. Uh, uh, tired after 14 hours of broadcasting, especially this guy behind right. me, Greg. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's do this all night. Let's go. Uh, James says, uh, my earlier question, comment, great session, Ed and Jeff. Thank you. I have a question. Does Fulgent AI provide the capability? It does not have the next day open, high, low, close. You can look for, there's a free add-on in, well, it used to be an add-on. We now include it with Metastock. It's called the Elliott Waves. It actually does a pretty good job of giving you a predicted high, low, and close for the next day in the Alpha Omega Elliott Wave add-on that's part of Metastock. We call it Elliott Wave, and it's just part of Metastock for free. So James, check that out. You like it. Uh, it uses the Elliott Wave methodology to forecast that high and low. So um, Jurgen says, is there a deadline for this week's offers in the summit? Hope not, because I have to load up my... That's fine. Uh, I'm not really too pushy. By about midweek next week, I'm going to pull all of the uh, names for the 
stocks and commodities subscription offers. So make sure you get it in before, let's say, Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Other than that, next early next week is fine, uh, Jurgen. Uh, let's see. Uh, Andrew says, are recordings of this presentation available? If you're watching on YouTube, um, just be, this is the recording is what you're seeing here. Um, for those of you that are watching and go to webinar, I just pasted the link in for the YouTube playlist, which includes all of yesterday, all of today, and it will also be the same place you can go for the recordings tomorrow. So those are available for you. If you don't write that down, those will be emailed to you automatically as soon as we fin well within an hour of us finishing up tomorrow as well so greg do you have any more thoughts i don't i started the outro music so now we have to stop oh you know you're fine <laughs> vincenzo i can't believe you've been here all day uh i know what time it is in italy right now oh, uh, thanks, thanks for vincenzo. joining us um and we'll see you guys all tomorrow thanks for coming thanks for all the great experts we had and uh 800-882-3040 is the phone number to reach us at